connecting with you, but who were you the closest to on those teams? Wow. I mean, I, I consider myself pretty close to, to most of the guys. Um, I, I think I, I prided myself on, on being a good teammate. So, you know, despite the numbers may not look the way I wanted them to, I love the fact that my ex-teammates talk to me, still show the love, you know, that they do, because I think that uh, speaks to the kind of teammate I was. But uh, obviously, you know, for me, I was probably closest to D. Gordon, yeah. Matthew Kemp, Andre Ethier. Those guys were guys I, I spent a lot of time with being, especially Matt and Andre being in the outfield with them. Um, those are those are all guys that I, I look back on. And Kirsch obviously is, uh, I, at the time, was, you know, really ascending and when I was here. And um, I, I think back to that team and how much fun we had. Um, like I said, I think about think about it very fondly. You had a front row seat to prime Matt Kemp when you were with the Dodgers. What was that like? Because nowadays, you know, you get to see Manny Machado, you see Otani, but Matt Kemp had one of the great single seasons in baseball history in 2011. And you're right. I, I did have a, a, an up, a up front seat for that, and I think it, it was kind of a mix of seeing how crazy athletic he was. And at the same time, it all coming together for him from a mental standpoint. You know, I, I think that was probably his first year where, you know, a bad at bat didn't drag him down or a bad day at the plate didn't bring him down. He just bounced back so quickly. And I've been around guys when they've been locked in. That's just probably as locked in as I've ever been around somebody on a day-to-day -day basis. He was shining bright like a diamond. <laughs> He was indeed. He was indeed. He, you know what? The, the thing about Matt that year, what I remember is, not, besides being dialed in, he was always still searching to try to figure out a way to, to, to get better. And uh, it was it was enjoyable to watch him go out there every day. I mean, I got to see that. I got to see Andre chase the consecutive yeah. hit streak that he yeah. was on. Uh, was some very talented guys on that team. It's amazing when you look at that small window of time. Obviously, you wanted more success, but there were some amazing individual performances, like you just mentioned, and Kershaw yeah, yeah. winning the Cy Young, his first Cy Young. What I remember most about Kershaw at that time is we weren't giving him any run <laughs> support, and yet he was going out and winning one nothing, 2-1. It felt like pretty consistently. And to see him go from a guy who at, when he came into the league was a fastball, curveball guy. So I think this was the first year that the slider really presented itself the way that we, we know it now, um, and it was unhittable. I mean, every night he came out there, you knew he was pitching because the, the, the energy was different. He was much, he was really intense, as you know, Kirsch can be. Um, and we didn't get the Kirsch that smiled uh, after yeah. a start like you get now. I mean, he was, he was dialed in, but again, just being around those guys, the talent on that team, and, and kind of seeing everybody, as you said, have great individual years, you knew you knew the talent was there. It was just a matter of putting the other pieces around it to help it kind of grow. What was the preparation like behind the scenes with you guys? We prepped a lot. I think you know that was that was Don's first Don Manley's first year as manager uh, coming in, and I think. You know, I think moving away from Joe Torre and like kind of the older guard, and it was really the first time they turned it over to the likes of, of Matt and, yeah. and Kirsch and, and James Sloney and Andre. And so, you know, seeing those guys kind of grow into those roles during that year, um, it was intense because you still had, you know, the staff was a pretty, you know, really good staff. And so we had to get out there and work every day. But that was what was cool about that dynamic is those guys wanted to work. And so we could we could push one another. Oh, it's great to catch up with you. And I'm glad we could do it publicly. You too, my friend. There he is, the best, best people out there, Tony Gwynn Jr. We'll send it back to you in the studio, Tim. All right, thanks a lot, DV. Dodger fans, start your future at a California community college. Financial aid is available to help with tuition, books, and sometimes even the rent. It's time to take that next big step. Classes can fill, fill up quickly. So enroll today at I can go to college.com. Don't need to tell you it's raining outside. It's raining at the ravine and due to inclement weather, tonight's Dodgers Padres game will be starting in a rain delay. They expect the weather to blow through, but until it does, stay tuned for updates. We'll continue to monitor and we'll continue to lead you up to first pitch. Rain delayed Dodger talk as well with David Vasse. When we come back, we'll hear from 
well, myself with the pitching matchup. Gavin Stone, when this game starts, who will he be facing? We'll tell you next. Dodgers and Padres. Game two of this three-game series. A rain delay to start right here on the Los Angeles Dodgers Audio Network. When you want Dodgers, the only home is AM570 LA Sports. They say the best bourbons are those with a tradition of quality. The ones that carry a rich history and the potential for a bolder future. At Wild Turkey, we've made our bold pre-prohibition style bourbon for over a hundred years without once compromising our quality or our spirit. In other words, we stuck to our roots without getting stuck in our ways. And we can't think of a better tradition than that. Wild Turkey Bourbon. Trust your spirit. Come for 2024 Campari American, New York, New York. Never compromise. Drink responsibly. When cancer is the question, City of Hope is the answer. Because hope isn't just wishing for a cure. It's the most cancer clinical trials in California. Doctors discovering treatments used worldwide. And success in treating all types and stages of cancer. At a top-ranked hospital with just one mission. Curing your cancer. With over 30 SoCal locations, this is hope. City of Hope. Visit cityofhope.org to learn more. It's the bottom of the ninth. The game's on the line, and your small business needs a loan fast. Go to ondeck.com, the small business lender trusted by thousands of business owners. With On Deck, you can apply in minutes, and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Go to ondeck.com. Your loan is on deck. Depending on certain loan attributes, your business loan may be issued by On Deck or Celtic Bank. Limited eligibility for same-day funding. On Deck does not lend in North Dakota. All loans subject to lender approval. Welcome to the future, Dickerson. All your trophy muscles are irrelevant. What are you talking about? For 46 years, the Ford F-Series has been the best-selling truck on the market. But it's not just because it's got brawn. It's got brains, too. And cutting-edge technology. Fully charged. Mobile generators, hybrid engines, even wireless charging. That's great, but I've got both. I'm the whole package. Humble, too. Head to your Southern California Ford dealers for great offers on a Ford F-150 truck. This is Morongo Casino, Dodgers on deck. What a home run! On your home for the blue all season long. Dodgers and Padres will be in a rain delay. First pitch was scheduled for 6-10, but don't need to tell you if you're at Dodger Stadium. If you're here in Southern California right now, the rain is coming down. The good news is the weatherman expects it to blow through, and we'll get this game in. At what point will first pitch be thrown? Not sure at this point, but we'll start in a rain delay. And now, before the Dodgers hit the diamond, we look at the pitching matchup. Presented by your Southern California Toyota dealers, turn your trail-dominating and off-roading dreams into reality in an all-new 2024 Tacoma. See your Toyota dealer today. They make it easy. Michael Waldron on the mound for the Padres when this game gets underway tonight. 0-1 with a 386 ERA. He's a 27-year-old right-hander, an 18th-round pick of Cleveland in 2019 at the University of Nebraska. He was dealt in the multiplayer deal that sent Mike Clevenger to the Padres before the 2021 season. Waldron is an interesting character, a guy who didn't throw a knuckleball until three years ago when he taught himself how to throw a knuckleball. Then he did some Zoom calls in 2023 with R.A. Dickey and the late, great Tim Wakefield talking about how to throw the knuckleball. He learned how to throw it, perfected it in the minor leagues, threw it in AAA last year. He went on to throw his knuckleball 27% of the time last year, more than any other pitch in his arsenal, becoming the first knuckleballer to pitch in the major leagues since Mickey Janice did it for the Baltimore Orioles in 2021. This is his second season in the big leagues, making his third start this year as their fifth starter. Last time out, five and a third innings, one run, three hits, five strikeouts in a no decision. This is Michael Waldron's first time that he'll be facing the Dodgers. Gavin Stone goes for the Dodgers, looking to pitch a gym tonight. 25-year-old right-hander looking for his first win this season. He's 0-1 with a 9 ERA. Former fifth-round pick in 2020 out of Central Arkansas. Former Dodger minor league pitcher of the year in 2022, making his third start this season. He broke camp in the starting rotation he allowed three runs in five innings in his first start against the st louis cardinals did not factor in that decision last time out three innings five runs six hits five strikeouts but in a loss 
to the Chicago Cubs. He is facing the Padres for the second time now in his young career. Faced him last September in Dodger Stadium. Gave up seven runs on nine hits while struck out two over five and a third and did not factor in the decision. So it'll be Gavin Stone and the knuckleballer Michael Waldron when this game eventually gets underway. Dodger fans enhance your listening experience by downloading the iHeartRadio app and listening in HD. Powered by LA Care Health Plan. Serving all Angelinos, lacare.org. When we come back, we'll set the scene for you as we are in a rain delay. This game will not start on time. The weather is inclement right now. It's going to blow through. This game will get underway at some point. We'll give you more details when we continue here on the Los Angeles Dodgers Audio Network. The exclusive home of the Dodgers. AM 570 LA Sports. <laughs> Lyman Health Plan is changing the Medicare Advantage game so that you can be the one in charge of your health. Hey, this is Steve Sachs, and I highly recommend Alignment. They're handing you the reins so they can cater to your needs. Choose from a wide range of doctors. Welcome to a new era of aging. Visit AlignmentHealthPlan.com today. Sometimes in life, like in baseball, you need a spark off the bench or a late-inning rally to help you win the day. Ito wins Oi Ocha Unsweetened Green Tea. All natural ingredients, no sugars, no sweeteners, and only five calories. Brewed from premium whole tea leaves, sourced straight from Japan. Ito win Oi Ocha Unsweetened Green Tea. It's the perfect source of caffeine to get you through the day and get the boys in blue through a long season. Amazing and authentic. It's the game-winning hit every time you drink it. Available at your local Daiso stores, Amazon, and Ito in. That's I-T-O-E-N dot com. Hey, L.A., it's Adam Oslin. Let's talk vaping. While we love baseball, vaping, eh, not so much. Most vapes contain nicotine, and the risks are real. From heart issues to lung cancer, it's not worth it. Don't play with your health. Stay focused on the game and learn more at LAQuits.com. Get ready for a new level of comfort courtesy of Navient. Hey, it's David Massey with Navient's newest innovation in smart living, the new MPF Hydro Furnace. This whisper quiet hydro furnace is the ideal way to keep your home at the perfect temperature, lower your energy bills, and cut emissions. Plus, SoCal gas customers can get more than a $1,200 rebate. Learn about the new Navient MPF Hydro Furnace at hydrofurnace.com. That's hydrofurnace.com. If you're looking for an ultra-premium tequila that takes you on a journey beyond the expected, reach for Tequila Herradura, an extraordinary addition to the lineup. Whether you're sipping it slow and straight or mixing up a Dodgerita, Tequila Herradura's quality is present in every pour. Tequila Herradura, proud sponsor of the L.A. Dodgers. Cheers to the winning spirit. Please enjoy responsibly. Tequila Herradura is 40% alcohol by volume. Must be 21 years or older to enjoy. As we were saying, this is Morongo Casino Dodgers on deck on the official home of L.A. Dodgers baseball. It's the Dodgers and Padres. Gavin Stone, Michael Waldron, the pitching matchup on this Saturday night. The game will not start on time, as we have been telling you. The Dodgers announced that this will start in a rain delay because of the weather outside. As you can tell, if you're at Dodger Stadium seeking shelter from the rain that is falling down on Bruce Dar Gratterall bobblehead night, make sure you keep that thing dry underneath your umbrella or coat or jacket that you got with you out there at Dodger Stadium. The first pitch will happen tonight. At what point? Do not know. We're riding this little storm out. It is expected to blow through pretty quickly. Don't know what time first pitch will be, but make sure you're listening in the sixth inning when Andre ether gives you the superior grocers word of the game remember it write it down because on monday the petros and money show on am 570 la sports when you hear the cue to call you're going to tell them the word and you're going to get a 100 dollars gift card to superior grocers gavin stone michael Wal- or matt waldron the pitching matchup as the dodgers tonight their roster well making some moves before the game haven't officially made that announcement quite yet but we expect some additions to the bullpen as far as the starting lineup is concerned who's starting Time for the starting lineups. Mookie Betts will lead off and play shortstop. Shohei Otani batting second, your designated hitter. Freddie Freeman batting third at first base. Will Smith doing the catching, batting cleanup. Teoscar Hernandez is in right field, batting fifth. Max Muncy at third base, batting sixth. James Altman in center field, batting seventh. Kike Hernandez gets to start in left field tonight, batting eighth. And Gavin Lux will bat ninth and play second base. Gavin Stone will get the start tonight, looking for his first win of the season. When will he have? first pitch well we'll find out more with steven and rick when we come back it's the dodgers and padres this has been morongo casino dodgers on deck on the los angeles dodgers audio network
LA Dodgers baseball. Now the 3 2. Curveball swung on and missed right three. Line drive one. Oh, what a stab by Freddie Freeman at first. Deep to right center. Back it goes. It is off the top of the wall. Here comes Taylor around third, and the Dodgers win it. Line drive right field. The Dodgers walk it off. The Dodgers win it. The birthright of a legend. Bad damn, kiss the ring, show reverence. This has been Morongo Casino. at third, spins and fires, star there. Bounce it to Freddie Freeman at first. He's going to go to second for one. Carroll hadn't started running. It's two, and it's a win for L.A. Yeah, the Dodgers were third in all of Major League Baseball with 57 defensive runs saved. We just saw the infielders doing their part. Now it's time for the outfielders to show off. And as promised, Mookie Betts gets us started with the sounds of the outfield. Right fielder, number 50, Mookie Betts. On the 10th pitch, Marte goes down the line with a base hit. Betts plays the carom, comes up gunning. His throw is there. And Mookie, for the first time in 23, shows off the gun. He's got a really good arm for a second baseman. <laughs> that shot to left center. DeLuca dives! Did you? He knows he's kind of leaning into the dive that he's anticipating that's what he's going to do. But as he's leaning into it and almost falling, he's keeping his eyes on the ball and tracking it into the glove. Flair to left, Peralta will race in, has the out, the throw home. He's out! Comes out with the big one-hop throw, Will Smith applies the tag, and what happens at home plate? Angels, you're out! Woo! Shot to left, Fernandez after it, at the line, he's got it! Right before running into the wall in foul territory. The same approach we saw earlier where he uses all his sprint speed at the beginning of it, not trying to time it, and it gets there in time on that one. No fear of the wall. Robert to right center field. Carrying well. Altman to the wall. Leaps and brings it back. James Altman, highway robbery. Two or three stars on my score pad, usually a game with great defensive plays. Rarely do you see back-to-back -back in the same inning putting stars on them. The payoff to Kelly hit high in the air, deep left field. Peralta in front of the wall will leap. DP did you? Took one from the people. Nice to see that old man freight train still has some hops. And how many times have these Diamondback fans seen him make that play? But I think he timed that jump perfectly, knew where the wall was. Let's everybody know this is still my house over here in left field. Marlins on every base for Xavier Edwards. First pitch swinging, fly ball right field. Hayward to the wall. Jay Hay takes it away. Dude, that's Spider Man wearing a Jason Hayward unit. The fact that it was almost like his chain link out there, so he put his foot in there. Yeah, I mean, grabs it with his other hand, the fence, to brace himself. A lot going on out there. That slice to left. Taylor dives! Did you? And how many times has Dodger fans seen him do this? How many times have Milwaukee Brewer <laughs> fans seen him do it here in this building? Simeon gets a hold of the one. That's hit well toward the bullpen. Johnny at the wall. He's got it again. The second one's a jump and a rescue. If we were at home, Dieter Rule would be playing Johnny B. Good. 
We are just getting started on our sounds of the season. When we come back, the pitching staff gets its turn with sounds of the starters and the bullpen coming up next. Introducing the all-new 2024 Lincoln Nautilus Hybrid. Morongo is giving away a brand new Jeep Wrangler. All you gotta do is play your favorite table games with your rewards card this month for entries. Plus, 10 players get 500 bucks in promo chips. Then, be here April 27th at 8 p.m. when we're giving away the Jeep. Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Good times, great prizes, and a Jeep. Hey, is that a JetBlue Plus card? When you buy me with your card, you can earn two times points at eligible grocery stores towards your next trip. And as a card member, you also get a free check bag. I love that. Wait, who invented mini cupcakes anyway, though? Isn't a cupcake already a smaller version of a cake? <laughs> Whoa, I never thought about it that way. Weird. Earn 60,000 bonus points with the JetBlue Plus card. Apply today. Hey team, I'm Mookie Betts. And when I'm not hitting home runs, I'm diving into some delicious food at Raisin Cane's. Perfectly crisp on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. These fingers are real dingers. Raisin Cane's chicken fingers, one love. For generations, hardworking people have relied on Ford F-Series trucks, making them America's best-selling trucks 47 years straight. Introducing the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. This is the next generation of built Ford Tough. With your trade-in, you can lease the 2024 Ford F-150 Super Crew STX for a low $439 a month. Hurry in today. At Del Taco, there's only one thing better than a crispy chicken taco, and that's two crispy chicken tacos. Get two for $3, featuring our amazing crispy chicken with ranch, chipotle, or habanero sauce. Two tacos, three bucks. That's Del Taco Better Max. If you're buzzed and doing this to make yourself feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. future of the Dodgers pitching staff sure is bright. Five rookies made starts this season with Bobby Miller emerging as a top of the rotation option. Miller went 11 and 4 with a 3.76 ERA in 22 starts. The rest of the rookies went 9 and 6 in 30 starts with Ryan Pepio having an impressive 38 strikeouts, only five walks in 42 innings pitched. With that, here are the sounds of the starting staff. He can do it as long as he wants, wherever he wants. But I'm glad he's still doing it here. Three sides, an MVP, triple crown, handful of ERA titles, a world title. Earth is uh, anxious to get this underway as everyone else. So uh, Gavin Stone has yet to uh, go down to the bullpen. It's going to take a considerable period of time to get not only the pitchers warmed up, but also the field in playing condition. The one thing, Stephen, uh, that the Dodgers need to do is to kind of uh, fortify top to the bottom in their lineup as far as the offense goes. The good news is the four home runs last night. Yes, the seven runs. But after the uh, two run home run by Teoscar Hernandez, that coming in the third inning, from that point on, the Dodgers were just two hits in 28 at bats. And if you take away Shohei Otani from that equation, Rick Monday, the team was 0 for 26. So Shohei Otani was the only one to do anything after the Dodgers took that 7 3 lead, ultimately blowing that four run lead for what is, I think, fair to say, the toughest loss of the year so far. The first time the Dodgers have dropped consecutive games in the 2024 season. They haven't lost three in a row to the Padres specifically since the 2021 season. Since then, the Dodgers have taken 33 of 44 matchups from the team down south. Right now, though, I, look, we were 
I think complaining would be too strong this of a descriptor, but we were noticing how the temperature was dropping here in our booth. But then we looked down on the warning track, which is definitely soaked right now. And we see the security team that has been standing in place for the last two hours with just a thin poncho over their heads. So shouts to them and uh, good luck to the grounds crew getting Dodger Stadium ready for this second game of the series once this delay is over. But it, it does look like we're going to get comfy here for the next half hour at least. This is taking on really uh, resembling what the Dodgers saw in Chicago that one day in particular, although it's about 15, almost 20 degrees warmer here than it was back in the Windy City. Dave Roberts was talking last night after the ball game, and in reference to the two for 28 after the home run by Teoscar Hernandez and his uh, his thoughts about the offense. He says, look, we expanded the strike zone too often and the swings got bigger on top of that. In particular, if you go to the extra innings with the Dodgers, the last couple of years had not had the stellar records in extra innings, not being able to advance that placed runner at second base and you've got nobody out. But unfortunately, the Dodgers had not been able to figure out a way consistently, uh, along with other clubs on top of that, in order to get that run across, either to tie the game and go to another uh, extra inning or to win the game and be able to go home. And now you see the Dodgers drop another one run game. They played six already this year. They are three and three on the young season. But as Rick alluded to a few moments ago, this game will begin following a rain delay. Obviously, you flip on your audio device of choice right now you're expecting to hear some some play calling action uh, the game is yet to begin here at Dodger Stadium as it's been coming down pretty good and I seem to recall on last night's Dodger talk uh, we were we were assured by a certain someone that by the time the game was coming around that the system was going to be yeah. gone by now yeah. The silver lining in that, uh, for, for those of us, I should say, <laughs> is uh, that same person that you are uh, referring to, we're going to have a chance to hear him yes. explain, or as we were saying, <laughs> he could come on the air in just a few minutes and he can explain this to us, exactly what happened. Of course, we were talking about the one, the only David Vasse, the irreplaceable, and the elite David Vasse. Oh, we the tried. The, the <laughs> <laughs> hey, TV, I didn't say that. That was Rick Monday who said that. And you were going to listen. Not only listen, you get the chance to talk with David Vasse, some rain delay theater edition of Dodger Talk after this timeout. Out. Sometimes in life, like in baseball, you need a spark off the bench or a late inning rally to help you win the day. Ito wins Oi Ocha Unsweetened Green Tea. All natural ingredients, no sugars, no sweeteners, and only five calories. Brewed from premium whole tea leaves, sourced straight from Japan. Ito in Oi Ocha Unsweetened Green Tea. It's the perfect source of caffeine to get you through the day and get the boys in blue through a long season. Amazing and authentic. It's the game winning hit every time you drink it. Available at your local Daiso stores, Amazon, and Ito in. That's I T O E N dot com. My name is Egypt Sherrod. I'm an interior designer and real estate broker. I'm Mike Jackson. I'm a contractor builder. When we decided to take our old deck down, we knew right away we were going in with Timber Tech. The longevity, the sustainability, and you get 50 years out of it. The thing about it, it doesn't look like plastic. From a design perspective, it's beautiful. So for our family and maybe for yours, there's just so many reasons to have a Timber Tech deck. Find a local contractor or get free decking samples at TimberTech.com. Freddie Freeman here. When it comes to our kids' health, you don't settle for second best. Meet Dr. Santana from California's number one Autry Orthopedic Center at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Thanks, Freddie. We're proud to offer the top drank orthopedic program in California. No case is too complex. With the largest team of specialized orthopedic physicians, we cover every aspect of your child's health, all in one place. Families turn to CHLA when the outcome truly matters. Visit chla.org forward slash ortho to ensure your child's health is in the best hands possible. today at carsforkids.org. That's cars with a K. Your car can be picked up as soon as the next day. Receive a tax deduction and vacation voucher. 1877 cars for kids Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate.
Welcome to Dodger Talk. Your first chance to react to today's game. Make your voice heard. 866 987 2570. All this power. Oh, the home run. Maxwell swinging the silver hammer. Power. His first swing of the season is a grand slam home run. All this power. No other show does it like this one, giving us Dodger fans a real voice. Dodger Talk is brought to you by these fine partners. Superior Grocers. Quality, variety, and value. Navian Tankless Water Heaters. For endless hot water, visit tanklessmadesimple.com. L.A. Care. For all of L.A. And now your voice for Dodger Talk. Just like that. David Vasse. We are live at Dodger Stadium in a rain delay. Can you believe that? Second time in as many homestands, the Dodgers have a rain delay and not sure when this game is going to start because the rain is coming down steady and hard here at Dodger Stadium. This is Rain Delay Dodger Talk. We are with you until at least 7 o'clock. That's when we may have a little clearer picture on when this ball game will start. Game two of this three-game series between the San Diego Padres and your Los Angeles Dodgers. Last night, a disappointing loss for the Dodgers. They were ahead 7-3 to three after three innings and then got outscored. 5-0 by the Padres. That's right, five unanswered runs by San Diego. They would beat the Dodgers in 11 innings, 8-7. to seven. We uh, went into some of the questionable decisions and uh, misplays by the Dodgers, and you can find that on the iHeartRadio app if you missed last night's Dodger Talk, and we strongly encourage you to subscribe and like Dodger Talk on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts, but the iHeartRadio app is the best place to listen to all of Dodger baseball. That's where you can stream the games live right here on the Dodgers audio network. Tarp is on. It's been on for about three hours here at Dodger Stadium. Uh, the fans are taking shelter, enjoying the concessions. And coming up between now and 7 o'clock, instead of breaking down Chris Taylor being 1 for 32 or Alex Vesia being ineffective so far to begin the season, why not let you know what's going on at Dodger Stadium with some of the concessions? And I would love to know if you would opt out of a Dodger dog for some of these options that were announced yesterday before this homestand officially began. So we'll do that, Dodger dog or not, coming up in our next segment. Also, we'll share our conversation with Miguel Rojas from yesterday as well. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. We're still waiting to get official word on what roster moves the Dodgers are going to make because there were two new pitchers in their clubhouse. J.P. Fireisen, who the Dodgers signed a year ago to pitch this season after Tommy John surgery, he is here. He probably is going to be activated. And also another Dodger pitcher that they recently acquired from the Yankees, um, Nick Ramirez, who is a lefty reliever, was in the clubhouse this afternoon. So uh, I know Connor Brogdon was one of these uh, buffer pitchers. Uh, he was in garbage time, mop-up relief in the ninth inning in Wednesday's game against the Twins. I could see him being shuffled out and Fire Eisen being shuffled in. No word on what the Dodgers are going to do yet because they do have two pitchers. So are they waiting to see what happens with the weather tonight? Are they waiting to announce an injury to a pitcher that we are not aware of right now? It still remains to be seen. Speaking of pitchers that are coming back from injuries, it's been two years since Walker Bueller pitched in a major league game. And it seems like it is getting closer but as close as it is, it was delayed yesterday because he was pitching at Rancho Cucamonga, and the plan was to have Bueller throw at least 80 pitches last night in the Inland Empire. Instead, he got hit by a line drive on his right pitching hand, which Dave Roberts described to be on his middle right knuckle. That ended his start at only 27 pitches. The Dodgers need him to get built up, and which means that he probably will have to make 
two more rehab starts when if all things would have gone well last night, he only would have had to make one more and return to the Dodger rotation. So next Thursday, he likely will make a rehab start in Oklahoma City and hopefully get to the 80 pitch mark. So he's stretched out and the arm is feeling good. And from there, the Dodgers will have to make a decision on whether or not they believe he is ready to go and more importantly, not going to compromise their bullpen if he does come back. And we'll have to see what uh, roster moves they make tonight to kind of indicate how urgent they need Walker Bueller back in this rotation. So at least one more rehab start for Walker Bueller next Thursday, likely in Oklahoma City. I saw Blake Trinan today in the clubhouse, and I asked him, when the heck are you going to pitch again? And uh, he always gets a little squirrely when I ask him those questions. He'll talk about everything else under the sun, except when I ask him when he's going to come back to pitch. And Pushes Arenado off the plate. And the count even at one ball and one strike. Yeah, that's a pitch that'll get your attention. Good, hard four-seamer just riding in and up on him. He barely got his hands out of the way of that one. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Fastball grounded to third. Suarez gloves. And now they have Goldschmidt in a rundown. Throw to the plate. Now Goldschmidt retreats for third. And they will tag him out. But both runners move up. So it is still going to be second and third, one out, and pretty good base running there from Goldschmidt to make sure the Cardinals didn't run into two outs, Candy. Well, that's exactly, you know, what, what you said there. Goldie is, is very, very talented base runner. He's an excellent base runner. And Suarez comes up. He made a nice thing by not throwing the ball home, but fake pumping because Goldschmidt was getting ready to return to third base. But when that happens, you get into a prolonged rundown, the runners are able to advance. Arenado hit into a fielder's choice. He moves over to second base during that play. Gorman to third. And the put out is actually just a simple five to two on Goldschmidt. One out, infield in, and a line drive to right field. McCarthy makes the catch, comes up firing, and Gorman did not get back to third quickly enough to try and tag. So nobody scores, and the Cardinals still have second and third with two outs. Contreras a little bit upset too as he was just eyeballing over third base Gorman. Not good base running here. This ball was shot and he just took his time getting back. Anytime there's a line drive when you're on third base, I mean, you've got to freeze. And he did not freeze. He's kept going home and then he had a retreat. McCarthy with a good job catching that ball, getting the ball in quickly and they just froze everybody. Well, as good as the base running was by Goldschmidt just a moment ago, it was equally as poor by Gorman at third base. Off the bat, he started to come home as if that were a base hit all the way, and then only realized when it was too late that nope, that thing had some hang time on it. Now the Cardinals could have, probably should, have themselves a 2-1 lead. Instead, runners at second and third, two outs, and a 1-1 score for the left fielder Lars Newtbar. Here's the pitch. Newtbar will take a fastball just off the outside corner. One ball, no strikes, the count. Right-handed Walker on deck. Just kind of depends on how you're facing Newtbar. If you fall behind in the count, you don't have to give him anything good to hit. And then you go after Walker. 1-0. That is inside. And it's now two balls and no strikes. Now, this is a situation. This is a key pitch. You have to make a good pitcher's pitch. Don't give him anything good to hit here. If you get the strike, you're back in the count. If you don't, put him on base and then go after the righty. They're just going to put him on base right now, not even risk it. And I think to your point, they saw the matchup, saw the situation. Why even risk it like this? Let's load him up, says Torrey Lovello. Bring up the guy, the right-handed hitting Walker, who... No cookie at the plate. Had himself a triple his last time up. Yeah, he did hit the triple, but, you know, it was a three-hopper over the third base bag. The first time up, I mean, he really did a nice job blowing him away when he was throwing 95-96. First pitch swinging. He was a little early that time was Walker off the end of the bat foul. Now the count nothing and one. That was a cut fastball, and that was about belt high that time. You don't want to throw that kind of pitch right here. Walker, who has the build and the strength of a guy who looks like he could hit 60 homers in a season, has been putting the ball on the ground as of late. 
Well, this time he pops it up, foul out of play, and the count in the blink of an eye is nothing in two. Another cutter up in the zone, fouls him straight back. Now you can play, you have a chance to play with him a little bit. Maybe ride that high fastball well above the strike zone, or else if you're going to go to another cutter, because that's the pitch he's been feeling comfortable with, make sure it's off the plate, well off the plate. And now Walker asks for time. With young players, we hear all the time about the growing pains that you have to deal with to watch them grow. And for Nelson, this would be a grown-up moment. Second and third, nobody out, a strike away from getting out of the gym. And he gets the swing and miss. And a fist pump for Nelson as he comes strutting off the mound. And the Cardinals, with two in scoring position and nobody out, do not score. We go into the bottom of the sixth, tied at one on the Morgan & Morgan D-backs radio network. Atlanta Braves. Marlins on Sirius 160, XM 184, and Internet 854. Braves on Internet 841. For 10 p.m., Tampa Bay Rays take on the San Francisco Giants. Rays on Sirius 161, XM 178, and Internet 866. Giants on Internet 863. 6.10 p.m., Cleveland Guardians take on the New York Yankees. Guardians on Sirius 162, XM 185, and Internet 847. Yankees on Internet 858. 8.10 p.m., Arizona Diamondbacks take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Diamondbacks on Sirius 211, XM 186, and Internet 840. Cardinals on Internet 865. 9.10 p.m., LA Dodgers take on the San Diego Padres. Dodgers on Sirius 208, XM 175, and Internet 850. Thank you very much. Bless us. What an incredible impact Fernando had, not just on the Dodgers, but the entire city of Los Angeles. As Stan Kasten said back at FanFest, it's been a long time coming to retire Fernando Valenzuela's number 34, and the ceremony did not disappoint. Also, big congratulations to Manny Moda and our good friend Oral Hershiser. Both were inducted into the Legends of Dodger Baseball Class of 2023. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this year's Sounds of the Season. Way up into the bleachers. It's fun coming to work over there. Everybody just wants to win. Sportsnet Dodgers, it is best of breakdowns. I'm John Hartung alongside David Vasse and Jerry Hairston Jr. In today's show, we're going to showcase some memorable moments from the season and some of our favorite Sportsnet LA breakdowns. Let's jump right into the Johnny DeLuca defensive game, Jerry, in Texas. This ball was rocketed into the gap, left center field. Johnny D out on that Robin spree. Yes, he is a straight G. Love the extension on this catch. Tony Gonson is loving it as well. Off the bat, remember, left-handed bat, that ball slicing away. Look at the sprint speed. 29.4 feet per second. 73 feet covered. The anticipation dives on that LA logo. Great catch from an outstanding <laughs> athlete. Love the concentration. A la Pete Rose right there. Yes. Way up in the air on the dive. Love the extension and the concentration. Great show stash. And too. the very next hitter, DV, he does this. And a place that he's never played before, he ran to the spot, he told me after that game, and said, I got to the spot and was able to use my hops out of Agura High School, where yeah. he was a multi-sport He was a track guy, there. too, yeah. showing off the speed to get to those balls, too. Yeah, he, he could do all these things, and it took every inch of hops that he could get 
to reach that fly ball and rob that home run. Took a home run away. Back to back hitters there in Texas. Jerry, more outfield defense. This time it's CT3 in Tampa against a former teammate. Luke Rayleigh right there. A little oppo taco. Oh, no, no. Not on CT3's watch right there. Able to rob an extra base hit. Great concentration there by Chris Taylor. Understanding, yes, I'm going to crash in the wall. The wall will not move, but I still got to make the play. The sprint speed, 29, excuse me, 23.9 feet per second, 84 feet covered. That is a long way. The anticipation, though, I got to catch it at the highest point, find the wall again, now find the baseball, time it perfectly, and CT3, we know he's an incredible wow. athlete, able to make a great play. You play him in center field, left field, the infield, it doesn't matter. He's always up for the task. Certainly was that day in Tampa. Speaking of infield, though, let's head to the infield. One of the best defensive shortstops in the game. DV is Miggy Rowe. I'll never forget the day at Dodger Stadium where Mookie Betts actually was explaining to Jerry's son, Jackson, just how to play that position. And at first, he started to say, well, Rojas does it this way. He said, forget Rojas. He's a freak. He's got great hands, just like that love the play there by by Mickey Rowe once again the concentration to pop up and Taylor can absolutely fly look at the arm strength I said all the time big leaguers incredible athletes we're not done with the infield Jared we've got an April double scoop at Wrigley Fields Max Muncy and Minus. Freddie Freeman love the hands there by Max Muncy and Freddie Freeman outstanding first baseman Freddie Freeman is, especially in the cold weather there in Chicago. You may not get the best grip on the baseball. Just get it over to Freddie Freeman. Great hands by Max Muncy. He gets it over to Freddie Freeman. The concentration with the scoop, but the presence of mind to keep his foot on the bag as well. Freddie Freeman, bad man at first base. Some yoga poses there at first base all season long. Great stuff right there. And the Dodgers had two MVP candidates this season in Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. They both had record-setting moments at the play. Right now, let's break down Freddie's 59th double. He obliterated the franchise record for two baggers. Jerry, this is really a single in San Francisco. He turned into a double. And this is his last double of the season, the 59th double. Really a microcosm of the season. With extra base hits, hustle, double here, out of the box. Look at Fat Five Freddie. Chin to pocket, getting there, stretching that single into a double. Just love the, the back control right there. Put the ball in play. Again, chin to pocket, chin to pocket. Outstanding form by six foot four incredible athlete they wanted him to be a pitcher but look at Jay Hay right there oh no no he's not a pitcher he's an athlete who could swing the bat and run the bases fat five Freddy <laughs> do doing his thing 59 doubles that's insane you know what else is insane a bunch of leadoff home runs. Mid-September, Mookie Betts, his 12th leadoff homer of the season, one shy of the major league record, also crossed the 100 RBI mark. The one part for Mookie Betts that teammates that played with him in Boston and manager Alex Cora has told me is his power is to the pull side. That's where he's got to be aggressive to hit it to the pull side, and he did right there and just got it off the foul pole there. But, I mean, his bat speed, remember at the beginning of the season, they talked about him swinging heavier bats so he would have quicker bat speed for more power. And he told me when the team was in New York right after the All-Star break, the resounding success makes him a bigger believer out of swinging those heavier bats, and that proved to be a 39 home run Incredible. season for Mookie Betts. A career high, to say the least, those 12 leadoff home runs. Mookie and Freddie, they both dazzled at the plate. They were also gold glove worthy in the field. These next two breakdowns were from the same game when they preserved Emmett Sheehan's no-hit bid in his Major League debut. Jerry, we've got a couple of catches by Freddie Freeman. Well, there's a the reason why Freddie Freeman has gold on his glove outstanding athlete we saw run the bases but look at a little over the shoulder catch understanding where the small wall is you can get hurt you got to make sure understand where that is and still concentrate to make the catch great play here's another one understand the small ball but also there's netting there so what he's going to do he's going to leap over the wall and allow the net to catch him great concentration and understanding where he's at on the field freddie freeman elite defender and once again, to preserve right there, the no-no, yeah. outs are important, making sure you catch all you can. Look at the fans right there. They understand Freddie Freeman sacrificing his body for the play. And Sheehan 
He's appreciative. He could be a trapeze artist right there with those uh, jumps into the netting. DV, same game. Mookie Betts with the diving catch and right. I think we all take for granted just how much ground he covers in such a short amount of time. Another thing that Mookie always talks about, and Jerry knows this, present the glove early. Look yes. at him right there before he lays out. He's already presenting his glove to be in position to make that catch and secure it when it hits the ground. Certainly did. Hammett Sheehan said it felt like I was watching a movie out there with these guys. Jerry, how about Mookie's arm? Eight outfield assists. This one in the 10th inning against the Blue Jays. And I love the transfer from that outfield glove. We know Mookie has played a lot of infield with a shorter glove. Here, the outfield glove, it's a difficult transition, but Mookie makes it look easy. With that outfield glove, it's bigger, able to fire to Will Smith. It is up the line a little bit towards the first base side, but Will Smith able to gather and make it outstanding tag right there right on the knee wow. outstanding play both sides Mookie Betts getting it to Will Smith and Will Smith being an athlete <laughs> able to apply the tag getting behind the throw Mookie Betts is doing it is toward the first base side but Will Smith really makes an outstanding play to catch it and then apply the tag. I know a lot of people around the Dodgers felt that Will Smith made huge strides defensively this year, and he was one of the best in that tricky situation where the rule is very gray as yeah. far as blocking the plate. He was so good at that in tricky situations like that as well. Bang, bang play right there at the plate. Will Smith dropping the tag on Kevin Kiermaier. Plenty more great defense ahead when best of breakdowns returns. We didn't forget about the memorable pitching performances. Still ahead, we'll look back at what Clayton Kershaw so fired up when picking up career win number 200. Plus, James Altman had a memorable first season in the majors, including some home run robbery. More Access 360 when Best of Breakdowns comes back. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience and the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Or get 3,500 purchase cash on select GMC Sierra models. Or get a total of 6,000 purchase allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. We are professional grade GMC. Hiya, Hannah here at Arco. You've heard of mood rings? Check out my mood skirt. And now that Arco accepts credit cards, I can pay whatever way I'm in the mood for to get incredible value. And I'm always saving money on quality gas, no matter how I pay. Looks like it's gonna be a cash day. Spoke too soon. Debit! I meant credit! Hey, make up your mind, skirt! Hey, so we're in a uh, rain delay, everybody. I'm trying to figure out if I can find something. I wanted to listen to the uh, to the pregame, but I guess they cut themselves out. So, and on the TV, it's not really a pregame. It's just rain delay coverage. We can listen to another game for the time being or just chill out. But it's going to be probably another probably 30 minutes, probably, probably an hour. Rain in California, so just let y'all know rain delay. Don't worry about anything. They gonna get the game going. Turbo man, I I, I see you man, I see you, but is I'm, I'm not at home that much man. I'm trying to take care of some stuff in the house real quick. But yeah, uh, I'm here everybody. Hey, appreciate everybody. We hit ten thousand subs. I just want to say thank you to every single body. Like without y'all or my regulars, you know. Appreciate y'all, man. This would have never happened. But like I said, man, we we gonna have a good summer, man. We gonna have a good summer and a good closeout to this month too. Laker playoffs, Dodger baseball. So yeah, man. Appreciate everybody out here, man. We gonna get through this rain delay. But yeah, man. Hope everybody's having a good uh, weekend so far. What's going on, Timmy? Yeah, Turbo, Turbo can have his uh, second opportunity. I'll be back.
this one to deep left center field. Back, track, wall, gone! Home run, James Altman. His first at Dodger Stadium. Altman on the move with a diving grab! He's played fantastic center field defense, and the bat has just been as consistent as we could have asked for. Rips a ball. Grand slam! James Altman, you are not for real! We wouldn't be here without James right now with this production. Over is Altman. A leap and a catch! Altman robs Tatis! Crush Oh, he is, he is just unbelievable. Love the Dodger lineup. Uh, I just want to comment on one thing. First of all, I agree with you totally about sports betting. Betting, and it, it has gotten out of control as far as I'm concerned. And um, the other thing is that last caller said he's a Dodger fan and he's a Padre fan. I have to say that, that to me, that's an impossibility. I, I think he was a little nervous. Not, I'm not sure he meant that. All right, I, I don't, I'm glad you're defending him, but I, I just felt like I, I hate when people say that. To me, the whole word can, you know, comes from fanatic. I mean, you either love the Dodgers or you don't. I don't know how you can share that. Well, love. the Padres have um, never been a real threat, so I could give somebody a pass on yeah, that. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, but now here's my one concern. I love Taylor more than anyone else. I, I mean. He's been nothing but a positive. He's a go-getter. He does great stuff. And I really feel for him uh, this year. Him and Lux are just like, they they look lost as far as I'm concerned. Um, and my other concern about Taylor is all the strikeouts. I mean, this is going back the last couple of years is out of control. Do you see any way of him out of this? I mean, I'm like, um, I'm, I'm very concerned because I love the guy. He's been nothing but an addition to Dodger. He plays it with heart, and he's all over the place as far as fielding the ball for us. I don't believe he's going to continue to go through a one-for-32 slump the rest of the year, Al, but he does need to take a look in the mirror and figure out some adjustments because what he's doing right now is not working. And let's face it, the last couple of years, he has, uh, he has struggled in the low 220s, 230s, and he's come up with some big hits, but um, he needs to look in the mirror and consider making some adjustments to make his swing a lot shorter. Thanks for the phone call, and that's not coming from me. That's coming from an expert, a two-time batting champion, and Nomar Garcia Parra. Uh, it's hard for players like Chris Taylor to reinvent themselves because they have had success one way, Let's face it, he had one foot out of baseball with the Mariners. The Dodgers traded for him. If you remember, in 2016, the second half of 2016, nobody knew who the heck Chris Taylor was, some minor league infielder from the Mariners. The Dodgers traded Zach Lee, who was a flamed out top prospect for the Dodgers. And then all of a sudden, spring training 2017, Chris Taylor became Chris Taylor. And interesting enough, if you remember, that spring of 2017, he had the best spring of anybody. Outplayed Kike Hernandez. Kike made the team, and Chris Taylor actually started that season in the minor leagues. But Chris has uh, established himself as a clutch player for the Dodgers, one of the toughest players on this team, according to his teammates. So we're all pulling for him to find his way out of it. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. Daniels Jewelers is the official sponsor of the trip around the diamond. Stop by any Daniels location and say home run for your free team bracelet and $50 gift card toward any purchase of $99 or more. Daniels Jewelers own the dream. All right, before we get back to the phone calls, and we do have two lines open, want to share our conversation with Dodger veteran shortstop Miguel Rojas. We have not had him on the show until now, and he has become essentially a player coach, coaching up Mookie Betts at shortstop. And here is our conversation with uh, all around good player, good guy, good teammate, Miguel Rojas. It feels like uh, right now it's settled down a little bit as far as the demands on your time and everybody else's time. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, there's part of your career where you ought to understand 
uh, where you are, uh, what's going to be your uh, your responsibilities on the team. And it's nice to uh, have a couple of weeks on, under our belt now. So we have a little bit better understanding where we're going to be playing, um, uh, how things are going to be going. So that way you have a little bit more of time, like you're saying. Uh, I'm, I'm taking, a, um, helping Mookie, a shortstop. I'm taking that uh, with a lot of pride, you yeah. know, because uh, I know um, at this point of my career, I focus a little bit more on, on how I can help others and uh, um, as, as long as I can help the team win um, that can be uh, coming from the bench or, or or doing this stuff in the afternoon to help another player in our team to help us win games so I really understand what it takes to actually uh, contribute and I feel like that's what I'm doing right now. How do you prepare and balance both of those because I see you you put in a lot of time with Mookie how do you put in that time and also prepare for yourself? Yeah, I'm doing it with him. You know, like if I'm if I'm taking all the ground balls with him, if I'm if I'm doing and uh, uh, adopting the work ethic that Mo- the Mookies have in the game of baseball, I think I'm gonna get better. You know, uh, um, I'm I'm trying to like. Uh, share the knowledge that I have about the position, but at the same time, I'm working as hard as him. You know, like I'm taking the same amount of ground balls, I'm taking the same reps, we're working on the same stuff, and I, I just think that's uh, going to be beneficial for me when I'm coming into the game. Anyways, if I wasn't uh, working with Mookie, I would have a modified routine for me this year because I'm not playing every single day, but I'm still coming in in the crunch time in the game. You yeah. know, when, when we're winning by one, they put me in the, in the eighth inning, and that can be the ground ball that help us win the game. So I need to be uh, prepared for that uh, moment, and, and and if I'm not working hard to be ready for those moments, I think I, I'm not doing any good for the team. I've heard Mookie Betts say this. He actually said it to Michael Bush last year when he was trying to help him. Don't look at Miguel Rojas because what he does, nobody else can do. So can you take us through how you help Mookie Betts and what he's taking from you? It's, it's just making understand uh, what are his weakness and what are his strengths, you know, on, on the defensive side of the, of the game. He definitely knows what is that like in right field. Maybe a little bit of second base because he plays a lot last year, but uh, he doesn't have the uh, enough reps at shortstop to understand what he needs to work on. So I feel like he's coming with a really good understanding of like what he needs to work on every single day and what are the things that he needs to get better at, you know? And at, at the other end, he knows what he's really good at at short. So I feel like he's, he's uh, started to understand uh, that part of the game on the defensive part at shortstop, which is like really important for him. And I just trying to be an accent, you know, like he's going to ask questions. I'm not going to throw stuff at him. I just want him to uh, realize that his way is going to be his, uh, his his own way, you know, like he's not going to have to try to be like any other shortstops in the league. He's going to see a lot of people doing it different way. And that doesn't mean that it's wrong or right. Like he's going to have his own way to do things that he's going to figure out what works for him. And that's what we're trying to get right now. Miguel Rojas is our guest. This is the first time in nine years Miguel Rojas is not an everyday player. How has that, how has that adjustment been for you? Like, like I talked to you uh, early, um, I feel like I understand uh, uh, what point of my career I'm at right now, and I'm taking this uh, really seriously with a lot of pride, you know, uh, of uh, kind of shaping my career uh, and the end of my career to where I want to go next, you know. I feel like if I'm if I'm taking this uh, in a positive um, uh, note, in a positive environment, I feel like it can help me along the way and along the, uh, down the road when I want to take a coaching spot or I want to help uh, younger kids because I, I'm starting to understand how to talk to one of my teammates now, but it can be a player that I'm coaching later, you know. Like, I, I have a pretty good understanding where I'm at right now in my career. I feel like I can, I can I can still play shortstop and I can still play every day for a team. But uh, as long as I can actually like get something positive in an everyday basis for my organization, I feel like that's going to help me not just on the field, but when I want to do something or pursue something off the field after my career is over. And it feels like you have a certain edge about yourself this year because I know there's a lot of new shiny toys players that are on this team but it feels like the guys that were here last year want some redemption. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel like it's unfinished uh, business for us uh, players in this clubhouse. We know uh, how it felt last year, like falling short and getting swept uh, by the Diamondbacks uh, in that first series on the playoff. Uh, we want we want another chance, you know. We yeah. want another chance to go there and um, show everybody that we're going to be better prepared, 
uh, and and take that opportunity as a, as a chance to do something bigger than than what we could do last year. So I feel like the talent on this group is through the roof, but it's going to come down to uh, pay attention to the little details and playing the baseball that, that we need to play uh, on the pitching side, on the defensive side, running the bases, and everywhere in, in, in the game because uh, the other team that we're going to face, they're just not going to say, oh, the Dodgers are too good. We're yeah. just going to uh, let them have it. No, we're going to have to play hard throughout the whole year and hopefully win in a position where we can do it we, we can do it again, win a lot of games the, during the regular season, but have a little bit of a redemption uh, when the playoffs come. It's early, but do you like what you've seen so far in that department? You have to like it, you know. You have to like the way that um, this team is uh, is actually playing uh, baseball both sides of the ball, you know, on the on the pitching side uh, and on the offensive part. I feel like we never out of games, you know. I think the only one so far has been the rainy game in Chicago. We could have, like, <laughs> um, we could have uh, definitely, like, win that game if it was, a, 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 I think, a better condition. But I feel like that's the only way we, we, we've been out of it. You know, every other game we've been there with the opportunity to win uh, with someone on the play that can win the game in the last at bat of the game. So that's what you got to ask, you know, about, like, everybody in this clubhouse feel the same way. We have the talent, but uh, we got to... We, we got to have that opportunity to win every single night from the pitching standpoint and the hitting standpoint. It's been really uh, an honor to watch you go about your business. So thank you for the time. I, I hope we can uh, chat about baseball and about the season for a couple more years for sure. And then, uh, I mean, I always be uh, grateful for the opportunity that you bring me to, um, to talk to you and talk to the fans and talk to everybody out there on how hard we're working to, uh, to make this franchise and uh, the whole organization and the fans that are following uh, the Dodgers this year proud. Hey, it's our honor, Miguel Rojas. Appreciate Miguel Rojas for joining us. He's a class guy, and I don't care what Jazz Chisholm has to say. I like Miguel Rojas, and he certainly is taking on an unselfish role this year because he is still good enough to play every day at shortstop, and who knows, the way things may play out in the next two months, he may need to play more than what he's doing right now, but uh, for... This moment, Miguel Rojas is basically a player coach and coming off the bench last night when the Dodgers were in a tie game, Dave Roberts opted for defense and brought Miguel Rojas off the bench. So that's going to be his role. Spot starting at short and third base and then coming off the bench in late and close games like last night for the Dodgers. And in case you missed any of that interview, you can find it on the iHeartRadio app. We are in a rain delay here at Dodger Stadium. The rain can continues to fall our trusty producer engineer who now has turned into a weather acumen Dwayne McDonald has checked the weather reports and it looks like there is a chance the rain will stop at about eight o'clock tonight here at Dodger Stadium so maybe a two hour delay before this game starts so we'll see whether or not the Dodgers and Padres get this going but right now we're holding out hope that within the next uh, hour or so, we will have first pitch between the Dodgers and Padres, game two of this three-game series. But for now, all along our Los Angeles Dodgers audio network, we're going to send you back to regular programming here in Los Angeles on our flagship station, AM570 LA Sports. We have a full board of calls, so we're going to keep going. From Dodger Stadium, more Dodger talk around the corner as we are in a rain delay of all places in our home ballpark in beautiful, sunny Los Angeles, California. But the rain won't escape us. The rain continues to fall here at Dodger Stadium. We are in a rain delay. We'll uh, continue with Dodger talk on our flagship station. And like I mentioned, for our audio network, we're sending you back to regular programming. Don't go anywhere. We got more for you, and we'll check back in later as far as the rain delay goes. Take me out to Morongo, where I can watch all the games. With thousands of slots and blackjack With big screen TVs from the front to the back Yes, the dining there is outstanding Sideline Sports Bar is simply grand We were voted, yes, once again Best casino of the Southland Morongo, 
Good times. Every year on April 15th, the Dodgers honored the legacy of Jackie Robinson on the day of his Major League debut. The trailblazer who broke the color barrier proudly wearing Dodger blue and the only player to have his number retired nationally. Come to Dodger Stadium on Monday, April 15th when the Dodgers take on the Washington Nationals and be one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance to receive a Jackie Robinson Brooklyn Dodgers hat presented by UCLA Health. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promote Emotions. Medi-Cal renewals are happening now. All members' eligibility is reviewed once annually, and everyone's renewal date is different. You can check your renewal month in your online benefitscal.com account. If your current address, email, or phone number have changed, please update your information with your local county office. If you get a renewal form in the mail in a yellow envelope, you must complete it to keep your Medi-Cal. If you don't, you will lose your coverage. Visit lacare.org for more information. That's lacare.org. This is PGA Tour Pro Smiley Kaufman, and I'm happy to announce that you can now hear me on Sports Grid Radio. Just in time for the Masters, I'm bringing my show, The Smiley Show, to Channel 159, where I'll catch up with other golfers, athletes, and celebrities. John Rahm becomes the fourth Spaniard to win at Augusta. Join me every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. in the East on Sports Grid Radio. Channel 159 in your car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The South Carolina Gamecocks are on top of the women's college basketball world yet again. Perfection for South Carolina. 38 games, 38 wins. We're reacting to the perfect season and talking to the biggest names right here on Channel 374. Congratulations, Coach Saley. What does this particular title mean to you? This title is pretty special because it was unexpected. Keep it locked into Sirius XM SEC Radio as we continue to break it all down and celebrate the Gamecocks' third national title because we all believed the rain would be here at Chavez Ravine at 2 o'clock, and then we would be able to play this game um, on time, but that obviously has not happened. The rain was slow moving into downtown Los Angeles, and this game was expected to start uh, shortly around 6, 10 p.m. tonight. That's when first pitch was originally scheduled for, but because of Mother Nature, we are in a delay. No pitch has been thrown, which is a good thing and Gavin Stone when he does take the mound it's going to uh, be another wet one for him because like I mentioned earlier uh, last Sunday in Chicago he was the Dodgers starting pitcher in those less than ideal conditions so at least the Dodgers ground crew here at Dodger Stadium has taken all the precautions and protocol to uh, protect the infield and more specific the pitcher's mound and because of the drainage system here at Dodger Stadium, the outfield is not flooded. So uh, Dodger Stadium, by all accounts, especially in the outfield, it drains really well. So that won't be an issue once we start playing baseball. And the Dodgers, uh, like I mentioned, basically have their same starting lineup in this game that they've had recently. The only big change in the lineup from last night to tonight is that Kike Hernandez will start in left field in place of the struggling Chris Taylor. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. We're with you until this game begins or a decision is made to try to play a doubleheader when the Padres come back to town during the summer. And also coming up later this hour, we'll share one of my conversations with the great Vin Scully about his experiences with the boys of summer, the Brooklyn Dodgers. So stick around for that. But for now, we will go back out to the phones on Rain Delay Dodger Talk from Dodger Stadium. Damien in L.A. You're on Dodger Talk with David Vasse. Hi, Damien. Hi, David. Thanks for having me on Dodger Talk. My pleasure. What do you got for me today? How about this rain, you know? Uh, I always like to see things in a positive manner. At least we got to see a, a beautiful day tomorrow for uh, first pitch. Um, it's Sunday night baseball, so that's 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 a positive. Yeah. 
Uh, I wanted to start things off with uh, with Chris Taylor, which, you know, as, as much as he's been struggling early on this season, you know, I have uh, full confidence that he's going to turn things around. And uh, I appreciate the amount of uh, trust that Dave Roberts has, you know, inserting him in the lineup day in and day out. Hey, Damian, let me uh, ask you a because, question. You know, Why is Chris Taylor the center of attention? The Dodgers have really good players on their team. They've gotten off to a really good start. The four horsemen of uh, Mookie Betts, Otani, Freddie Freeman, and Will Smith have lived up to expectations. Tyler Glass now has been better than expected. Why is everybody <laughs> focusing on Chris Taylor? He's a small part of this team. That's a that's a great question, David. And to answer your question, well, let's not forget that Chris Taylor has been a staple in the Dodgers lineup for the last couple of years. Let's not forget that he was NLCS co-MVP with Justin Turner back in 2017. Let's not forget the walk-off home run he had against the Cardinals in the wild card. Uh, so, you know, he should be one of those players that we're focusing our attention in a positive manner because I, as a Dodger fan, I believe and I trust that he will turn things around. Let's just hope that, you know, he makes those necessary adjustments to get back to his, his usual form. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's my answer to your question. All right, Damian, thanks for the phone call. Appreciate it. Look, I know we all have an emotional attachment to Chris Taylor, but the facts are the last three seasons, it's been underwhelming. So I'm not sure what your expectations are for Chris Taylor. All I can tell you is it has looked this ugly uh, at different parts of the last couple of years. But when it comes to playoff time, Chris Taylor always seems to come up with a big hit. And let's not forget, uh, I know uh, close only counts in horseshoes, but uh, in game three of the NLDS in Arizona, Dave Roberts went to the guys that have delivered for him in the postseason in the past, and Chris Taylor almost ignited a Dodger comeback in game three and in the series, but he hit a ball to the deepest part of Chase Field. So uh, I know it doesn't look very good right now. I know one for 32 is not a great start to anybody's season. Even Anthony Rendon, who doesn't love baseball, has six hits. But uh, Chris Taylor is a bench player, and if he can't get it going, uh, the Dodgers have found ways to maneuver their roster to bring up players that can deliver. And for me, Andy Pajes would be the first guy I would call up because of what he did in spring training and what he's continued to do in AAA Oklahoma City. Let's go out to L.A. Oscar, you're on Dodger Talk with David Vasse. How you doing, Oscar? Hi, David. Hey, uh, nice to talk to you again. Great um, to talk to you. You know what? Uh, thank you. Uh, great interview with Miguel Rojas. Um, Real quick, just about the Taylor thing. I think it's that, it's a nostalgia, you know, what he brought, what he did for the team at certain points. It was awesome. We all hope he gets to that point again or just starts hitting. Uh, but what do you think about Mickey just being our, our shortstop? Or what is it going to take? You're talking about bringing someone up. Maybe Taylor doesn't go down. Maybe it's, you know, Lux. Um, as far as, like, what I've seen, I was looking at the numbers just to let you know. Uh, yeah, I feel like, like if Gavin Lux doesn't uh, start hitting pretty soon, and I would give him at least a 50-game sample size, uh, he's hitting 163 right now with a 403 OPS. I mean, we were told by the Dodgers the reason why he's in the lineup is for his offense, not his defense. They moved him to second base and kept his bat in the lineup. So if he does not start hitting by... May or the end of May, the Dodgers are going to have to reevaluate their infield alignment, and they may have to make a decision to go with a combination of Kike Hernandez and Miguel Rojas at shortstop and move Mookie Betts back to second base. So it's going to be exciting to see his growth this year. Well, uh, I mean, uh, I really had high hopes for Lux too, because you know the, the Dodgers always are good at selecting shortstops. Um, as far as it's just another question, uh, any news on Bueller? Uh, I think I saw something about him getting a line drive to the hand yesterday at his game. Uh, yeah, I gave an update on that. He's fine, and he'll make another rehab start on Thursday in Oklahoma City.
Thanks for the phone call, Oscar. We are getting, uh, I got a text from a friend, John Hefner in the Conejo Valley that updates me on the weather out there that the sun has come out out in the Conejo Valley. So hopefully that happens out here at Dodger Stadium. The wind is blowing from left to right and the flags are certainly waving in their majesty out here at Dodger Stadium. And uh, it's starting to lighten up and wow, we have a big time visitor in the booth right now. That beautiful bald head of Mark Mud Grant is in the house and he's got, man, he is dressed up. He is w too well dressed for a rain delay night at Dodger Stadium. Oh, he wants scissors. What's he doing? He's, he's cutting a napkin, a blue napkin. Is that symbolic of the Padres cutting up on the Dodgers? Are you trying to do that, Mark Grant? No. I'll show you what I'm doing. It's a magic trick. We're on radio. I can't really describe that or show that to people. Oh, boy. What's he doing now? He's got, oh, a pocket square. He's got to make a new pocket square. That's that's big league right there. You can't teach that. Wow. Amazing. Mark Grant, one of the good guys out there. And I love all the San Diego Padres broadcasters. If I had to rank them, uh, yes, that's right, 570. If I had to rank them, Tony Gwynn Jr. and Mark Grant would be at the top. Yeah. No doubt. Where's Don Orsillo? When he comes in, I'll tell him he's number one. <laughs> Let's go out to Fontana. Mateo, you're on Dodger Talk with David Vasse. How you doing, Mateo? Doing good, David Vasse. How you doing, man? Having a good time out here at Dodger Stadium in a rain delay. All right, yeah. Stay warm, stay dry. All right, uh, you mentioned earlier about the Padres and how there's something different. I agree with you. Now, they're not a threat to me, not yet, but there is something different. They, we have 88 runs scored this year. They are tied with us. This team just came back from like what an eight to nothing run against Chicago. Yeah, they came back they to beat them back. nine to eight. Yeah, well, there you go. See, and then they just came back with us. They're not a threat yet, but they, they, there's something about them that I wouldn't say we should worry about, but we should. Try on. What do you think about that? I wouldn't say worry, but I would definitely say that uh, they're a challenger. And if they get into the postseason, they, they may have something to uh, to be reckoned with. If you, if you become a wild card team, usually you're playing really good baseball and you're doing something right to advance to the NLDS. We have some news. I have mentioned that the Dodgers had Nick Ramirez and J.P. Fireheisen in the clubhouse, and the Dodgers now have made their announcement, but no details on injuries. They have just said that they have activated Nick Ramirez and J.P. Fireheisen, and they have placed Connor Brogdon on the injured list and also have placed, now here's the big one, Bobby Miller on the injured list. But the Dodgers are not saying what the injury is. So maybe we'll get more information from Dave Roberts after the game. But uh, that's concerning that Bobby Miller is one of the players on the injured list. And uh, we'll have to see whether or not we get details on Miller's injury. The Dodgers put out a press release now that goes into greater detail than the tweet they just sent out. Bobby Miller has been placed on the injured list with right shoulder inflammation so we'll see how long that keeps him out he uh he's on the injured list now and he will not be making his next start that is some um, surprising news because uh miller in his last two starts did not look as effective as he did in his first start and you have to wonder if the right shoulder was a reason why so we'll all have to digest that as uh, we move through the night, Bobby Miller placed on the injured list with right shoulder inflammation. Let's go out to Hollywood. Eric, you're on Dodger Talk with David Vasse. How you doing, Eric? Dodger Nation! David, bro, man, bummer. I was getting real comfortable about to watch these Padres. And, uh, man, let me just be very straight with all of Los Angeles. The Padres are nothing. They look great. They they seem real shiny, whatever. They haven't won anything. If all they're resting their laurels on is that series they beat us in, well, good for you. But as soon as they put that Kershaw um, 
on their jumbotron and make fun of him, they're never, ever going to do anything past that. When you mess with one Dodger, you mess with all of the Dodgers. And I know they ain't going to do nothing. And I'm just really tired of them with the little antics when they hit home runs and all that. They came back and won a game. So what? Let's wait till we get to the end of the year because I think this team is going to make some noise. And, uh, man, Bobby Miller down. I hope he's okay, man. I'm looking forward to your update, David, on him. I mean, that's a bummer, man. I hope he gets better. Yeah, us too, and that is a big blow to the Dodger rotation. Hopefully he's not out for an extended period of time, but if he's out for a couple of weeks, it's going to take him maybe another couple of weeks to build up and be ready to go in a game. So uh, this story will continue to develop. Bobby Miller placed on the injured list by the Dodgers officially with right shoulder inflammation, and that certainly makes things more interesting with Walker Bueller, who is going to make his next rehab start, his third rehab start uh, on Thursday in Oklahoma City. If things go well there with this news about Miller going on the IL, will the Dodgers make a decision to bring back Bueller uh, right after that Thursday start? Let's go out to San Pedro. Mick, you're on Dodger Talk live from Dodger Stadium. Hi, Mick. Hey, what's up, Dave? How you doing? Good, good. What do you got? Hey, first off, I want to commend you. Thanks for doing the hard work. I know it's tough eating all that Dodger food for us to <laughs> test it out. I just had that sampler. That looked like a, a pretty good rain delay type of meal, but, uh, you know, just in case you want to change it up from a Dodger dog, I gave you options. I hear you. The, the God's work out there. Hey, I, I wanted to, uh, to, to talk to Dodger fans about Gavin Lux a little bit. I know he's struggling, he's rolling over balls, he's not looking great, but, you know, a lot of people forget that uh, reigning NL MVP Ronald Acuna Jr. tore his ACL back in 2021, and his 2022 was pretty meh compared to his capabilities. So I think that, you know, we got to give him a little bit of a runway, got to give him an opportunity to kind of get his strength back and get his baseball plan back and his swing back and all that. I have faith that he'll get back to, to being the, the better player that he can be, and I don't think we should be, uh, you know, cutting him off so quickly. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you're talking about two different types of players there. Ronald Acuna Jr., I mean, he's one of the best players in baseball there, Mick. Oh, of course. I'm not saying Gavin's going to be, uh, you know, MVP candidate or anything, but compared to, you know, Acuna's capabilities and what he showed in 2023, the year after his ACL is 2022, he just wasn't the same guy yet. So That's I think true. that this is an injury that takes some time on the field. That's true, but the Dodgers have been giving opportunities to Gavin Lux since September of 2019. Let's not forget that either. Not wrong about that. Not wrong about that. I hope he finds it. All right, Mick, thanks a lot for the phone call. Appreciate it. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. David Vasse live at Dodger Stadium where we are in a rain delay. And when I say rain delay, no pitch has been thrown because they knew rain was coming. So uh, they delayed the start of this game and it was a good move because the rain started to come down pretty heavy here at Dodger Stadium around five o'clock and it has not let up outside for about five minutes. So it has started up again here at Dodger Stadium and it looks like on the radar, uh, the rain is going to let up around eight o'clock. So we'll stick with you right here on AM 570 LA Sports until 8 o'clock, and from there, hopefully we have some clarity on whether or not, A, the Dodgers and Padres are going to play tonight because there is an outside chance they may decide, hey, let's play a doubleheader during the summer when the Padres come back to town, or maybe we'll find out uh, when this game is going to start, whether it's 8 o'clock or 8.30. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. Let's go out to Whittier. Jeff, you're on Dodger Talk with David Vasse. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Dave. Hey, I just wanted to ask you about Walker Bueller. I know his his uh, outing in Ranch Cucamonga went, went short with the, the minor injury. Do you think he's going to pitch again in Ranch Cucamonga, or do you think he'll go uh, multiple uh, starts? I know they wanted him to get in like 80 pitches, and he only got in like 25 or 26. Do you think he's going to get two rehab starts in Ranch Cucamonga, or is he going to go to OKC? Yeah. What do you think? 
It, well, are you in Rancho Cucamonga, or you want to go to Rancho to see him pitch? Is that why you're asking, Jeff? It makes uh, sense. I'm in Whitker, but, but I've been to plenty of Quakes games. Yeah, I understand. Would you go if Walker Bueller was pitching there? Is that you want to kind of set your schedule? Yeah, I'd love to see him in Rancho Cucamonga. But uh, uh, I'm just curious if you think he's going to need more than one more rehab start before we see him in Dodger Blue, because I'd rather see him pitching in Los Angeles, to be frank. Dave. Right. And this Bobby Miller news of him going on the IL with right shoulder inflammation may make it just one more rehab start. The Dodgers, uh, you know, I'm sure wanted to get him built up maybe one more, and they may still do that. I've seen in the past where the Dodgers don't allow one injury to a player, uh, make them speed up the timetable for another. So uh, he was supposed to get 80 pitches in last night because he got hit on the hand after 27 and taken out of the game. Uh, I thought they were probably going to have him make get, make two more to stay on schedule, but this Bobby Miller news may change that, and he may pitch Thursday, and that may be it as far as rehab starts. Uh, he's going to likely pitch in Oklahoma City on Thursday, Jeff. Thanks for the phone call. Appreciate it. Let's go out to Monrovia. Marcos, is it raining out there too? No, it's actually clear. I'm out here driving around. Uh... I might not be at Dodger Stadium, but this is a good close second on Dodger Talk, so I appreciate it. Hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to talk about uh, Taylor. I know he's getting a lot of bad pub right now, but uh, it's not October yet, so we're going to be all right. You know, as long as uh, we can't win them all, but as long as he starts turning his thing around, I think he'll be all right. And as far as uh, the pitching staff, uh, I feel like the Dodgers have a second to none as far as the farm system. So we should be okay on, on as far as that goes. And we have a lot of guys that can rotate as far as different positions. So, you know. Well, right now the Dodger right, pitching you know. depth is a little thin, right? Uh, Emmett Sheehan's on the injured list, 60-day injured list. Blake Trinan and Bruce Dark Gratterall are not returning any time before the end of April. In fact, Gratterall can't return before the end of May. Um, you got Bobby Miller now on the injured list with right shoulder inflammation. Uh, so who's next man up? As far as the starting pitcher goes, it would be Landon Knack, or are the Dodgers now going to move Ryan Yarborough into the starting rotation because of the injury to Bobby Miller, depending on how long he's out? Uh, let's not forget about the most versatile pitcher on this roster in Ryan Yarborough. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks for the phone call, Marcos. Appreciate it. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. Uh, when we have rain delays, usually in other cities, I love to use that opportunity to share stories from the late, great Vin Scully, who legacy lives on through his voice, his calls. Last, last road trip, it was on the day of the 50th anniversary of Hank Aaron hitting his 715th home run, we shared Vin's call for you because it was against the Dodgers back in 1974. And on Monday, April 15th, is Jackie Robinson Day. And that's always a special day in Major League Baseball and especially in Los Angeles at Dodger Stadium. And for those that are attending, the Dodger game on Monday night, you will receive a Brooklyn Dodger replica hat in honor of Jackie Robinson. And like I said, during uh, other rain delays in other cities, it's always a great opportunity to share the voice of Vin Scully. And here was my first interview with Vin Scully, and I took the opportunity to pick his brain about the boys of summer, the Brooklyn Dodgers, including the great Jackie Robinson. Enjoy Vin Scully. I was looking back at an old program, and I had a picture of you and Jackie Robinson on ice skates. I, I believe it was back in Brooklyn. Talk about those times when you first started and the relationships you cultivated with a man like Jackie Robinson. Well, I think, first of all, when I first started, I was the same age as many of the rookie players. I can remember sitting in the back of the bus uh, with Dick Williams, who was a rookie outfielder for the Dodgers, who eventually became a Hall of Fame manager. So a lot of years go by. Uh, and in those days, uh, with Jackie and I, 
uh, we were sent to the Catskill Mountains. There were a resort up there called Grossinger's, pretty famous in the east. And it was dead of winter. And we were going to hold a Q&A with the guests and do whatever we could do to entertain. So I brought my ice skates because I was a kid from the east and I skated. And uh, Jackie and Rachel uh, came. And Rachel was about eight months pregnant. And uh, Jackie said, oh, you're going to go skating. And I said, yeah. He said, well, I'll go with you. I said, okay. So Rachel said, I'll go too. Well, we went to the rink right at Grossinger's. And there was a lady named Maureen Mellorick. And she took uh, Rachel off to get her skates. And Jackie and I went in the locker room. And Jackie got a pair of rented skates. And I was putting on mine. And Jackie said, when we get out there, uh, I'd like to race you. And I was shocked, and I said, Jack, I didn't know that you, uh, you raced. You're from Southern California. I knew about basketball. I knew about football, but I didn't know you ice skated. And he said, oh, I've never been on skates in my life. So I looked at him, and I said, well, Jack, I mean, I'm not a great skater, but I can skate, and there's no way that you're going to beat me in a race. And he said, I know, but that's the way I'm going to learn. And that really was the competitive fire inside of Jackie Robinson. Can you talk about what he went through and how you witnessed everything that he did go through as one of the pioneers, not only in baseball, but in American society? My first taste of what it was like to travel with Jackie was the spring of 1950. And we went from Vero Beach to Texas on our way to Brooklyn. So it was a long, long trip. And we came back from Texas through the South, and that's when I realized the impact that he had made on the country. Jackie was uh, very forceful, however, with the people. If the uh, black community came out, and they did, they were in right field and center field in some of the small ballparks, and Jackie would go out, and if he saw one or two, let's say, who were over-celebrating, who perhaps had gone to the hard stuff, uh, Jackie would really uh, not ball them out, but he would say to them, this is not the way to behave. Uh, you can be happy, but you don't want to show some bad habits while trying to be happy. So he was very concerned about the reaction of the black people in the South. But he was a remarkable man, and I've often said this, most of us lose some of our skills when we get angry. Jackie actually excelled when he got angry, certainly on the baseball field. That's why Leo DeRocher and other managers used to say, leave him alone, let him sleep, because if you got him angry, uh, he could do the most remarkable things. And I remember in Pittsburgh one time, uh, they threw at him and he got angry. So he had a base hit, then he stole second, then he stole third, and then he stole home. And so that's the kind of a player he was. The fire in his belly was amazing. Let's talk about another one of the boys of summer that I know you have a fondness for, and that's Gil Hodges, one of the most, I would say, underrated first basemen in the history of baseball, overlooked for the Hall of Fame. Could you talk about him and how much of an impact he had, not only in Brooklyn, but in the game of baseball? He was a complete player and a complete human being. Uh, Gil would be the model for youth of America. He was that straight arrow, that remarkable, uh, strong faith, unwavering in following principles. Uh, he was really a classic human being. He was also a very, very good player. And I certainly don't mean to uh, diminish Tony Perez, who was in the Hall of Fame. But Gill had better numbers, really. And um, Tony played much longer because Gill was in the, in the Marine Corps. Uh, Hodges, I don't understand it. Uh, in fact, I had two wishes before I leave this mortal coil. One was for Walter O'Malley to get into the Hall of Fame. He made it. The other is for Gil Hodges, and I cannot understand why he's not in there. I, I just don't know. Speaking of Walter O'Malley, you started with the Dodgers in 1950. I've heard so many different ranges of emotions and temperament from Mr. O'Malley. What was your relationship like? After one year with Mr. Ricky, Mr. O'Malley took over. To give you insight of what kind of a man he was, uh, I was home with my mother and dad and sister, and the phone rang one morning in the dead of winter, and I picked it up, and the voice said, Vin, I said, yes. He said, this is Walter O'Malley. And I said, yes, sir. I didn't know him well at all. 
And he said, I just want you to know that uh, I'm sure you're wondering about the future with the management change. We're happy with your work and we'll be more than happy to have you come back next year. And I said, thank you very much. And you can understand I was quite relieved. And I hung up the phone. And then I was overwhelmed with the feeling, my gosh, it wasn't a secretary who called me. It wasn't a PR man who called me. It wasn't the vice president of communications. It was the boss, Walter O'Malley, calling the third announcer. You had the great Red Barber, the equally fine Connie Desmond, and I was just the kid. I just did a couple of innings here and there. And the fact that he would personally call me to uh, reassure me and to tell me that uh, I could come back uh, gave you an insight into just what kind of a man he was. Jack Kent Cooke was very hands-on with Chick Hearn and Bob Miller. Was he the same with you? No, not at all. In fact, I really think one of uh, Mr. O'Malley's reasons for success He would hire the best people that he could find, and then he would let them do their work, and that was it. I mean, he would oversee, but he never interfered, never. He never said to me, I wish you'd pump more. The only thing he did do was ask me one question when we moved out here, and he said, we're all alone in Los Angeles. Do you think it would be better if you started to root for the team? And I said, Mr. O'Malley, I'm raised in New York, three teams. I was raised to broadcast, saying to myself, it's not only a Dodger fan listening to the game, it's a Giant fan, a Yankee fan, a Cub fan. So I really think I should go down the middle because that's the only thing I know. He said, if that's your reasoning, fine, we'll go that way. That was typical of him. Don Drysdale, a great pitcher. What was it like from covering him as a pitcher to being a broadcast partner with him? Well, Don was a competitor. Anyone who ever saw him pitch, he had that almost sneer on his face as he was attacking the hitter. And that's what he did. He attacked the hitter. Uh, And interestingly enough, when he came up into the booth, where I'm pretty relaxed about whatever happens on the field, uh, not Don. He was still a player. And he would get angry and he would slam down things and I would say, easy, big guy, easy. It's just one game. The thing that would anger him the most would be exactly what you would think. A player whom he thought was not giving 100%. And if he ever spotted that, if he thought somebody was dogging it or lazy or whatever the word might be, he would be like Mount Vesuvius and I'd be trying to cap it saying, easy, pal, easy. <laughs> but yeah, that was, uh, that was Don. He, he never quit playing even when he was in the booth. All right, there is my first ever interview with the late, great Vin Scully that actually took place in 2012 and I always had those questions for him and I'm sure you could hear in my voice how nervous I was because I was not very deliberate with my questions. Um, That was my first ever experience being in a room. Uh, It was actually the Dodger Talk longtime studio up here in the press box before they did a renovation and knocked it out to expand the dining room. There is actually a radio booth up here in the press box ever since Dodger Stadium was built. And Vin and I went to that back booth and um, yeah, to say I was nervous was an understatement. But I always had those questions. And I always had those questions about that photo of uh, Vin Scully and Jackie Robinson on ice skates. I always had questions about Gil Hodges. And since then, Vin Scully got his wish. Gil Hodges was inducted into the Hall of Fame a few years back. So um, I just always had those questions growing up listening to Vin Scully here in Los Angeles. And I may have asked them a little bit in a nervous fashion, but hey, got through it. And as always, Vin Scully had some great stories and um, certainly made me feel comfortable. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. We are in a rain delay here at Dodger Stadium. The grounds crew doing a great job. They just dumped water off the tarp, which had been accumulating rainwater since about five o'clock this afternoon with the tarp being on. And we have gotten word that, yes, they are going to play ball tonight. 
An estimated 825 first pitch now for game two of this three game series between the Dodgers and San Diego Padres. It will be Gavin Stone on the mound for the Dodgers going up against another right hander and Matt Waldron. The Dodgers have Mookie Betts at shortstop, Shohei Otani at DH, Freddie Freeman at first base, Will Smith at catcher, Teoscar Hernandez who left Dodger Stadium last night as the major league lead leader in runs driven in with 17. Max Muncy is at third, James Outman in center, Kike Hernandez in left, and Gavin Lux at second base for the Dodgers tonight. So we're with you until 825 until first pitch is thrown here at Dodger Stadium. Jose Moda is going to join us at 8 o'clock, but until then, your phone calls at 866-987-2570. I don't know about you, but it was a great opportunity to hear Vin's voice again and to hear those stories. Uh, certainly makes me grateful that there was a rain delay tonight here at Dodger Stadium. David Vasse with you until 825. That's when first pitch between the Dodgers and Padres will be thrown right here on AM570 LA Sports. loves that competitive rivalry that they have. At number six, game five, 2016 NLDS. Came in out of the bullpen and he punches out Wilmer Defoe to send the Dodgers to the NLCS. I love the fact that he came in to save Kenley Jansen's yep. W right there. His own catcher. <laughs> exactly. And the 2018 pressure. NLCS out of the bullpen in game seven against the Brewers to send the Dodgers to the World Series. At number five, very first start of the 2022 season, Bill, April 13th, Target Field, Minnesota. Remember, he had elbow problems, didn't pick up a baseball for three months during the offseason, had seven perfect innings that day. Yeah, there were a lot of question marks that offseason with, uh, with his future, whether he'd be able to come back, whether the elbow would hold up, and then he comes out and does that out of the game. And then July 15th, he took a perfect game into the eighth. Look at the play there by the Red Dream right there. Full extension, great play. Also the pick there by Freddie Freeman, who really was locked in, had everything working. Great fastball slider and breaking ball command. Next level. And because of his greatness, the first half of that season, he not only was an all-star, he started the all-star game at Dodger Stadium. At number four, opening day 2013 against the Giants. Jerry, I think you were there when Kirst threw a complete game shutout against the rival Giants. I mean, who throws complete game shutouts on opening day anymore? But he also hit his first and only career homer. Well, John, it was 0-0 right there. And then Kirst says, you know what? If you guys are going to score runs, I'm going to do it myself. 
straight center field off the bat, and we bet Kirsch. Get up there. Get up there. Take your current <laughs> call. You deserve it. At number three, a montage of milestones for Kirsch. He strikes him out and passes Sandy Koufax. Kershaw is now the all-time strikeout leader in postseason play. The future Hall of Famer's got a ring. There it is! Clayton Kershaw, the Dodgers strikeout king, in a roar to end his evening. And Kershaw has win 200. All of those on his Hall of Fame resume at number two, 2014, Bill. It was a magical season for him. 21 wins. The ERA 1.77 became the first National League pitcher since Bob Gibson in 1968 to also win MVP. And he started the season late. Or he started it early in Australia, yeah, then got hurt like, and started it late, and then was just unbelievable. He and Granke in the middle of the, the season that year were unhittable. Yep. Took home the Cy Young and the MVP there in 2014. At number one, the best start of that MVP season was this night against the Rockies. Got it. He's done it. Clayton Kershaw pitches a no-hitter. 15 strikeouts, no walks, no hits. The analytics say this was the best game ever pitched. Him and Kerry Woods. Kerry Woods. Out yeah. Outstanding night there from Clayton Kershaw. You know, Josh Beckett threw a no-hitter, kind of put a little jab at Kirsch. And Kirsch, okay, I'm going to one-up you. Outstanding performance. About a month later, he did the same exact thing, one-upped him indeed. And I know, Jerry, you spent a couple seasons as Clayton Kershaw's teammate. You guys have been friends ever since. I imagine it had to be special to be sharing the field and the clubhouse with someone like the future Hall of Famer Clayton Kershaw. You know, I, I got a chance to see Clayton Kershaw as a young guy in his prime. You knew. He was special then, and for him to continue to be consistent year after year, taking the ball every fifth day, making sure he has gives his team a chance to win, but not only that, he is an incredible teammate, a superstar that just wants to be one of the guys. Truly he's there, yes, he is focused, he's locked in when he's pitching, but on the other four days he's not pitching, he's there. Hooting and hollering with the guys, wants to be a teammate, a great teammate, the celebrations, Quietly funny. A lot of people don't know this. Clayton Kershaw is quietly funny in the dugout, in the clubhouse, and even via text. So Clayton <laughs> Kershaw, outstanding teammate, great athlete. And yes, I've been very fortunate to, to, to call Clayton Kershaw yeah. a friend. But you know what? He's friends with everybody he comes into contact with, especially as teammates and former teammates. Clayton Kershaw, yeah. great teammate, great leader. Great friend. That's one thing everybody says. He has been he has been a, a great teammate all throughout his entire career. And I know Bill, a lot of beat writers out there, they never get the opportunity to follow a player like Clayton as closely as you have. You've seen the highs, you've seen the lows, you've seen it all. What has it been like to cover Clayton? Uh, it has not. I haven't seen the sense of humor. I've seen <laughs> a lot of things, but I have not seen the sense of humor. Uh, it's been an evolving relationship. I told Clayton recently that when he comes into a post-game interview or an interview of any kind, he knows what he's going to say. And you are not going to get him to say anything else, no matter how many times you rephrase the question. <laughs> he's got his, his points that he's going to give you, and that's it. He is not going to show anything that he doesn't want to show. The last couple of years, he's softened a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think he sees, you know, recognizes where he is in his career. He's enjoying some of the things more, like the uh, the milestones. He won't say that they mean a whole lot to him. That That's something for after his career. But he clearly is enjoying the, those kind of moments a lot more than he might have early in his career. Yeah, I mentioned at the top of the show how we all started calling it Kershaw Appreciation Day this year. And it's almost like he was appreciating every moment, every time he got a chance to take the ball, Jerry. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, Bill? I, I kind of I really like your vantage point and your view of it. Because looking at Clayton Kershaw as a teammate and, and, and now kind of covering him as a media member, I recognize when you're a superstar, you never want to give away anything. Because what he says to you, guess what? It's going to be shared with the whole world. Now, a player like me, I was never a star player. So I can say what? something. Nobody, yeah, believe it or not, yeah, I know, Bill. I wasn't a star player. So if I say something, other teams are going to, uh, okay. But when the superstar player, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Clayton Kershaw, if they say something, other teams could try to use that and run with it. Guys like Clayton Kershaw understand that. That's why they give you very little because they understand whatever they say 
everybody's going to try to take it and run with it. And don't worry, Bill, he's been difficult on Jerry as well. When Jerry's tried to interview him, he almost jumped out of his seat last year when Jerry called his pitch I'll a cutter. I'll give you a quick story from spring training a couple yes. of years ago that illustrates that. Uh, he, he sounded terrible. He had a cough and, and nasal, you know, congested and everything. And uh, Dave Roberts told us that he was feeling a little under the weather. So I went and asked Clayton if he was going to make his start in the exhibition game the next day. And he, he wouldn't, wouldn't tell me because he, he didn't want anybody to know. I said, well, you're feeling under the weather, aren't you? He goes, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, you're feeling under the weather. He said, I don't want you to write that. Yep. And I said, why not? Sign a weakness. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's right the there. relationship right there. All right, coming up, we will break down some of the most memorable moments of Clayton Kershaw's career, including the one and only home run on opening day that we saw back in 2013. Plus, Kirsch and Sandy Koufax have formed a special bond through the years. We'll reflect on the connection between the Dodgers' two legendary left-handed pitchers. Watch me. Watch me paddle, carve, and drop in. The water is my canvas. Let the good times begin. Perfect sets and barrels I chase. Where sand becomes surf, waves set the pace. A childhood accident couldn't ruin my vibes. Thanks to one special place, I've never been more alive. Watch me. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Shakey's Pizza is celebrating our educators with the Spectrum Sports Educator Sweepstakes. Eight lucky winners will receive a $50 gift certificate from Shakey's Pizza plus a teaching kit. Enter online at SpectrumEducator.com for your chance to win. The pizza pioneers since 1954, Shakey's is celebrating 70 years of pepperoni perfection. Right now, double down with Shakey's new cupped and diced pepperoni pizza plus mojos for just, well, 1954. Shakey's, the people's pizza parlor. Watch me. Watch me tumble, jump, and soar. When our squad is on point, we own the floor. Dazzling stunts and dances are my jam. Pain once caused issues, but they had a plan. A life-changing brace with no surgery to fear. Activity without limits, one more reason to cheer. Watch me. Industry-leading scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's Hawaii. The most amazing care anywhere. Kia, movement that inspires. When you see all the people who work at Shriners Hospitals for Children, you might see everyday people just doing their job. But to me and other kids, they're superheroes. But these superheroes are only able to help all of us kids because of the support of people just like you so we get the care we need to live our lives like super kids. Please go to loveshriners.org. Clayton Kershaw making his long-awaited debut. So let's see now what young Clayton Kershaw will do. There it is! Clayton Kershaw! The Dodgers strikeout king. I've been fortunate enough to be here for this long. I grew up here, started a family here, been through a lot of ups and a lot of downs here. Steelers going to make another rehab start on April Thursday 30th, in Oklahoma City. Do the Dodgers say after that one, you're back in the rotation if all goes well? Here's option B. Ryan Yarbrough, the most versatile pitcher on the staff, goes into the rotation until Bueller or Bobby Miller return. Here's option C. You call up Landon Matt Knack, who is on the 40-man roster, a starting pitcher that's been starting in Oklahoma City. 
I will lean towards the Yarborough option right now because he's here and he's lived through this. Now, with Yarborough, the issue also becomes do you use him as a true starter? His real success has come when he's not been a true starter, but he's had an opener in front of him. In that case, is he ready to do it? Of course, yes. But then if you go the opener route to accommodate him, what are you sacrificing out of your bullpen now that he's short? Somebody that Bobby Miller is going to give you, you know, some 100 pitches in six innings to accommodate, you know, Yarbrough. But I would go with that. I, I like Landon Knack to, at least when he gets here, to have a little bit more under him. This guy's got some talent. He's got some guts. Let's put it that way. But I think this early in the season, to put that on him to replace Bobby and then not know what happens when other people get activated, it just adds a lot. Now, I'm not saying that I cannot, it cannot happen, but out of necessity, Emmett Sheehan came from Double A last year when nobody thought it was going to happen. And Bobby Miller came up even after the injury in April. He was in the big leagues quite soon, right? So, uh, But I would lean towards the Yarbrough option, but give Yarbrough the chance to be a starting pitcher and know that a guy that him, he's not going to light up the radar gun. But you look at his numbers, Dave, and accumulating innings is not an issue for him. He's got to be stretched out now, though. But in soft contact and guys really not slugging against him, he can bring all that to you, knowing that sometimes, of course, if he doesn't locate well, it could be uh, it could be disastrous. Like you said, last year the Dodgers used Yarborough in a opener or middle uh, bulk innings type of pitcher scenario. They do also have Michael Grove in their bullpen who came up as a starter. They've uh, extended him three innings in outings this year. So could you see a piggyback of Yarbrough and Michael Grove for maybe a turn until Bueller's back? I can see that happening uh, in the short term uh, because in the long term, you don't want to use the, the multiple innings you can get out of both of them to uh, sacrifice your rotation. But in the short term, I can see that. Now for Walker Bueller, the question becomes when he comes back is you want him back. I mean, you want to worry about innings or pitches made, how he responds. So I think this whole time when you know him so well that he's been impatient, wanted to get back, Dave, mm -hmm. is serving him well to know that what the Dodgers are trying to do with him is when you're back, you're back for good because, yeah, you come back not as a number four, number five guy. You come back as a guy that we need to go out there and be the ace that we know he can become. And I guess the good news for the Dodgers is the schedule helps them out because they do have two off days in the next week. Thursday is an off day at home, and then next Monday, a week from tomorrow, is a travel day to the East Coast for the Dodgers. So uh, maybe that gives them the opportunity to give pitchers like Yoshi Yamamoto five days rest even with this injury because Bobby Miller was scheduled to pitch on Tuesday here at Dodger Stadium against the Nationals. So that's the next time his spot comes around. And, you know, Ryan Yarbrough pitched one inning last night. Good thing the Dodgers did not overextend him in extra innings. Perhaps the Dodgers knew something and they're playing safe just to know if we overextend them right now, let's make sure that if somebody comes up short in the rotation the next few days or if there's a spot for him to start, then we're not overextending him today knowing that uh, we're going to need him in the long run. Jose Moda is joining us during the rain delay. First pitch between the Dodgers and Padres coming up at 825 tonight, the middle game of this three-game series. And Gavin Stone is going to be on the mound for the second time, Jose, in less than ideal conditions. In Chicago, he was the starting pitcher when it was sloppy out there at Wrigley Field, and here he is having to wait around two extra hours. Um, uh, he seems to be very nimble, a guy that came out of the bullpen, started for the Dodgers last year. What do you see tonight from him? I like to see him go out there. And, and first of all, besides him, I like to see the defense catch the ball for him. Yeah. Okay, that's number one. It started in the first inning. That the play was changed for a hit. So all those runs are earned now uh, on Freddie Freeman's uh, error to begin the game. Now it's a base hit. But I like to see from him is the aggressiveness to not base everything on the changeup. Utilize your fastball. Okay, he's got two of them. He's got the, the good four-seamer that's getting pounded right now, hitting over 400, and he's got the two-seam fastball. More two-seamers today will be ideal, especially against a Padres team that the Tatis and Machado and even the lefties are in Cronenworth and Merrill, they lean out over the plate. If you have enough of a two-seamer to run it in and back and catch some of the zone inside, you're going to be just fine. And for Tatis and Machado, run it in, get him off the plate so everything else and mainly his changeup becomes effective. We're not going to ask this guy to develop a slider in the middle of the season, but he needs that pitch 
to keep right-handed batters more honest when it comes down to going side to side. What about the cutter? That seems to be uh, part of his arsenal now that looked good in spring training. If he uses it consistently, the cutter's such a field pitch, it sometimes alters the way you throw your fastball. You gotta use it enough so when you release, it just feels like a fastball and let it run naturally. And if it happens that he needs to take something off of it to make it look more like a slider, I think it's gonna be very beneficial to him. One final thing on Gavin Stone. Last year, part of his issues was that he was tipping pitches. And that has become such a huge part of game planning now. Do you feel like in his uh, first couple of starts, he may have been tipping something? I'm not gonna base the results on that because last season, this kid had you know, also a higher ERA. What I wanna base it on is his pitch selection, the sequencing, and the fact that hitters, guys that I've talked to, like, I know that I don't have to worry about anything going sideways, so I'm, I'm going north-south on him, and I, that's, that's about it. And there's such an issue right now with pitch tipping that guys are becoming scared sometimes. Bobby Miller changes the way he held his, his glove in Minnesota compared to Chicago the other day for the same reason. And at some point, everybody tips. I mean, it, it has been happening for a long time around baseball. What happens is how you relay the information. So counteract it, make good pitches when guys know what's coming, make it in better spots. That's about the only way you can go out there and counteract. Hey, speaking of tipping pitchers, Jose, Dave Roberts in his pregame press conference today confirmed what you talked about on Dodger Talk last night regarding Manny Machado in his first at-bat getting a little bit too far away from the on-deck circle. And I found out that it was Dave Roberts himself telling him, hey, get back, telling the umpire, make Machado go back. And Machado heard him, hits the two-run home run on a first-pitch curveball from Yamamoto and looks directly at Dave Roberts. And Dave said he did not see it. I find that hard to believe, too. He sees everything. Here's the deal. Umpires need to do a better job restricting that, OK? Adrian Beltre got tossed out of a game when he was an active player with the Rangers because he was so close That's to right. home plate. And Jerry Davis, I believe it was, <laughs> said, you got to go and move back to the on-deck circle. So Beltre moves the circle itself That's physically. Right and says, and Gary Davis says, you know what, you're gone. So umpires need to do a good job. Dave, if I can stand close to home plate and see that lane and that angle, I can see release point, I can see tilt, I can see plane, I can see velocity. And at the same time, I am one chick swing away from somebody hitting me in the forehead, and who knows what could happen. Yeah, that's something. For safety, too. I asked Dave whether or not he's going to ask the umpires to enforce that tonight, so maybe something to watch for in the first inning. You have to. Uh, Carlos Correa, Minnesota. I got some pictures oh. from years ago. Was he banging trash cans? <laughs> no. He was just too close. Oh, okay, play. okay. Umpires need to go out there and stress that. <laughs> Take care of that. Well, you're, you're awesome to pick up on stuff like that, Jose, and that's why we appreciate your insight every night on Dodger Talk. Uh, we'll see whether or not we do one tonight, considering we just finished two and a half hours of Dodger Talk Rain Delay Edition. Dave, you brought me in. I appreciate it. I can be around Ricardo Lunas. <laughs> I can see Rick getting ready over there. And, uh, oh, he's be around locked Dwayne. in. Can't he, you tell? He is locked in over there right now. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. Enjoy yeah. the game. Have okay. a great broadcast. Is Fernando in the house tonight? Fernando's in Mexico. His team is uh, playing over there. Oh, nice. Yeah, All, right. Yeah. All right. Well, I would have loved to have seen him during a two-hour rain delay at Dodger Stadium. What would Fernando have done? For a drink coffee. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. You got it. Great to see your pops around, too. Yeah, pops. Love it. Pops going to join us tomorrow on the broadcast. I love that. Yes. One of the best hitting coaches the Dodgers have ever had, Manny Moda. Maybe you could give us some Manny Moda tips next time we do this. Let's do that. All right. Let's do a show with him. Okay, sounds good. There he goes, Jose Moda, who joins us every night on Dodger Talk and every night on every broadcast for the Dodgers Spanish audio broadcast. We're going to take a timeout. When we continue, we'll welcome back in our Los Angeles Dodgers audio network as we are just under 25 minutes away from first pitch between the Dodgers and Padres from Dodger Stadium right here on AM570 LA Sports. Your Toyota dealer's got just the thing for spring. Great offers on the Toyota car, truck, or SUV that's just right for you. So now's the time to check out a stylish new Camry, powerful new Tundra, or versatile new RAV4. 
But here's the thing, spring will be gone before you know it. So don't wait, see your Toyota dealer today. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. Deciding to get a new car is a big deal. And deciding on the right new car that fits your lifestyle and budget is an even bigger deal. Fortunately, there's Toyota.com, where you can check out the latest offers on any new Toyota, search inventory, and locate a dealer. So to find the best deal on the Toyota that's just right for you, visit Toyota.com. We make it easy on you. Toyota, let's go places. At UCLA Health, discovery and innovation lead to the best care. Our doctors and nurses work tirelessly every day to bring you the best experience so you can live your best life. It's why we're consistently ranked as a top hospital nationwide for 34 consecutive years by U.S. News and World Report. Go to UCLAHealth.org to schedule an appointment today at one of over 270 locations in Southern California. Once again, that's UCLAHealth.org. The start of the season for the boys in blue has begun, and everybody is excited about the starting pitching and what the new lineup looks like, with three former MVPs hitting first, second, and third. But as far as the Hoffy hot dogs go, we already know the lineup. For some, it's got to be the Hoffy quarter pound all beef franks. For others, it's the Hoffy bacon wrapped dogs, or it's the original Hoffy natural casing all beef frankfurters. No matter which you choose, you win. Visit hoffybrand.com to find your nearest location of Hoffy hot dogs. Hoffy, local, original. Great! We're taking requests at Arco Radio, the only station that's a gas station. I'm your host, Hannah the Dashboard Hula Girl. Hi, I'd like to dedicate a song to the other gas stations. I'm sorry? Well, I've stopped going to them since I discovered Arco's quality gas at lower prices. So, this is my farewell. All right. Other stations, this one's for you. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying! Arco, quality top tier gas for less. Savings based on independent retail price survey. See arco.com for details. Learn more at toptiergas.com. Baseball is back. Talk baseball all year long on MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM 89, and the all new Sirius XM app. David Vassay live at Dodger Stadium, just ahead of first pitch between the Dodgers and Padres, coming up at 825. Rick Monday and Steven Nelson will have the call tonight here on the Los Angeles Dodgers Audio Network. Hope you're doing well wherever you may be. And uh, the Dodgers looking to get back on the winning side of things after a disappointing loss last night in 11 innings to the Padres, 8-7. to seven. In case you're joining us late, we have more news because during this rain delay, the Dodgers announced that they have placed Bobby Miller on the injured list. And I just got a text from Bobby himself, and he told me it's nothing uh, too serious. The shoulder was bugging him a little bit, so they wanted to be smart about it and get ahead of it and not turn it into a bigger thing. So uh, that's good news, especially when I'm getting it straight from the source. Bobby Miller, who just sent me uh, a text that said that the shoulder has been uh, a little bit off the last couple of times out and uh, the Dodgers obviously don't want to make it a bigger issue and they're really good at uh, getting proactive about injuries so they don't turn into bigger things but that's uh, that's great news to hear from Bobby Miller who uh, hopefully is not out too long. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. Gavin Stone making the start for the Dodgers tonight. He was out here long tossing and now headed to the Dodger bullpen to warm up for his start against the Padres. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. By the way, speaking of pitches, first pitch, all that, our teammate Rodney Pete, the former great quarterback for the USC Trojans and longtime quarterback in the NFL, Threw out the first pitch last night at Dodgers Stadium, and we all know about his better half, the great Holly Robinson, Pete, and they have a great family, and one of their sons has autism, and that's R.J. Pete, who works in the Dodger clubhouse, and he is such a great spirit, such a great big heart, and he was catching the first pitch from Pops, and I did recommend to Rodney Pete to forget about the baseball, even though he also played baseball at USC, but go with the football that would be a safer play and something unique that would catch everybody's attention and maybe it would be a little bit safer than throwing a baseball well 
Rodney, give him props. He did go to the pitcher's mound, so I give him props for that. But he took his son off guard. Uh, he crossed him up, and it hit RJ in the stomach. Uh, he didn't catch it. So I'm not blaming RJ. I'm blaming my barbecue brother, Rodney Pete. RJ gets a free pass with me 24-7. So come on, Rodney. Where was the football last night? Let's go out to Garden Grove. Vanessa, you're on Dodger Talk with David Vasse. Hi, Vanessa. Hey, Dave. Um, I just had a quick question for you. Do you think we'll see um, like Andy Pajes anytime soon? He's like carrying so. it up right now. So. I hope so. He had a great spring, and he impressed the coaches because he put in a lot of work during the offseason to come into better physical condition, and he was a better baseball player. Whatever work he put in, he was better. And I personally believe if the Dodgers need to dip into the minor leagues for a right-handed outfield bat, he's the guy I would call up. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, that's about it. Um, like, thanks for having Dodger talk, and thank you for um, that uh, that sound by with or that interview with the great Vince Scully. Thank you, Dave. Uh, my pleasure, Vanessa. Great uh, opportunity to share the great voice of Vince Scully. And um, I would say that was uh, uh, special and maybe one of the things I'm thankful for as far as being able to work that closely to Vin and uh, obviously uh, to be there in my first year uh, hosting Dodger Talk and being part of the Dodgers audio broadcast and uh, Vin agreeing to do that interview in my first year. That was nerve-wracking and gratifying at the same time and had a lot of my questions answered. And I'm hopeful that it was some of your questions too. And like I mentioned earlier, Bobby Miller on the IL with right shoulder inflammation, I would say the other good part of this rain delay is not that he's on the IL and dealing with shoulder inflammation, but that he sent me a message that said uh, the shoulder has been uh, bugging him just for a little bit here, and he just wanted to be smart about it and get ahead of it. So uh, that's also a relief as well. Uh, the Dodgers are in good hands tonight with Gavin Stone. They have high expectations for him. It's funny, a couple of weeks ago, Gavin Stone has told me since last year that when he was growing up in Arkansas, his favorite team was the St. Louis Cardinals. And he always wanted to be a shortstop when he was growing up in Little League. And his favorite player was David Eckstein. And if you remember, David Eckstein was part of the Angels 2002 championship team and also the Cardinals 06 championship team uh, and won the World Series MVP. So uh, I did cover David Eckstein when he played for the Angels and I arranged for David to call my phone last homestand and we were able to connect Gavin Stone with David Eckstein. Eckstein FaceTimed my iPhone and I was in the dugout with Gavin Stone and I just handed him my cell phone and he was able to talk to David Eckstein and David Eckstein had not heard of Gavin Stone until I sent him a message about it and he was uh, now a big fan of Gavin Stone and he said he's going to follow his career from now on and uh, it was funny how Gavin Stone asked him about where that yellow Corvette was that he won as World Series MVP in 06. And uh, he said that he still has it, but uh, he doesn't drive it as much as he used to. So it was great to see the look on Gavin Stone's face, who's a major leaguer and a guy that has high expectations in this organization, turn into a little kid and be fanboy over a FaceTime with David Eckstein. So Gavin Stone on the mound tonight, and I'm sure David Eckstein is keeping tabs on this. He will uh, be watching Gavin Stone take the mound tonight to throw out first pitch at 825 against the Padres. Let's go back out to the phones. Danny in Claremont, you're on Dodger Talk, rain delay edition with David Vasse. Hi, Danny. Hey, Dave, thanks for getting me on. I, uh, I wanted to ask you about something I heard uh, Mr. James Loney say on uh, Sportsnet LA a few days ago before the game. But he was talking about uh, Mookie Betts and saying that, in his opinion, he thought Mookie Betts should get a, a big C on his uh, uniform for captain. And I know the Dodgers have never really had captains. I think Justin Turner was kind of like an unofficial captain for a long time. But I kind of just want to get your thoughts on that, on, on, on the, the Dodgers, you know, if they should ever have a captain. And, and you think how do you think Mookie Betts would fill in that role? 
Yeah, my understanding, the last time the Dodgers had a captain, it was Davey Lopes during the 70s. And the Dodgers don't put a C on jerseys. It's just unspoken. Longtime Dodgers PR man Steve Brenner actually told me that a couple of years ago. He said that Davey Lopes was the captain of that team, but they never made it some sort of formal thing like the Yankees do or other teams do. So um, I, I understand what James is saying. You know what I'd rather have for Mookie? Another ring on his finger to give him three World Series rings more than a C on his jersey. I, I'll take both. I'll take both. I think there's room for both. But I, I think Mookie would be a great candidate to, uh, to be a captain if they were ever to do something like that. All right, Danny. Thanks for the phone call. He certainly is leading by example, uh, not only when you see him when the game starts, but with the work ethic uh, three, four hours before the game. He's out here putting in a lot of work. And if Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman are out here putting in a lot of work, everybody else has got to be putting in just as much work because those are the best players on the team, and they're always out here relentless in trying to get better. 866-987-2570 is the phone number. The Dodgers and Padres just about 15 minutes away from first pitch. Gavin Stone on the mound for the Dodgers against, uh, it was uh, for the Padres. It is uh, one of these new pitchers that uh, I have not heard about, Matt Waldron. He'll be making his first start against the Dodgers tonight. I gave you the Dodger lineup. Here's how the Padres stack up tonight. Last night's hero, uh, Jackson Merrill is uh, going to be leading off for the Padres tonight in center field. Fernando Tatis Jr., who hit a two-run home run off of Ryan Brazier to tie the score last night, is hitting in the two spot. Jay Cronenworth, who's hitting 295 this year, is at first base. Manny Machado is still coming back from elbow surgery, is at DH. He's not playing third base yet. Jerks and Profar is in left for the Padres. Ha Sung Kim is at shortstop for San Diego. And at second base for the Padres, Tyler Wade. At third base, Yuji Rosario is at third. And then it is Kyle Higa, Higa, oh, I'm not even gonna try. Higashioka as their catcher. Thank you, thank you for that. Whatever happened to, uh, to these other guys, Luis Camposano, he was in the lineup last night. They're going, not going with him again. That's why Rick Monday always reads the lineups. He does it a lot more smoother than I just did right there. But the Dodgers looking to get back on uh, the winning ways tonight behind Gavin Stone. We're going to take a timeout here from Dodger Stadium. When we continue, we are going to hand things off to Rick Monday and Steven Nelson. The anthem is about to play tonight here at Dodger Stadium. And we are just about uh, 14 minutes away from first pitch between the Dodgers and Padres right here on the Los Angeles. Angeles Dodgers Audio Network. Life doesn't stop when the economy is uncertain. The market might not care you have a wedding to plan or a kid to put through school. And inflation doesn't know you've got a family to feed. But Bank of America does and is here to help. With digital tools to help you save and local experts in Southern California, you can keep life moving forward the way you need it to. Bank of America. What would you like the power to do? Learn more at bankofamerica.com. Bank of America NA, member FDIC, equal credit opportunity lender. Hey, this is Adrian Gonzalez. Daniel's Jewelers is a proud sponsor of the trip around the diamond and your family jeweler since 1948. Mention Home Run at any of their stores to receive a free team bracelet and $50 off any purchase of $99 or more. And don't forget, everyone is approved for credit at Daniel's. So visit danielsjewelers.com now to find the nearest store. Own the dream with Daniel's Jewelers. The start of the season for the boys in blue has begun, and everybody is excited about the starting pitching and what the new lineup looks like, with three former MVPs hitting first, second, and third. But as far as the Hoffy hot dogs go, we already know the lineup. For some, it's got to be the Hoffy quarter pound all beef franks. For others, it's the Hoffy bacon wrapped dogs, or it's the original Hoffy natural casing all beef frankfurters. No matter which you choose, you win. Visit hoffybrand.com to find your nearest location of Hoffy hot dogs. Hoffy, local, original. Great! When cancer is the question, City of Hope is the answer. Because hope isn't just wishing for a cure. It's the most cancer clinical trials in California. Doctors discovering treatments used worldwide. 
and success in treating all types and stages of cancer. At a top-ranked hospital with just one mission. Curing your cancer. With over 30 SoCal locations. This is Hope. City of Hope. Visit cityofhope.org to learn more. Get Spectrum One and catch the Los Angeles Dodgers all season. Stream over 140 live L.A. Dodger games on all of your devices on us. Tons of hits, wins, memorable moments, and more. It's a real home run. Live Dodger games. That's a $149 value now included with Spectrum One. Go to spectrum.com slash Dodgers for full details. Offer subject to change. Valid for qualified residential customers only. Service not available in all areas. Restrictions apply. Subject to national exclusivities. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Every year on April 15th, the Dodgers honor the legacy of Jackie Robinson on the day of his Major League debut. The trailblazer who broke the color barrier, proudly wearing Dodger blue, and the only player to have his number retired nationally. Come to Dodger Stadium on Monday, April 15th, when the Dodgers take on the Washington Nationals and be one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance to receive a Jackie Robinson Brooklyn Dodgers hat. Presented by UCLA Health. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. This is the home of L.A. Dodgers baseball. What a night. Hear the blue all season long right here. The home of the Dodgers. David Vasse live at Dodger Stadium as we are just about 10 minutes away from first pitch between the Dodgers and Padres. The middle game of this three game series between these two NL West rivals. Ah, no, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, the Dodgers certainly want to get back in the winning column after probably a sour taste in their mouth after the way the Padres came from behind to beat them in 11 innings, 8-7. to seven. The Dodgers had a 7-3 to three lead, and then the Padres scored five unanswered runs from the third inning on and beat the Dodgers in extra innings. Jackson Merrill, who is leading off for the Padres, was the hero last night for San Diego. We just had the ceremonial first pitch. Bazooka out there catching the first pitch from his wife because it is Brewstar Gratterall. Uh, bobblehead night and the news during the rain delay was that Bobby Miller has been placed on the injured list with right shoulder inflammation. Uh, Fabian Ardaya from The Athletic is reporting that the Dodgers did take an MRI on Miller's right shoulder and it revealed no structural damage so that uh, falls in line with the direct message I got from Bobby Miller that they're just trying to get ahead of it and I'm sure just want to get that inflammation out of there. Uh, uh, this is not something that just happens out of the blue or in his last start. I'm sure the Dodgers were saying, all right, Bobby, you try to pitch through it. That's enough. Let's not make this worse, and we'll put you on the IEL. The only question is, what will the Dodgers do moving forward to fill Miller's spot in the rotation? It comes up next on Tuesday here at Dodger Stadium against the Washington Nationals. By the way, this is game two of a nine-game homestand for the Dodgers. After tomorrow night, Sunday night baseball with the Dodgers, the Dodgers will welcome in the Washington Nationals starting on Monday night for a three-game series. Jackie Robinson Day on Monday night. All fans in attendance will receive a Brooklyn Dodger replica hat, so that'll be fun. Don't forget, Wednesday is getaway day for the Nationals. It will be a gentleman's business special at 12.10 on Wednesday afternoon. The Dodgers have Thursday off, and then we'll welcome in the New York Mets, who are off to a slow start for a three-game weekend series to close out this nine-game homestand. And J.D. Martinez, last year's D.H. for the Dodgers, who hit 33 home runs and drove in over 100 runs, signed with the Mets late in spring training and had a little bit of a setback in his preparation to join the Mets. He may make his 2024 debut here at Dodger Stadium next weekend if all things go well. So it'll be great to see my buddy with the dead fish handshake, J.D. Martinez. But I will say this, J.D. was fully aware that the Dodgers were going to pursue Shohei Otani when he was the D.H. last year and just wanted to enjoy his one year in Los Angeles. And if the Dodgers did not find a way to sign Otani, or Otani, I should say, 
did not choose the Dodgers, there is no doubt in my mind they would have brought back J.D. Martinez to be their DH. But uh, that's what happens when teams don't sign players when they're supposed to during the offseason, and they sign them with a week left in spring training and try to rush them back to a little too quickly. He uh, had some setbacks, and uh, we'll see when J.D. Martinez returns, but there's a good chance he makes his season debut against the Dodgers when the Mets come to town next weekend. We're going to take a timeout here from Dodger Stadium. When we return, we will have first pitch between the Dodgers and Padres. Gavin Stone will be on the mound, and Rick Monday and Steven Nelson are right around the corner with the Words Eye View right here on the Los Angeles Dodgers Audio Network. It's a winning number. I know it, and my friends at Spotlight 29 Casino know it too. Eric Dickerson here. Next time you're in Coachella Valley, stop in and enjoy pizzas, burgers, and all your game day favorites at Tap Room 29. Enjoy a beer flight from their locally crafted 29 brews. And while you're there, check out Club 29. From instant rewards and player club benefits, including savings on shows and dining, take it from me, you can't lose with 29. Spotlight 29 Casino, Coachella's best bet. Welcome to the future, Dickerson. All your trophy muscles are irrelevant. What are you talking about? For 46 years, the Ford F-Series has been the best-selling truck on the market. But it's not just because it's got brawn. It's got brains, too. And cutting-edge technology. Fully charged. Mobile generators, hybrid engines, even wireless charging. That's great, but I've got both. I'm the whole package. Humble, too. Head to your Southern California Ford dealers for great offers on a Ford F-150 truck. My name is Egypt Sherrod. I'm an interior designer and real estate broker. I'm Mike Jackson. I'm a contractor builder. When we decided to take our old deck down, we knew right away we were going in with TimberTech. The longevity, the sustainability, and you get 50 years out of it. The thing about it, it doesn't look like plastic. From a design perspective, it's beautiful. So for our family and maybe for yours, there's just so many reasons to have a TimberTech deck. Find a local contractor or get free decking samples at TimberTech.com. Freddie Freeman here. When it comes to our kids' health, you don't settle for second best. Meet Dr. Santana from California's number one Autry Orthopedic Center at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Thanks, Freddie. We're proud to offer the top drank orthopedic program in California. No case is too complex. With the largest team of specialized orthopedic physicians, we cover every aspect of your child's health, all in one place. Families turn to CHLA when the outcome truly matters. Visit chla.org forward slash ortho to ensure your child's health is in the best hands possible. In the history of Dodger Stadium, there's been 18 total rainouts. Hi, I'm Dave Roberts. As manager of LA's favorite ball club, I know a little something about rainouts. And last year's rain was one for the books. It was also one of LA County's best for capturing rain and stormwater. Over 200 billion gallons of stormwater was captured, enough for 5 million people. This year is starting out stormy. That's why LA County's putting in the work now for a safe, clean, reliable water future. Find out more at waterforla.com. You always hit a home run at Superior Grocers. Superior has all your ball game favorites. Pick up fresh guacamole and chips made fresh in-house. No need for cooking with Superior Grocers ready-to-eat rotisserie chicken. If you want quality ingredients for your recipes, it doesn't get any fresher than Superior's produce. While shopping for game day or any day, be sure to download the Superior Grocer app for weekly ads and the latest in savings. We've got you covered. Superior Grocers, quality, variety, and value. Sometimes in life, like in baseball, you need a spark off the bench or a late-inning rally to help you win the day. Ito wins Oi Ocha Unsweetened Green Tea. All natural ingredients, no sugars, no sweeteners, and only five calories. Brewed from premium whole tea leaves, sourced straight from Japan. Ito win Oi Ocha Unsweetened Green Tea. It's the perfect source of caffeine to get you through the day and get the boys in blue through a long season. Amazing and authentic. It's the game-winning hit every time you drink it. Available at your local Daiso stores, Amazon, and itowin.com. That's I-T oen.com Let's go to the Galpin Motors broadcast booth. And now your voices of the LA Dodgers. Rick Monday and Steven Nelson. Well, welcome back to Dodger Stadium. The rain is still lightly falling here at Dodger Stadium. But kudos to the entire grounds crew. Boy, they have done a remarkable job getting the field covered up. The tarp is off. The Dodgers are taking the field and we're just about set to go 
with baseball. Game two of this three game series. Rick Monday along with Steven Nelson and producer engineer Dwayne McDonald. They have the Dodger ball club 10 and 6 dropping an extra inning contest last night in game one of the series by a score of 8 to 7. And it's Gavin Stone on the mound here tonight. The rest of the Dodgers starting lineup very quickly. Mookie Betts is at shortstop. Shohei Otani, the designated hitter. Freddie Freeman is at first base. Batting cleanup and doing the catching. Will Smith. The Oscar Hernandez is in right field. Max Muncy at third. James Outman again in center. KK Hernandez draws the starting nod in left field. And batting ninth and playing at second base is Gavin Lutz. For Gavin Stone, his third start, a record of 0 and 1. He's given up a high batting average thus far in his first couple of outings. The umpiring assignments, Chris Cuccioni, the crew chief, will work the plate tonight. He'll call the balls and strikes. Brian Knight is at first. Gabe Morales umpiring at second. And Ryan Addington is over at third. We'll join you tomorrow, a little different time. Starting time on Sunday, 4-10 first pitch, but we'll be on there at 3 o'clock with the Morongo Casino Dodgers on deck show. And James Paxton will start for the Dodgers against you, Darvish, in that one. So it has been a chilly night, as we mentioned. Very light rain is still falling, but one thing about it, Stephen, this Dodger ball club raring to go and trying to right the ship. They start tonight with a two-game lead over the second-place San Diego Padres. Good like to stretch out that lead. We're all set to go, bundled up and ready to go. Always a privilege to be next to you, Mo, and wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we appreciate you for spending part of your Saturday evening with us, albeit in delayed fashion. By the time it's all said and done, it'll be about a two-hour and 15-minute delay due to rain here at Dodger Stadium. There was rain in the forecast heading into the weekend. We knew that. We didn't know that it was going to be quite this heavy or quite this cold. You mentioned the brisk temperatures. There is also a pretty stiff breeze blowing, judging by the flags flying in center field. With that, Jackson Merrill, the rookie, getting a bump in the starting lineup for Mike Shilton, the Padres. He's in, he's swinging away at the first pitch of the game from Gavin Stone, and James Altman tracks it down, a sliding grab in left center field on a tailing line drive. Momo, well, that was part of the theme last night. Hitters aggressive early, trying to get after the first or second pitch, and Jackson Merrill trying to do it here to Gavin Stone. Exactly, and for Gavin Stone, he's had a little trouble against left-handers, so there's really no question that uh, Merrill may be swinging earlier. Lefties came on hitting at 500. First pitch of the game came at 825 after an hour, 15-minute delay. Temperature 49 degrees. Gavin Stone gives strike one to Fernando Tatis Jr. Tonight's time and temper brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Gavin Stone steps back on the mound, kicks the leg and fires to Tatis. A little flare right to Freddie Freeman. And a quick second out. Boy, there's nothing like a jam shot on a chilly night. And for Gavin Stone, he literally got into the kitchen and took everything. Base is empty. Two down. Here's the first baseman for San Diego and Jake Cronenworth. Different lineup tonight for Mike Schilt as Stone rears back and fires 96. It just missed the outside corner for ball one. Mentioned Merrill going from the bottom of the order to the very top in the leadoff spot and Tatis Jr. and Cronenworth. Manny Machado DHing again and cleaning up in front of left fielder Jerkson Tofar. Fastball from Gavin Stone below the zone but called a strike by Chris Cuccioni. In the sixth spot for San Diego, the shortstop Hassan Kim, followed by Tyler Wade at second. Eggy Rosario at third and Kyle Higashioka behind the plate. Big swing, big miss for Cronenworth. Stone in front of the first baseman, one and two. One of the things that Gammon Stone has done very well is that the majority of his pitches, over half of them, have been located away from hitters. The other part, too, is the changeup. He's thrown almost 40% off speed pitch. So when he is really getting that changeup over, he keeps hitters off balance. His one two to Cronenworth is fouled back into the net. Count remains the same. Stone making his third start of the young season. His last time out was in Chicago. Gave up five runs and a scoring change added how many were earned. There are now four as Cronenworth flies the ball to left field. Hernandez drifting over toward the line on the warning track in foul ground. He secures the third out. So a quick top of the first for Gavin Stone after the lengthy rain delay. Handing the baton to the top of the Dodger order when we come back on the Dodgers Audio Network. 
I have been a Taylor Swift fan for as long as I can remember. I have vivid memories of singing this song so loudly with my friends back when we were in high school. You belong with me. You belong with me. Hey, it's Taylor. For one month, listen now. Sirius XM, Channel 13, Taylor's version. Her music can connect with anybody. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. We're back on the track Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400 from Texas Motor Speedway on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car and on the all-new Sirius, Sirius XM, XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. 24-7, 365, coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Channel 90. Freddie Freeman has done it again inside the pole. This is first baseman Freddie Freeman. You're listening to Dodgers baseball on Sirius XM. And there have been no worries or stress about this part doing the production. Well, and now the Dodgers have to figure out how to hit the butterfly, the knuckleball. Matt Waldron, the right-hander for the Padres, gives a fastball for a strike, 91 miles per hour from Waldron. Not the traditional knuckleballer in the sense of the late Tim Wakefield, for example, or R.A. Dickey. Knuckleball is something that he's incorporated into his arsenal, incorporated into his arsenal over the last few years. He misses downstairs for a ball to bets. Throw some different pitches the fastball, the sinker, the sweeper, the cutter, and then the knuckler. His 1 1 to bets. Mookie has to dance out of the way. Uh, knuckler nearly tumbled in the midsection of the Dodger shortstop. Over the first two starts, Waldron threw the knuckleball about 38% of the time. So a little over one out of three pitches. He uses it mainly as a weapon off speed. His 2 1 to bets is fouled away. The count scores up 2 and 2. His last start came against the San Francisco Giants. No decision in a game that the Padre bullpen blew in the late innings. They gave up one run. It was unearned in five and a third innings of work. The Padres have lost each of his first two turns this year. The 2 2 coming to bets. Big swing, big miss. And that one fooled Mookie. A strikeout for yep. Waldron. That was the moving butterfly. That was the knuckler. What Waldron has to also do is to make sure that he does not change the glove with the knuckleball grip. In other words, not open up the glove while he's still into that delivery and kind of uh, show it to the hitters. Well, he retired one of the Dodgers who homered last night in Mookie Betts. There were three others, including the man stepping into the matters box right now in Shohei Otani. Three for five with a home run and two doubles. It's an eight game hitting streak. The league leader in extra base hits. Waldron steps back and fires. Missing outside with a knuckleball. 1 0. Oh. It goes eight games in a row. 16 for 35, a 457 average. I'm not good at math, Mo. Those numbers good. Pitch from Waldron. Misses downstairs 2 0. Oh. Well, anything in the threes is a good number. <laughs> then you get into the fours, they go rarefied air. And that is where Otani has been. Last handful of years, two-time unanimous MVP in the American League. Ball three inside, a fastball from Waldron, 89 miles per hour. Push Shohei back off the plate. But well, Waldron also in the first couple of outings, he had trouble against lefties. Well, he actually gave up a high average all the way, all the way around. 300 to lefties, however. Let's see if Shohei's swinging 3-0. He is not. It's upstairs, a four-pitch walk for Otani. There's some pitchers that might uh, classify that as, as a victory. 
walk. <laughs> it's only one base. <laughs> On for Freddie Freeman with one out in the bottom of the first inning. Well, the fearsome foursome for the Dodgers. All right, make sure you hit that get like button, hit that subscribe button, and if you're new, the first inning, join the, the channel. To hit 420 as Betts, Otani, Freeman, and Will Smith. Seven extra base hits, eight walks in the first frame this year. Waldron nearly picks Otani off at first base. Shohei back safely. Well, outfielders will be picking up a damp baseball if it's hit to them on the ground. Hour 15 minute rain delay, but the rain was steady throughout the afternoon, so it collected on the tarp. It's still just a light drizzle, Stephen. Waldron sets for his first pitch to Freddie Freeman with Otani off first base. Freddie swings at the first pitch, a fastball in off the plate, but it's fouled off Freeman's leg, 0 and 1. Freddie was 1 for 5 in the series opener last night, scored a run, did strike out. His little five game hit, st hit streak going. He's six for 20 in that span, 300 batting average. Nothing and won the count on the Dodger first baseman. Playing straight up is a Padre defense as Freddie acts one foul. Behind with two strikes on in the count. After driving in seven runs over his first eight games played this year, Freddie's just Got one RBI since. No balls, two strikes. The pitch to Freeman is inside, nearly hit him. 93 miles per hour from Waldron. Waldron out of the stretch. Fires to Freddie and misses away. The count's now level two and two. Well, that was the uh, that was the butterfly. That knuckler. It was effective his last turn. He's 0 for 3 against it with two strikeouts. All three hits he allowed were on the fastball. Yeah, Freddie swings and misses on a wicked knuckleball. Down and in. His second strikeout, second out of the first. And both punch outs have been on the knuckleball once he's been able to get ahead. That ball just uh, in slow motion, kind of tumbling. Kind of a forward tumbling of, of the ball itself. Now, Will Smith trying to get back on hit train. It was 0 for last night, did walk. Otani leaning off first, not running. Fastball misses outside from Waldron. 1 0 to Smith. What uh, helps Waldron with the knuckleball to get outs is the fact that he can throw the ball. I mean, he tops out right at 93. We've seen that already. But everything else, and if he gets ahead, that knuckler is a very good off speed pitch. Checks Otani back to first base. Shohei safely again. Former 18th round pick from. Nebraska was Waldron of uh, the Cleveland Guardians came to San Diego as the player to be named later in the Mike Clevenger deal. The pitch to Will Smith is a fastball that touches the outside corner one and one. As Mike Clevenger was in that trade Josh Naylor Cal Quantrill went to Cleveland. So Waldron he messed around with a knuckleball before the trade but it wasn't until the summer of 2021 when the Padres actually encouraged him to use it more. His one one to Will Smith. A knuckleball got a check swing that Will Smith could not hold up on. One ball, two strikes. Knuckleballs are normally the result on the tail end of a career mm. or after an arm or shoulder injury where the fastball just isn't there. So Walner's got that unique ability to go both ends of it. One and two, the count on Smith. A sweeper from Waldron misses outside. Two and two. The wind has died down here at Dodger Stadium, which is a nice change of pace from the weather we've experienced throughout the day. Still a brisk evening. Aldrin throwing back to first base. Otani sliding back safely once again.
Waldron ready for the 2 2 to Smith. And the catcher just gets a piece of an uncle ball to foul it away. Hey, everybody, let's go, Dodgers. We talked about it during our pregame show. I had a conversation with James Altman in the Dodger clubhouse uh, during the rain delay, and he's actually seen Matt Waldron. First, he walked on four pitches. Another 2 2 to Smith. Otani runs. No throw from Higashioka. Otani with his second steal. Eighth pitch coming from Waldron to Smith, a 3-2, and a fly ball foul, do it again. Like I said, RBI situation, you got two outs. I'm spreading out, and I'm just trying to shoot that ball to right center. Use a lot of hands. A little bit of everything, including three of the knuckleballs. See what he gets on 3-2. It is back to the knuckleball. It's rolled to third for Rosario, and that'll do it for the Dodgers in the first. No score, on to the second. Every shelter pet deserves a second chance, and you're making it possible for thousands of them every day. Because every time you feed your pet hills, you help feed a shelter pet, which helps make them healthy hey. and happy. Make sure everybody and puts in the poll who's going to win today. Port the channel. Changing their life forever so they can change yours. Science did that. My A1C was up here. Now it's down with Rebelsis. His A1C? It's down with Rebelsis. My doctor told me Rebelsis lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. And that people taking Rebelsis lost more weight. I got to my A1C goal and lost some weight too. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Gallbladder problems may occur. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration which may worsen kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? You may pay as little as $10 per prescription. At Del Taco, there's only one thing better than a crispy chicken taco, and that's two crispy chicken tacos. Get two for $3, featuring our amazing crispy chicken with ranch, chipotle, or habanero sauce. Two tacos, three bucks. That's Del Taco Better Max. If Gavin Stone and the Dodgers strike out seven in this game, everybody's going to get a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow with the purchase of a large drink. L.A. area restaurants, no scores. We go to the second after the madness of the early innings last night. Zeros on both sides. And it's Manny Machado started the scoring for the Padres with a two-run home run. And he has started to look more like himself the last few days. Quiet start, but a six-game hitting streak where he's above 300. And he had that look last night too, that confident Manny Machado strut and look on his face. Now this one one from Stone. He backs off of the plate, ball two. Yeah, he certainly had that that look of confidence. And I don't want to say arrogance, but it's it's like that. But when you have it and then you do go deep, it's it's like, yeah. And he has had Gavin Stone's number. That start last September, we mentioned, where Stone gave up seven. Manny Machado was the biggest reason for that. Had two home runs against Stone as he was fighting through that nagging elbow issue as the year went on. Check swing here, found the barrel, stays at two and two. He's 31. He's in his 13th year. Hey, everybody, let's go, Dodgers. He had to spend time on the injured list. Broke his was hit by a pitch. And then it's not 
just been the production and the swagger. It's been the reliability that he's brought. Well, he certainly does. He posts every year. And you can, one thing you can count on is May Machado going out and being in that lineup day in and day out. And he is not looking to take a day off. On this team that has plenty of superstars, it's this guy here in Jerkson Profar, leading the way, hitting 327 in the early going. These two entities just can't quit each other. Profar and the Padres goes to the Rockies, comes on back last year. He says being in San Diego kind of reminds him of being home with the palm trees at Curacao. He's a favorite in that clubhouse with his energy and smile. And they've loved having him, and he's performed anytime he's been with the Padres. Former top prospect in all of baseball when he came up with the Texas Rangers. Infielder. Mm -hmm. On this one two from Stone, Profar grounds it up the middle. Mookie Betts, who's gone in the other direction from the outfield to the infield. Two up and two down in the second. Five up and five down for Stone. Shortstop number seven, Two gone for Hassong Kim. As he showed last night, he got a watch out first pitch with this guy. Hit his second home run of the season. First pitch that he saw from Yamamoto. It's one of those games last night with the Dodgers with those four home runs and it's like a party early in here. They're up seven to three, but the Padres just kept on coming, They're lurking there. Got a run in the sixth inning and the Cronenworth home run that made it feel real. Right, it was seven four at that point, and then they got three more in the seventh to tie it. Four winning it in the eleventh inning after both teams failed to score. In the Doing a great job of locating that hard stuff down in the zone. Been at the knees or just below so far in this early evening. And he's on that same uh, timeline as the hitters. Getaway day, made up right. getaway day too. He's catching and throwing. Kim slowed him down by using his time. And now 3 2 pitch. Pop fly, shadow right. On comes Teoscar Hernandez to finish off another 1 2 3 inning for Gavin Stone. Watch me. Watch me skate out to conquer the ice. A band of sisters on blades for the stars and stripes. Setting down for the battle doesn't limit my game. Fueled by the hope of Olympic flames. Stick work and speed. Hey, everybody, let's go, Dodgers. Helping me stay in control. Watch me. World renowned care for pediatric prosthetics at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Oh, the puppies are loose. Need to get home in a hurry. Time for sport mode. Party's over, boys. Drive the Nissan Sentra. Now get a low 259 per month lease or get 3.9% APR financing for 36 months on Sentra. I suffer with psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis. I was on a journey for a really long time to find some relief. Cosentix works for me. Cosentix helps real people get real relief from the symptoms of psoriatic arthritis or psoriasis, serious allergic reactions, severe skin reactions that look like eczema, and an increased risk of infections. Some fatal have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to, or if IBD symptoms develop or worsen. I move so much better because of Cosentix. Ask your rheumatologist about Cosentix. <laughs> it's 
Huge no, bananas. Saving big by shopping Aldi first. It's an Aldi thing. Stream every out-of-market game live or on demand. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Bottom two, no score. And Teoscar Hernandez to lead off for the Dodgers. Matt Waldron comes home. And Hernandez jumps out of the way of a butterfly inside. Ball one. And Hernandez extended his on-base streak to 11 games last night with another home run. And RBI 16 and 17 leads the big leagues. He had two opposite field home runs all of last year. This last night was already his second this year. Three and oh. You know, we talked about it briefly last night. I felt like, man, maybe the ball's flying this year, and but we're at a lesser pace as far as home runs than Major League Baseball was at this point last year. But Teoscar, he's done a great job. I mean, he's really opened up everybody's eyes here. I think we knew that this was a big power guy, but driving in runs, going opposite field. Chase is here. We've seen much less of that. Than I think was anticipated chasing those breaking balls and here here's where he's been particularly better when he gets the two strikes and he lays off for ball four Hernandez the board with the leadoff walk and we get a word from Carl's Jr. Yeah! Whoa! It's back at Carl's Jr. Spicy Western Bacon Cheeseburger. Need burger? Get burger! Yeah! And you, you hope that if you continue to show that you're going to lay off those pitches, you're going to get more and more pitches to drive. Yeah, exactly. Again, pitchers are going to have to come in. Not going to want to just walk it. Max Muncy is homered in back-to-back -back games. Takes a low strike here. I, I'm still surprised this ball got out as top spinning as it was. Well, as hard as he hit it, again, he, he did go to the favorable part of the ballpark as far as the fences. Those little short fence. You no, know, Tani had a milestone home run. Muncy did in his own right. It was his 178th in a Dodger uniform, which moved him past Mike Piazza on the all-time L.A. Dodger list. Still got a ways to go, though, E.K. Off the hands. It's short. It's Kim. Center fielder, number 33, James Outman. Outman's bat started to come alive on the road trip in Minnesota with his first two home runs. And then first game of his home stand. He was hitless, but he walked twice. We're talking about not many of these guys have an experience against knuckleballers. Altman has actually seen Waldron quite a bit coming up through the minors. Yeah, I was talking to him down in the clubhouse before the game, and he mentioned he had about 17, 18 at bats against him. And his approach was he, he was going to look for a knuckleball and make it be right down the middle part of the plate. You figure if it starts right down the middle, you got a chance. It'll stay somewhere in the strike zone. Back to a breaking pitch there. One ball, one strike on him. Hernandez at first, one gone. Here's a 1 1 pitch. He runs, and Alman lifts it foul. Gonna wish he had that one back. That was something hard. It was right down the middle part of the plate. And when Waldron does try to attack you with something other than the knuckleball, he's trying to live on the edges. The thing just leaked right down the middle. And James just a tad bit late. Boy, Waldron is picking off a lot. 
Tani getting his jersey dirty in that first inning, and out to Oscar Hernandez. Two and two. That old adage, right? If it's high, let it fly, low, let it go. There's that low knuckleball right there. There goes Teoscar again on a foul ball again. He said, Dang, James. <laughs> Oscar's really completing the uh, well-rounded offensive player picture here. <laughs> Taking out, it is not just a slugger. He takes his walks. He's hitting for average. He's stealing bases or trying to. Not going this time. That ball's hit hard, deep left field. Profar twisting around makes the catch on the track. There's been a heavy dose of that early on this season for James Altman. Yeah, he's just had no luck. He hit a ball last night to left field. It was an absolute rocket. You know, that ball came off the bat over 100 miles an hour. It's nothing to show for it. Again, you just look at the, the numbers and you go, oh, he's not having a good year. But look at the metrics. He's swinging the bat well. Just hadn't caught a break. A little bit of that going with Kike Hernandez as well, who is 5 of 28. And Dave Roberts. He's doing about something. Waldron delivers and Hernandez takes a strike. Taking it out on those sunflower seeds right there. A extra conservative lead that time from Tasker Hernandez, as if he was saying, I promise you, I'm not running this time. Just don't make me dive back in. <laughs> it's a little more. Hernandez pulls that pitch off of the outside part. Kim knocks it down and has no play. It was going to be a tough play even if he got there cleanly. But the inning continues. He was trying to be quick because the only play he had was going to be at second base. And he tried to transfer the darn thing before he really even had it. Gets over there and just kind of muffs it. It is ruled an error, and it's his fourth in his last five games. Old glove second baseman, they moved to shortstop, which is his natural position, and moved their 11 you know, year contract guy, Xander Bogarts, off of short to accommodate his glove. The Rockies start to this year defensively. No score second inning. Here's a chance for Gavin Lux with two on and two out. Takes upstairs, ball one. Two and oh. I feel like once he gets going that this offense is is even going to go to another level remember a few years ago hitting in that ninth spot he turned the lineup over setting the table for Mookie Betts and doing damage at the bottom of the lineup it's just a matter of time for this young man yeah his last season for the knee injury he had 276 led the National League in triples and if you can do that in this lineup, if you can turn this lineup oh, right. over and have people on base when those big guys come up, freaky. 
And look, it is gone. You dream big about what it's going to look like getting him back, but it's gone how it realistically should have been expected to go when you miss a full season. 100%. I and mean, people were hoping that he'd just come back like he hadn't missed a beat, but the reality is you missed playing an entire year, and on top of that, you're coming off an injury. So that's a double whammy right there. It's going to take some time. See if he gets one to drive on 2-0 here. In there for a strike, two and one. Maybe a victim of his own spring success a little bit in that yeah. regard, and that he looks so good, even in Korea. And then he homers in the freeway series, the odd freeway series between opening day and opening day. And just has not looked the same since then. On this 2 1 from Aldrin, Lux pops one in the shadow left. Cam runs it down and makes up for his two out air, saving a run and keeping this a scoreless game. I have active psoriatic arthritis, but with SkyRizzy to treat my skin and joints, count me in. Along with clearer skin, SkyRizzy helps me move with less joint pain, stiffness, swelling, and fatigue. And it's just four doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine, or plan to. There's nothing like Everybody, clear skin make sure you hit that like button, that hit that subscribe button, and if you're new, join the channel. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. My A1C was up here. Now it's down with Rebelsis. His A1C? It's down with Rebelsis. My doctor told me Rebelsis lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. And that people taking Rebelsis lost more weight. I got to my A1C goal and lost some weight too. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Gallbladder problems may occur. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration which may worsen kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? You may pay as little as $10 per prescription. Uh, this place that I call... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to explain it to her. Like, uh, ...to this game, disseminated without the express written consent of the Dodgers. <laughs> Tonight's Wire Cam coverage is brought to you by our partners at The Fi. That thing has had no shelter from the rain tonight. So the rain has pretty much stopped at this point as we reach 9 o'clock local time. Gavin Stone fires strike one to Tyler Wade. Bottom part of the order. Padres looking for their first base runner against Stone. Six up, six down for the young right-hander. Fades a change in there for strike two, and he's looked like he's been in a nice rhythm so far. It really is, and you look at that first pitch of this at-bat was up at the top of the zone, and then he follows up with a change up at the bottom of the zone. Not missing at all in the heart of the plate. Another change, and Wade gets to that, but Webb get, Web Betts gets to that. I knew what you were trying to say. Yeah. That was great. I had great intentions of that call. It just failed <laughs> miserably. Good play by Mookie Betts, though. I mean, you're watching Mookie Betts and, and what he's doing there athletically. He can't help but get excited. Extends. It's a heck of a play. We've seen both shortstops make good plays last few minutes. Kim for the Padres. Now Betts for the Dodgers. One away for Eggie Rosario. And strike one from Stone. It's a couple nice plays by Betts in this series. The diving catch into the netting last night. And now this sprawling play. Fastball sneaks by him, added extra gear to it, and it's 0 2. Eggy Rosario just his third start this year, but he's packed a punch in those first couple. Four hits, two of them homers, two of them doubles. To third and a hop, it's Muncie. Cannon of a throw. Two up. 
Can I say it? Do, Do it, it months. I suppose I should have asked if I could say it with you. It is, it is your line. That's a nice play, though, just keeping his body in front. Able to corral that ball and make a good, strong throw to Freddie. Two outs in this scoreless third inning. Kyle Higashioka flies the first pitch that he sees to James Altman. And Gavin Stone on eight pitches retires the side in order in the third. He's gone nine up and nine down. The extra twinkle. That extra swagger. Feeling healthy by leaps and bounds. Making a dinner that makes their whole day and giving your best friend the best nutrients for their best life. Science did that. Top of the order due up for the Dodgers when we come back. Merging influences from Afropop to chamber music. Vampire Weekend helped reshape the sound of indie rock and alternative. As their fifth album, Only God Was Above Us, arrives, hear the story behind it. I just started playing this riff. This had the feel of a good, simple pop song. Alongside nearly two decades of indie classics. Vampire Weekend Radio, all month in the Sirius XM app. Are you regretting eating that gas station hot dog? Yeah, we know. We've been there too. This is a message for baseball fans like you. Did you know that you get a channel that's talking baseball 24-7 as part of your Sirius XM subscription? What? Our lineup includes shows hosted by former big leaguers and executives. Plus, you'll hear from 17 managers each week. MLB Network Radio is on Sirius XM Channel 89. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. We're talking college basketball on ACC Today. Great, great, great run for NC State men's basketball. The story of this team is, is one I don't think anybody will forget. They were able to accomplish a lot. They captured the hearts and the minds of the nation. DJ Burns became an absolute mm -hmm. star nationally. Hey everybody, let's it. go Dodgers. ACC Today, weekdays from 8 to 11 a.m. Eastern. ACC Radio, Channel 371, and the Sirius XM app. 24-7, 365. Coverage of all things NASCAR. All things NASCAR happens exclusively on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio, Channel 90. Freddie Freeman has done it again inside the pole. This is first baseman Freddie Freeman. You're listening to Dodgers Baseball on Sirius XM. With Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, and Freddie Freeman. On the docket, we bring you the bottom of the third. Brought to you by AMPM, the official convenience line. Or just search MLB Network Radio on the SXM app. Sirius XM Sports. We're more than just a game. We're talking. This is down and away for ball one. Betts leading the major league. De La Cruz, the young sensation in Cincinnati. Also tops and walks with 16. Strike one hits the outside corner. A lot of times the guy over the years, when you face a guy that throws primarily knuckleballs, sometimes you can well, readjust where you're standing in the batter's box. On 1-1, one, one, Mookie's watching and getting in front of the count now. Two balls and a strike. Some guys have moved right on top of the plate. Some have moved forward in the batter's box, closer to the pitcher. But against Waldron, he can't really do that because he can still throw the fastball by you. And there's a sweeper from Waldron, 79 miles per hour, up and away. Three and one, the count on Betts. Snapped a seven game home run drought last night with a three run shot in the second. Here we are at the bottom of the third, trying to break the ice. And Mookie hits one hard on a line. That will drop down in left center field. A leadoff base hit for Mookie Betts. We'll see if the Dodgers continue. They've been active. Stolen base in the first. A couple of attempts to steal base in the second. But keep in mind, Walter has shown a very quick pickoff move over to first. First hit 
for either team so far in this game coming off the bat of bets here in the third. So now Shohei Otani walked and stole second, was stranded there after Freeman struck out and Smith grounded out. Otani with another appearance at the plate. There is the pickoff attempt from Waldron again tardy, but it does force Mookie to slide back. Betts, as I mentioned, leads all major leaguers in runs scored. Gets on in front of the league leader in extra base hits. Otani supplied three more last night, two doubles and a home run. Gets out of the way of a ball from Waldron, and that home run. 175th of his career, tying him with Hideki Matsui, for most home runs by a Japanese born major leaguer. Waldron has a pitch. Now fires to Otani. And a knuckleball hits the outer corner, one and one. Now Matsui hit those 175 homers in 1,236 career games in the big leagues. Otani hit it in 731. So it was never a question of if, but when. Hey, everybody, let's go, Dodgers. He's waiting on the 1-1 one -one from Waldron. Here it comes. Big swing. Big miss. One and two. Tani takes the helmet off. Shakes the hair out. Puts it back in place. And the lid is back on. Now playing with his right elbow guard. Of course, protecting that surgically repaired lead elbow. A short lead for Betts off first base. Nobody out in the top, in the bottom of the third, rather. Waldron's 1 2. Way outside on a knuckleball. 2 and 2. You, you can jest and ask how would you like to be a hitter facing a knuckleballer? How would you like to be a catcher trying to receive a knuckleballer? I'd like to be an umpire calling a knuckleballer. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes, and a level 2 2 count to Otani. He takes ball three. When Tom Candiotti was with the Dodgers, there was a book that came out, a physicist, that was explaining technically on why a knuckleball. Does what it does. And I said, hey, would you like a copy of that book? He goes, no, I'd be thinking about it. <laughs> it's a full count to the Dodger DH with Mookie on first. He takes off. The throw from Higashioka is not going to matter because Otani has walked. Well, Mookie Betts actually put himself in jeopardy just for a second. You know, he did not slide because he saw it was ball four, but he touched the bag and went past the bag only by a couple of feet. He could have been tagged out. Even though it was a walk, he had gone past the bag after touching it. So the patience and discipline from Otani pays off as he works a walk after falling behind in the count. Two on, nobody out. Hello, Freddie Freeman. He struck out swinging in the first inning. Infield back on the right side for the Padres. And Kim on the shortstop side of second base. Basically as far over as you can with the new shift regulations as Freeman watched the ball. So a big gap between Kim and Rosario in the six hole. Freddie can go the other way. This is in the air the other way. Profar hustling in in left field. He slides and makes the grab. That hung up a little too long for Freddie. So one out now in the third. Well, the Dodgers 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position after going 1 for 12 last night. Will Will turn the tide in that regard. Will Smith now. Bets on second, Otani on first. 
The Dodger catcher who came into the series leading all of baseball in batting average. Dropped to fourth in the league after an 0 for 4 night. First pitch swinging popped up. Left hey, everybody, side let's go, right Dodgers. Higashioka and Rosario convene, and Rosario makes the grab. The Dodgers in danger squandering a third inning opportunity. The first two reach with Beth's single and Otani's walk, but Freeman and Smith both retired. Now Teoscar Hernandez. He walked leading off the second inning. Fouls off the first pitch from Waldron for a strike. With that walk, Hernandez has now reached in 16. And all but one game here in his first campaign with the Dodgers. Nobody has more runs batted in than Teoscar so far. Two on, two out. Waldron steps off, forcing Utani and Betts. Back to first and second, respectively. The right-hander is set now, working out of the stretch. The 0-1 to Hernandez, another foul ball. A fastball, 92 miles per hour. Teoscar upset with himself. Nothing in two. Two on, two out, two strikes on Hernandez. Ball one misses well outside. Well, that one in to the left handed batter's box. Facing the right handed Hernandez. The pitch from Waldron. A swing and a miss from Hernandez. So the first two get on. The next three retired in order. So two more stranded for the Dodgers. No score after three. You're listening to Dodgers Baseball on the Dodgers Audio Network. Freddie Freeman here. When it comes to our kids' health, you don't settle for second best. Meet Dr. Edison from California's number one Autry Orthopedic Center at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Dr. Edison here, a sports medicine physician from the largest kids orthopedic program in L.A. and all of California. At CHLA, we're not just treating bones and joints. We're pioneering breakthrough research that helps kids get back in the game and stay in the game. Visit CHLA.org forward slash ortho to ensure your number one athlete's complex issues are addressed from every angle by an all-star team. You've waited all year for baseball. And it's finally here. Now get ready for Major League winning when you join the most generous players club in Southern California at Valley View Casino and Hotel. Join and receive over $100 in free instant offers to enjoy at San Diego's favorite casino. No strings attached. Signing up for the players club is always quick, easy, and free. So visit valleyviewcasino.com to learn more today. Hello, friends. A high fly ball to left center field. It's way back there, and it is gone. A home run. Hello Kitty Night returns to Dodger Stadium on Tuesday, April 16th at 7:10 p.m. when the boys in blue take on the Washington Nationals. Join your friends at the ballpark and get an exclusive Hello Kitty bag. This item will certainly bring a big smile. To make sure you bring home your Hello Kitty bag, head to Dodgers.com slash ticket packs. Everybody, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe the button. Cups. If you're new, is on join the channel. Let's go, We're back on the track. Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. From Texas Motor Speedway. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car. And on the all-new Sirius XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah. 
Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. You love listening to baseball. You love talking about baseball, and so do we. That's why Sirius XM has the only channel on the radio dedicated to baseball 24-7. It's MLB Network Radio, Sirius XM Channel 89. News, opinions, passionate baseball talk from former players and GMs, plus interviews with players, managers, and executives, original specials, and much, much, much more. All baseball, every day, on your radio. If you can hear me right now, you've got MLB Network Radio. Sirius XM Channel 89, and on the Sirius XM app. After the game, join us on MLB Network Radio. We're talking baseball with you all season long on Sirius XM Channel 89 and the Sirius XM app. Go! Mookie Betts goes the other way. Dodgers fans, this is Mookie Betts. You're listening to Dodgers Baseball on Sirius XM. The degree of difficulty is up now for Gavin Stone. Fernando Tatis Jr. Swings and misses on the first pitch from Stone. 0 oh, and 1. Tantis in the series opener, 3 for 5. Tied the game with a two run home run in the seventh off Ryan Brazier. He was nearly hit by Stone there. He spun out of the way, 1 and 1. He's been moving the ball in and out. Nods now delivers the 1 1. Sword, 1 and 2. He definitely went around. Tatis Jr. calls time. Someone who has become a nemesis to the Dodgers, particularly here in Dodger Stadium. Last night's home run, his 11th in 29 career games here at the Ravine. Stones 1 2 on the way. Tatis fouls it into the seats. We'll do it again. Stone to Tatis Jr. Ground ball cue shot to second. Lux makes the play going to his left without any issue. Two down in the top of the fourth. Well, Lux is putting in a lot of work, and he has some difficulty throwing the ball. Nine, Spring eight, training nine, started in shortstop. He said, hey, we're going to switch. Uh, Bents will go to short. You go back to second base. Throwing was, was an issue, but... He has worked hard and has made good throws. Now Jake Cronenworth, the first baseman. A changeup from Stone hits the top of the zone for a strike. That's the second time you've made that point tonight for a Dodger infielder. First it was Max Muncy and then it was mm -hmm. Gavin Stone. As you're getting their legs underneath them defensively. Cronenworth swinging away, fouls back, strike two. Well, that's one of the advantages that you have when you come to the ballpark early because uh, this isn't just show up and play a game. These guys are out here and some guys are on the on the field by two o'clock this afternoon. You know, before the rains came. Mm. But every day it's early work. The 0-2 from Stone. And Cronenworth fights it off to stay alive on the foul ball. Stone spikes one. That's ball one. Dodgers nothing, Padres nothing here with two out in the fourth inning. The biggest positive has been the look of Gavin Stone tonight. Yes, he did. Cronenworth tried to check his swing, could not. He strikes out as Gavin Stone is through four. Clean innings at Dodger Stadium. The greatest guitarist is Eddie Van Halen. What about Prince? You have to include Slash and Jimmy Page. B.B. King and Bonnie Raitt. The Edge changed everything. The debate continues with rebellious riffs and six string solos on the SiriusXM Guitar Greats channel. All hail International Guitar Month. 
Sirius XM Guitar Grades on Channel 107 and year-round on the Sirius XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you. Hey, everybody, let's go Dodgers. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Get ready for the 2024 NFL Draft on Sirius XM NFL Radio. Touchdown, Caleb Williams. Catch exclusive interviews with the top prospects as they begin their journey to the NFL and hear pick-by-pick coverage of the 2024 Draft from Detroit. With the first pick, the Chicago Bears select. Your home for the 2024 NFL Draft is Sirius XM NFL Radio Channel 88 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. In season or out of season, the number one place for college sports is Sirius XM College Sports Radio, Channel 84. The wait is over. Dodger fans, this is Dave Roberts. The Dodgers are the champions of 2020. You're listening to Los Angeles Dodgers Baseball on Sirius XM. Waiting on a run here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Dodgers sitting 6-7-8 and eight to the plate against Matt Waldron. And a scoreless second game against San Diego. Waldron is Muncie strike one. James Altman is on deck. Who's on deck is brought to you by On Deck. Small business lending that's fast and easy. Go to OnDeck.com. And Muncie pulls one right into the glove of a diving Jake Cronenworth. A little looping soft liner to the right side of the infield. And Cronenworth diving to his right, slow to get up, but another spectacular play by a Padre defender tonight. Not much offense. There's been a lot of gloves, however, on both sides. Keeps Muncie off the bases. Now James Altman lined out his first time up and hit a ball hard. A knuckleball from Waldron is low here, 1-0. It was Altman's 12th ball this season hit at least 100 miles per hour off the bat. Only four of those batted balls, though, have fallen for hits. So some tough luck for James. He sees ball two go high. He seemed to find something in the Twin Cities. He saw Shohei Otani have success after picking up the cricket bat, the flat bat. Otani did it. James like, I'll do that too. And then hit his first two home runs of the year. Waldron gets a strike one call on the outside corner. Now trying to carry that success back into this homestand, a nine-game homestand. Here in the second game, the 2-1 pitch from Waldron, and Altman blisters the ball to left field. This one will get down. So an opposite field base hit for James Altman. Here with one out in the fourth. But it counts just as much when you hit him the opposite direction, especially when that ball's down and away from you. See James Altman going right. We've seen him on both ends of that spectrum, right, Mo? When he is going right and that swing is short and compact, it is so exactly sweet. because uh, he was struggling to start the season because he was opening up and it looked like he was too pull conscious. Kike Hernandez was trying to pull that ball yep. <laughs> to, oh, I, out of the building and he waved at strike one. Well, that was that sweeper at only 78 miles an hour. And if you're gearing up for, uh, you know, mid 90s, you're going to be way out in front. Another pickoff attempt from Waldron. We've seen it a bunch so far tonight. None of them have been successful. The latest here on Altman. The right handed Waldron at 70 pitches now in the game, here with one out in the fourth. And Hernandez. House away, strike two. I've not seen a, a current report, but years ago, and, I, and I'm talking about, oh, maybe 15 years ago is the last time I actually saw a report. And the findings were that if you threw over to first base on a pickoff, it reduced the amount, the percentage of stolen bases significantly. Mm. 
keeping base runners honest. Mm -hmm. And the defense engaged. Another foul ball from Hernandez. This one chopped back toward the Dodgers on deck circle. And if memory serves, uh, Craig, it was like 15 or 20 percent. It actually reduced. Now I, I don't believe that it, it really affected what you would consider the real good speedsters. Mm -hmm. You know, the guys that steal multiple bases. Altman had 16 a year ago. None so far this year. He has tried once. Fastball misses outside from Waldron. One ball, two strikes to count on Kike. The Dodgers have had base runners in each of these first four innings, but are 0 for 9 with men on base. Not in scoring position, just on base. Altman takes off for second. A swing and a miss from Hernandez. The throw from Higashioka. The tag is late. So there is the first stolen base of the season for James Altman. Now you look to the Padre dugout to see if they're going to want to challenge. They're saying play on. And again, Stephen, uh, uh, I'll repeat myself. Uh, it, it appears, at least tonight, uh, the Dodgers, is this a new technique? A new weapon to try and force things or is this basically off the sky report for Waldron look we're going to be active and try and steal. Second stolen base of the game Otani yeah. had one and now Altman has another. Two down after the strikeout of Hernandez Gavin Lux. Sees a knuckleball miss well outside yeah. and dropped by Higashioka. Yeah, they one. also they also were sending to Oscar Hernandez trying yeah. to steal back in the second inning couple of foul balls. Well Altman was up there. Outman in position to score. Can Gavin Lux help him do so? There were two out in the fourth inning. No need to swing on that one again. A couple of feet outside, 2 0. Tigers have had opportunities. This is their sixth at bat with a runner in scoring position. The Padres, meanwhile, still trying to get a runner on base. Waldron fires at tails in there for a strike two and one. The Dodgers now two for the last 24 with runners in scoring position the last three games. You're spot on. Got to do something for Gavin Stone because he hasn't been unblemished so far through his first four innings of work. Waldron pitches. Lux fouls it back straight back into the net two and two. 12 up 12 down. For Gavin Stone so far. Dodgers a base hit away from giving him a lead to work with. No score. We approach the halfway point of the ball game. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch to Lux misses low. Good eye from Gavin. He's jumping up and down in the left handed batter's box <laughs> as if he really wanted to offer. A swing there, but he did not. Now the count's full. Definitely room through the six hole. If the left handed Lux can take it there. The payoff coming from Waldron. He peeks on Outman, delivers to Lux. That's inside. Ball four. Good work for Lux. He passes the baton to the top of the order and Mookie Betts. The, the numbers for Betts and while the Dodgers if we look at the last eight games including this one, it's going to be a trip out to the mound. The Dodgers are just. Well they're hitting 183 with runners in scoring position the last uh, eight games 13 for 71. But for Mookie Betts he's hit 444 in this spot this year. This consultation on the mound is brought to you by Jacoby Myers, the official law firm of the Dodgers. For a free consultation, call 1 800 5 million because everyone deserves justice. Ruben Niebla, the pitching coach, is about to be interrupted by the crew chief and home plate umpire Chris Guccione before Guccione can get to the mound. The Padres break it up, trying to get on the same page before Waldron battles with Betts. There is some rummaging happening and stretching in the Padre bullpen in right field as Waldron is at 80 pitches right now. No such movement for the Dodgers given how Gavin Stone has looked so far tonight. Mookie's one for two with a base hit. Batting average now at 349 on the year. 
has driven in 14 runs so far. Hit a three run homer last night. He's got two on here tonight. First pitch from Waldron, a knuckleball. That misses. Ball one. Mookie with 10 homers in 10 ribbies in three games against the Padres alone. So 10 of his 14 against San Diego. Waldron delivers. Mookie takes. It's a strike. Waldron stuck, uh, struck. Mookie bets out with a knuckler in the first. Bets then singled in the third. Up with two on and two out in the fourth. Altman on second. Lux on first. Betts fouls away a second strike. One and two. Problem for hitters, the knuckler is about 77 to 78 miles an hour. The fastball, we've seen him top out at 93. Really tough to reconcile the timing difference and the mechanisms for a hitter. A one two from Waldron misses well outside. Two and two. Last year, Mookie set a major league record with 107 RBIs from the leadoff spot. Two on, two out. A 2 2 count. And Waldron needs a moment. He disengages with the mound. Looking Altman back to second base. The pitch clock starts counting down. Now at 10. Waldron set for this 2 2. Bet swings and rips a ground ball through the left side. Altman being waved around. Profar's throw home is well high. Mookie Betts breaks the ice with an RBI base hit. It's 1-0 Dodgers. Came on a knuckleball. And Betts able to go to second base on a very poor throw by Profar. And it took really Waldron who backing who was backing up home plate who had to make the catch on the ball. He air mailed the catcher and both cutoff men. Allowed not only Lux to get to third, but Mookie to get to second. So two more in position for Shohei Otani. The Dodgers with the best two out offense in baseball last year. Showing that form again here in 2024. The first pitch to Otani is a fastball inside. 1 0. Shohei has been up two times tonight, has walked twice, has a stolen base, batting average sitting at 353. Four home runs, nine. Hey everybody, let's runs. go, Dodgers. Waldron settles in, fires home. Otani breaks his bat, a flare going back is Rosario, and he hustles it down just in foul territory beyond the infield dirt on the left side. Hey everybody, the let's go, inning, Dodgers. The Dodgers get the first run of the game. It's a one nothing lead as we move on to the fifth on the Dodgers Audio Network. The UFC is on Sirius XM. Hear all the action live from the Octagon every weekend on Sirius XM Fight Nation Channel 156. Any other stores to receive a free team bracelet and $50 off any purchase of $99 or more. And don't forget, everyone is approved for credit at Daniels. So visit DanielsJewelers.com now to find the nearest store. Own the dream with Daniels Jewelers. I can afford to follow my dreams. I can afford to do whatever I put my mind to. I can afford college. Start your future at a California community college. Financial aid is available to help with tuition, books, and sometimes even the rent. I can afford to invest in myself and my future. It's time to take the next big step. Classes can fill up quickly, so enroll today at ICanGoToCollege.com. 
In the history of Dodger Stadium, there's been 18 total rainouts. Hi, I'm Dave Roberts. As manager of LA's favorite ball club, I know a little something about rainouts. And last year's rain was one for the books. It was also one of LA County's best for capturing rain and stormwater. Over 200 billion gallons of stormwater was captured, enough for 5 million people. This year is starting out stormy. That's why LA County's putting in the work now for a safe, clean, reliable water future. Find out more at waterforla.com. Dodgers fans, this is Evan Phillips. And Evan Phillips continues to do a magnificent job for the Dodgers. And you're listening to Dodger Baseball on Sirius XM. On a Saturday night, oh yes, on a Saturday night. Gavin Stone will see 4, 5, and 6 for San Diego. Machado, Profar. Hey, make sure everybody Dodgers votes in the poll. Who's going to win today? Let me know. Support the channel. The seat's down. Right field line by Machado. 47 pitches is all Gavin Stone is required to get through the first four. And at 48 on the game. He kicks and delivers to Machado, who holds up on ball one down and in. Four unblemished frames for Gavin Stone as Machado pulls one foul down the third baseline. One and two. Here, keeping an eye on pitch count. With Stone now on 50, the career high for Gavin. Young career. It's 85 in the first start of this season. Time called. On the flip side yeah. of the coin, Waldron has made 87 pitches. Well, Chris Guccione and Manny Machado, a miscommunication. I think Guccione thought Machado called time. It appeared that Machado mouthed to him. I did not. No, he Wait. did. He held up his right hand. Yeah, so I don't. That's universal timeout. All right. Well, either way, he strikes out swinging on the very next offering from Gavin Stone. That's the second strikeout for Machado. Third of the game for Gavin. All right. I don't know a sport that when you hold up your hand uh, towards the. Uh, Either the umpire or the referee, that that does not signal timeout. Now jerks and Profar <laughs> from the left-handed batter's box, following the right-handed Machado, shows bunt, pulls it back, and it's a ball. Uh, Max Muncy at the edge of the dirt on the left side of the infield. Betts, Lux, and Freeman playing back on the right side. That's up and in, and and jerks and Profar didn't like that. Well, uh, uh, Gavin Stone. That's that's when you come back in again. I'm not talking about hitting somebody, but Gavin Stone. What he's been able to do tonight is get people. Uh, off and now the Will plate. Smith and Jerks and Profar having words. Guccione between them. The infield for the Dodgers coming in. The benches are starting to empty here at Dodger Stadium. Well, that ball was not that far inside to begin with. I mean, Profar showing bunt given what Gavin Stone has done up to this point right retiring the first 13 Padres he has faced and the next pitch from Stone is a fastball up and in not head high about armpit high but it forces Profar off the plate well it's not where he had to dive out of the way to avoid being hit and simply off the plate and I'm talking only inches I'm not talking about a foot off the plate inside I'm not a foot and a half and now which is a big conference the bullpens oh. empty the teammates have come out of the Dodger clubhouse as well. <laughs> yeah, you can tell which guys are in the clubhouse versus <laughs> in the dugout, the late arrivals. Uh, we won't yeah. we won't put them on blast as now everyone's going their separate ways. The boos rain down. Will yeah. Smith. Well, that was totally uncalled for. Uh, look at it. That was not that was no. not you, you've seen far worse from pitchers in terms of control. You know where that ball oh, was? Oh, Jerks and Profar said to Will Smith, WTF do you mean? Uh, and that forced Will out of his crouch. And then the conversation escalated, and so did the situation. Where the line is drawn in the batter's box for left handed batters. That pitch was directly above the inside line, which is only inches off the plate. And now, it, if you're Gavin Stone, You've been in a rhythm all night. And 
you got to resettle yourself. I, I think for Gavin Stone, you take a deep breath and say, okay, the guy got irritated because I'm pitching inside. Still waiting for the, the bullpen guys to get back to the bullpen. <laughs> you don't change it because, oh, he's upset? Oh, too bad. Hey, 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 Gavin Stone, for the record, looked completely unbothered. Yeah, uh, and, he, uh, and he should be unbothered. Yeah. It was a lot of nothing. So, relievers for both teams finally made it back to their bullpens. The gates have closed and we're playing ball. It's a 2 and 0 count with one out in the top of the fifth. The Dodgers leading by one. Swing and a miss. <laughs> and that throws the biggest roar of the game. Save for Mookie Betts' RBI single. A swinging strike for Profar. 2 and 1. I love that pitch. Stone working quickly. Has another in the air to center field. Outman. Took a couple steps back. Now comes in. Two down. All of a sudden, this game has a different flavor. Hey, a week from tonight, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. The Mets are in. And the first 40,000 fans in attendance are going to receive a Walker Bueller bobblehead presented by Bank of America. Come on out and join us. Dodgers.com slash promotions. A week from tonight. Can't be fun at the old ballpark, can you? Oh, um, but you know what? I think this crowd needed it, given the weather delay and the long wait for most of the people in attendance here. They got the juices flowing now with two out in the fifth. Ball one on a changeup that missed downstairs by Stone and to Hassan Kim. Yeah, and for anyone that left early, you, you missed well. <laughs> it wasn't a brew ha ha, it was a brew. Line drive, opposite field fly ball, and Hernandez, he's got it. So Gavin Stone. He's retired everybody he's faced through five innings so far. Cruising with the Dodgers up one nothing in the middle of the ball game. Yes, yes, yes. All right, Dodger fans. Get ready to fuel up like a pro with Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Lucky Charms, and Honey Nut Cheerios, the official cereals of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Start your day with the taste of victory. Whether it's the sweet crunch of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the magic of Lucky Charms, or the classic taste and goodness of Cheerios. Mm. Make every breakfast a home run. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Lucky Charms, and Honey Nut Cheerios, the official cereals of the L.A. Dodgers, fueling champions everywhere. Welcome to the future, Dickerson. All your trophy muscles are irrelevant. What are you talking about? For 46 years, the Ford F-Series has been the best-selling truck on the market. But it's not just because it's got brawn. It's got brains, too, and cutting-edge technology. Fully charged. Mobile generators, hybrid engines, even wireless charging. That's great. But I've got both. I'm the whole package. Humble, too. Head to your Southern California Ford dealers for great offers on a Ford F-150 truck. Serving those who serve is a lifelong mission, one that Budweiser supports with Folds of Honor. Together, they've been helping military families for 13 years by funding life-changing scholarships. So join us in raising a Budweiser to raise funds for the families of American heroes. Join the mission. A need this great depends on patriots like you. 91% of donations go directly to scholarships to support the families of American heroes. Enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2023 Anheuser-Busch Budweiser Lager Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. This is L.A. Dodgers baseball. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by authority of the Los Angeles Dodgers and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Freeman Smith and Hernandez on the slate for the Dodgers in the bottom of the fifth. And the juice is now flowing at Dodger Stadium in game two of this three-game series. Ball one from... Matt Waldron, who's still in the game, approaching 90 pitches. Freddie's 0 for 2. He struck out and flown out. In the air to left, right to Profar. And <laughs> all of a sudden, Dodger fans who yeah. may or may not have. Yeah. Really known about jerks and Profar until they've a few added, moments ago. Yeah. They've added him to the list. They've added another <laughs> another name to the blue uh, to the boo list. And now here's Will Smith, the person with whom Profar seemed to take the biggest issue with, following the pitch up and in from Gavin Stone, Waldron to Smith, a yeah. fastball off the plate called the strike. Yeah, there's a lot of nothing about nothing. Yeah. Uh, 
Now just trying to avoid three straight losses as Smith rolls one over to third. Rosario comes in, fields it, and throws across for the second out of the fifth inning. The Dodgers have this one nothing lead for Gavin Stone. 15 up, 15 down for Gavin on 57 pitches. The Padres have done absolutely nothing against the Dodgers righty, who has absolutely nobody around him in the Dodger dugout. Nope. Teoscar Hernandez with the bases clear. Take strike one. He thinks it's lonely in the bench now. If this continues, it'll get real lonely. The 02 or the 01 rather is bounced to short. And that's a 1 2 3 fifth for Waldron. So now Gavin Stone will take the sweatshirt off and get back to work trying to match what he's done so far. We'll come back for the sixth inning on the Dodgers audio network. Everybody make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and if you're new join the channel. A giant thank you to the entire Octane community for keeping rock alive. Turn up new hard rock. Turn up Octane. Tonight, channel 37 and on the Sirius XM app. Fantasy Sports Radio is helping you win your fantasy leagues right now on Channel 87. It's a home run for Ronald Acuna. From in-season fantasy baseball management to daily fantasy basketball to getting you ready for the NFL draft, Fantasy Sports Radio is here to help you dominate. How you manage your team day in and day out will be the difference in where you finish in 2024. Fantasy Sports Radio, your home for fantasy sports. Channel 87 and on the all-new Sirius XM app. The NASCAR Cup Series is on Sirius XM. Let's go, go! We're back on the track. Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. From Texas Motor Speedway. On Sirius XM NASCAR Radio Channel 90. In the car. And on the all-new Sirius, Sirius XM, XM app. Get closer to everything that moves you wherever you are with the Sirius XM app. Let's make some smoke and drink some beer. Yeah! Hi, this is Ray Hudson, and for all the biggest matches from Club Soccer's Holy Grail, the UEFA Champions League, tune in to Sirius XM FC 157. Hi, this is Mike Tirico. Masters Radio returns Monday, April 8th on Channel 92 in the car and on the Sirius XM app. We welcome you back for the top of the sixth inning. Gavin Stone will welcome the bottom of the San Diego Padre order. Seven, eight, and nine. Two up against Gavin. Infield in for Muncie on the corner at third as Tyler Wade fouls away the first pitch of the inning. Another fastball in on the hands, jammed Wade. Stone with a big, deep breath steps back into his delivery and fires home, missing outside with a tailing fastball. One ball, one strike. That's a big pitch for Gavin Stone. That was at 95, so it not only velocity, but that ball moved maybe a foot, foot and a half tailing outside. His 1-1 one, one is downstairs. Two balls and a strike. Stone now at 60 pitches. Pitch number 61 is the 2-1 to Wade. That misses high and outside. Three balls and a strike. I mentioned his career high in pitches in the major leagues being 85. His career high in the minors, 102. It came in 2022. He's pitching for Tulsa in double A. 3 1 to Wade. Misses downstairs and outside. It's a walk in the first base runner of the game for the San Diego Padres. So Stone's bid at perfection. Number five, Eggie Rosario is squandered here leading off the top of the sixth. Now the young third baseman in Eggy Rosario. First pitch swinging ground ball to, to third once he goes to second to get one and Lux turns to. That's how you respond for Gavin Stone. 
The best turn that we have seen from Gavin Lux. I mean, that was so fluid. And the other part, too, is that Muncie had to go to his left, collected himself, and gave Gavin Lux the perfect feed where he could catch it, get rid of it. Big double play. The 5 4 3 wipes the bases clean. Higashioka swings and misses on a fastball well off the plate inside, but it's 0 1. Ball one in the dirt. Uh, Stone. The latest Dodger to be perfect through five. The last being Ryan Pepio last September in Miami. He was perfect through six and two thirds for a two out hit in the seventh. Josh Bell. That's hit hard and through. The first hit of the ball game for San Diego comes off the bat of the number nine hitter and the catcher who's hitting 091 coming into the game and Kyle Higashioka. And the Dodgers fans in attendance who had recognized what was happening now rising to their feet and giving Gavin Stone a round of applause. Yeah, not a bad pitch either. Down and in with a little bit of movement. And of all the Padres you were thinking, well, who could ruin this for Gavin Stone? The very last one on the list was the last of the order with respect to Higashioka. Ground ball right side. That bounces by a diving Freeman into right field. So back to back hits for San Diego. Higashioka hustles from first to third with two out in the six. So the tying run 90 feet away just like that after Jackson Merrill rope him by the Dodger infield. That'll bring Mark Pryor out of the Dodger dugout. I like this visit for Mark Pryor. Absolutely. Just a, a chance to kind of catch your breath, get refocused, get back to work. Hey, friends, one of the big uh, draws on many of the special nights at Dodger Stadium will take place on Tuesday. Why? Well, it's Hello Kitty night. And you can purchase a special ticket pack and receive a Hello Kitty bag. And for tickets, Dodgers.com slash ticket packs. Will Smith out there with Mark Pryor. They finished talking with Gavin Stone. You know the pitch clock also, Stephen, is it do teams use mound visits often enough? Mm. Granted, there's one less that you can make this year, but you know that's a good time to do it right there. Okay. Take a deep breath. Let's recollect because right now you're starting to get to the big part of the lineup. Not only the time, but the situation. Two on, two out for Fernando Tatis Jr. Who fouls away the first pitch. A change. Hey, everybody, up let's Stone. go, Dodgers. 0 and 1. Change up again. Pre-game show we're talking about early going. The first two starts he used it almost 40 percent of the time. Have not seen it that high of a ratio tonight, but it's been a good one. The 69th pitch from Stone it is a nice one. A dotted fastball down at the inside corner. Nothing in two. Fans trying to will Stone out of this sixth inning. The Padres threatening first and third. The 0-2 to Tatis. In off the plate. Called the ball. Good pitch. Good pitch. And accurately called by Chris Guccione. And, and by good pitch. I'm not, it wasn't a strike. It was a good pitch. If he wasn't offered at it, you're going to get jammed. Tatis, a 385 hitter with runners in scoring position. Higashioka standing off third. And Tatis Jr. is going to tie the ball game with a base hit to left center field. Going first to third is Merrill. Tatis hustling for second, and the Dodgers did not recognize that. So he's in there safely. Altman threw it to the cutoff man and Mookie Betts, but Mookie had his back turn to the right side of the infield. And so now it's second and third for the Padres. Still with two out, but a brand new ball game. It's one to one. Yeah, that ball jammed Tatis a little bit, but uh, it was over the big part of the plate. You know, big gap in left center field to begin with, but the throw was really not to third base, although that's where Mookie Betts was lined up. And when Betts caught the ball coming in, his back was the second base, and Tatis can take an extra 90 feet. Second and third, two out in the six. A 1 1 game. Jake Cronenworth stares at a fastball that missed. Arm side for Gavin Stone. 
1 0. Oh. Left handed Cronenworth 0 for 2. Fouled out in the first, struck out in the fourth. Righty Stone looks at Merrill off third base, then comes home in the air center field, pushing Altman back toward the track. He's on the track, reaches up, and he's got it. Put a scare into the crowd at Dodger Stadium. They now rise to their feet to applaud Gavin Stone. The perfection bid, the no hit bid, and the shutout bid all erased, though, in the sixth. It's now one to one. Hi, this is Alexa. Everybody, Did make you sure you hit Alexa that like button, hit that subscribe Amazon button, Alexa. and if you're new, Download join the, the channel. App and tell me to play the Dodgers on Sirius XM. Something else that can grow that we don't see. It's what doctors call toxic stress. It's how a child's body responds to difficult experiences, from harsh language to a painful loss. There are steps parents can take to help. Learn four things you can do to overcome toxic stress at first5california.com. Medi-Cal renewals are happening now. All members' eligibility is reviewed once annually, and everyone's renewal date is different. You can check your renewal month in your online benefitscal.com account. If your current address, email, or phone number have changed, please update your information with your local county office. If you get a renewal form in the mail in a yellow envelope, you must complete it to keep your Medi-Cal. If you don't, you will lose your coverage. Visit LACare.org for more information. That's LACare.org. The exclusive home of the Dodgers. AM 570 LA Sports. This is Andre Ethier. Listen to Petros and Money for the cue to call for your chance to win a $100 Superior Grocers gift card. Hey, Southern California, baseball season is upon us. And nothing pairs better with baseball than a michelada made with Modelo Especial. Modelo is a reward for those with a fighting spirit. It's not a michelada if it's not made with Modelo. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. This Monday, hear live coverage of the 2024 WNBA Draft on Sirius XM NBA Radio. Caitlin Clark is the all-time scoring leader in women's basketball history. Catch the top picks and interviews from stars like Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and many more after they're selected. You heard your name called. Who went through your mind? To hear my name called, it was like fresh, fresh air. air. Tune in. Monday. Tani now in his career against Cosgrove is 0 for 5, but deploying here against a different part of the order. Muncie, Altman, and Hernandez. A tough angle. You can understand why he'd be hard on the left handed hitter. He has been on Otani. Muncie is 0 for 2 tonight. Waits on this 1 0 and a sweeper in there for a strike. Yeah, that's a pitch right there that really neutralizes the left handed hitters. Saw him attack Otani the other evening. Sweeper, sweeper, sweeper. Let's go Dodgers. Back ball games leading off this six. Behind Cosgrove one and two. Here it comes. And he stays alive. Protective swing there. Max is happy with the approach. Been more aggressive on pitches. In the zone. He's happy with the fields. He's not happy with the high strike. And he gets hit here with a one two pitch. Some big time help right there. The go ahead run is aboard to open the six. Center field. Muncy threw some cheek Deep right there. Man. Able to get down to first base. Take it. Do it. Do it, Muncy. Yeah. Throw some cheek, brother. <laughs> Now the Dodgers yesterday they had all kinds of early offense but went two for their last 28. And they finished better tonight tied this series up. Almond's had a good day. Sky high center field. Merrill. For the first out. Thank you. 
con las bárbaras, con los de Son un fuerte Back with the Dodgers wearing a different number than when he was first here. While he was away, his number 14 was retired, Gil Hodges. Comes back, they gave him a few options. He gave him 29 as an option. He said, I don't like that. He said, How about 10? He said, That's Justin Turner. I can't do that. And then they offered eight. He said, Yeah, he's a Kobe fan. His birthday is 824, considered Mamba Day. Kobe's two numbers, and uh, he said, I'd be happy to put on eight. Speaking about Mamba, Vanessa Bryant, Kobe's wife, donated some shoes. The Kobe Pro Tro 6, Kobe 6 Pro Tro Dodger. It, there, I saw it. Gavin Lux has got a pair, Dave Roberts. Unfortunately, not going to be released to the public, but those things are sweet. It's not going to keep you from working on it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Making friends down there. There's the base hit the other way for Hernandez. Bottom of the order setting things up here. First and second with one away. Hey, everybody, let's go, Dodgers. It's just really a nice job there. That ball running away from Kike. Just passes the baton, shoots it out to right. Gavin Lux had a great at bat last time up. James Alvin was at second base. He took a couple of pitches that were real close, ended up drawing a walk, and then Mookie followed with a base hit. Well, we've talked about the bottom of this order needing to do more. We're not talking about the bottom of the order needing to hit 300 and you know, crush a bunch of home runs. If they can do what they've done tonight, that's plenty. They've all reached base. And given those big guys at the top, chances to cash in. First and second, one away. I mean, you, you just said it. You don't have to be a big ball. You don't have to do big things. Gavin Lux, all he did last at bat was draw a walk. Allowed Mookie to come up. Boom, base hit RBI, Dodgers on the board. Yeah, to score James Alman, yeah, who got right, aboard got out of the bottom of the order himself. A little bit outside. Watch that thing start at his hip and finish away. Cosgrove to Lux. At the knees this time, and it's one and one. This is probably going to be it for Cosgrove. Got a righty ready. De Los Santos. The 1 1 pitch. Ground ball. Pass second base into right field. Muncy's headed in to score. Lux gives the Dodgers the lead. Bottom of the order comes through, and it's 2 1. I really believe it's just going to be a matter of time before Gavin Lux regains that form that he's become so accustomed to. See that ball just squirts by Wade's glove. Really a good at bat though. Turn the lineup over and guess who's up. It is Mookie Betts and they will let Cosgrove face him. First and third one away. Betts jumps on the first pitch and sprays it foul. Mookie in limited chances with runners in scoring position just given the issues at the bottom of the order we've talked about. Five out of ten. It's knocked in nine. Looking for insurance. And he's got some. Drop and run into right field. That's knocked in his second run. Lux to third. It's three to one.
Again, Mookie doing much like Kike did a pitch out over the plate using right field. Dodgers started one for 17 tonight with runners in scoring position, three for their last four. Mookie doing it. Yeah, it doesn't matter the category, it doesn't matter what phase of this sport you're talking about. Mookie Betts, spectacular here in 2024. I saw the Everybody, so make sure you hit that side. like button, hit Are that subscribe journey, button, really and if you're new, join the channel. Cosentix works for me. Cosentix helps real people get real relief from the symptoms of psoriatic arthritis or psoriasis, serious allergic reactions, severe skin reactions that look like eczema, and an increased risk of infections, some fatal have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to, or if IBD symptoms develop or worsen. I move so much better because of Cosentix. Ask your rheumatologist about Cosentix. Introducing the all-new 2024 Lincoln Nautilus Hybrid. Because of one choice, one legacy gave my daughter a second chance. Because of one choice, one legacy brought my daddy back home. Because of one choice, one legacy helped me heal. One legacy helps save lives by creating the opportunity for all Californians to sign up on the official state organ, eye, and tissue donor registry. This one choice can save up to eight lives and help over 75 people to heal. One choice, one legacy. OneLegacy.org. Head to Dodger Stadium on Tuesday for Hello Kitty Night. Purchase a special ticket pack to receive a Hello Kitty bag. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash ticket packs. It's Otani, first and third, one away. And Morahone's first pitch gets away. Betts goes into scoring position. We had mentioned Tom Cosgrove was the Otani neutralizer, and you can understand in looking back why they took him out of the game, but they take him out one batter ahead of Shohei Otani. I suppose not wanting him to face Otani again 24 hours later, but they bring out Adrian Morahone, who has faced him twice, Giving up hits both times, and one of them left the building. Not the Otani neutralizer to this point. Is 1 0. High fastball gets a swing and a miss. Morahone's out of Cuba. One time starting pitcher that has dealt with injuries. Came back from Tommy John surgery, not quite the same. Was with the team in Seoul, but then he quickly, El Bencho, back to El Paso. Called back up this weekend. Reaches out, sends one in the air to center field that backs Merrill to the track. He's got it, and then he drops it on the transfer. It's a good catch. It'll score locks. And hey, everybody, let's go, go Dodgers. With a sack fly. So the Dodgers tonight have scored four runs. Six, seven, eight, nine, all with one. We talked about it, you know, again, the bottom of the lineup, and you watch here the transfer. Good going to grab the ball from his glove. So he just missed that. It's amazing that you can lean out like that right, and just right. miss it. <laughs> Freeman. And to center field, easy one for Merrill. Dodgers get three runs here in the sixth, then lead it four to one out of the late innings. Hey, make sure everybody votes in the poll. Who's going to win today? Let me know. Support the channel. Feeling healthy by leaps and bounds. Making a dinner that makes their whole day. And giving your best friend the best nutrients for their best life. Science did that. My A1C was up here. Now it's down with Rebelsis. His A1C? It's down with Rebelsis. 
My doctor told me Rebelsis lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. And that people taking Rebelsis lost more weight. I got to my A1C goal and lost some weight too. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Gallbladder problems may occur. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration which may worsen kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? You may pay as little as $10 per prescription. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, smile big and bright. Because of you. We are happy and we know it. Thank you. Go to lunchfrenders.org right away. Gavin Stone said last year forced him to learn how to come back from failure. Really the first time in his baseball life he had experienced it. And his path back late last year was to add two new pitches midseason, including that sinker, which he's thrown 26 times tonight. The next time he throws it, it'll become a new career-high sinker's thrown. Manny Machado fouls back the first pitch. Stone didn't even have a sinker until midway through last summer. But he added the sinker, he added the cutter, and it helped change his season. Made it harder for guys to sit on that change up that had kind of been neutralized his first time up. What a pick by Freddie Freeman. Stone is waiting on the feed. Sparkling defense around Stone tonight. This ball a missile off Manny Machado's bat, 106 miles an hour. And Freddie able to glove it. You mentioned sparkling defense. It, complete contrast to what Gavin Stone was given in his last outing. Again, he got banged up a little bit, but defensively tonight, the Dodgers have brought their gloves. If that was the sinker there, 27th that he's thrown. Second to last pick of the five round draft in 2020. And has his breakout two years after that winning minor league player of the year, minor league pitcher of the year in the Dodgers system, makes it to the majors, and wow, it's great, I've made it, but then whack, everything changes. And so he's got to change. And we talked about this last night, but any successful big leaguer, part of their story, when they look back, is always they had to change. The league made them change. Well, you're constantly adjusting because the league is going to find out your weakness whether you're a hitter or a pitcher now you have to change now you have to make that weakness a strength you have to continue to evolve through the course of your career or, or you're not going to last the trick is not getting to the big leagues the trick is staying in the big leagues Here's his payoff, and he strikes out Profar. Cutter to the knees. Two gone in the seventh. Not sure what he was shaking his head at because that ball, is, it's a perfect pitch. I mean, it's right there at the bottom of the zone. Shortstop, I mean, if anything, don't shake your, shake your head. Just tip your cap. Say, you got me. Hassan Kim. Breaking pitch to the corner for a strike. As Stone, we talk about the changeup being the pitch that you hear about him coming up. He didn't have that pitch until he was drafted. This is a fastball inside. So he adds the changeup. That fuels his rise to the majors. He adds the sinker. That helps him stay in the majors. Tonight, he has put it all together. For the best start of his young major league career. Again, coming into this game, he'd given up a run per inning in his time in the majors. Grove gets loose. Stone throws. Two and two on Ha Song Kim. The location has been impeccable tonight with all of his pitches. Hey everybody, let's go Dodgers.
fought off down the line and a base hit for Kim leads into foul ground picked up by Teoscar Hernandez Kim into second with a two out double. Second that ball just ran in range. on his hands and Kim shot it out there at a whopping 72 miles an hour but it was a good placement exit velocity certainly wasn't worthy of a hit but the placement was that's the first base runner for the Padres outside of the sixth inning they had the three straight singles in the sixth had the walk in the sixth otherwise perfect tonight strike one and a change up to Wade it was Wade that became the first base runner starting last inning with a walk Stone with a new major league career high and pitches thrown. Here's his 88. And that's a base hit to right field. Here comes Kim. Juggled by Hernandez. Kim will score and a little two out flurry here makes it four to two. Oh. And that is going to do it for Stone. This does not change. The fact that this is the Mona Lisa of a very, very young, promising major league career. His finest night. Gavin Stone, take a bow. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Unique style. Mm -hmm. Cutting edge innovation. Mm -hmm. And thoughtful details. Mm -hmm. Inspired by you. From the brand that delivers amazing ownership experience. Hey, make sure everybody votes in the this poll. The Who's going to win today? RZ. Let me know. Support the channel. This is Lexus. Electrified. See, I know this road is there for me. Thinking I should bring back my 100% all white meat popcorn chicken combos for $6.99? You're in luck. I did. If you weren't thinking that, I bet you are now. My popcorn chicken combos are only $6.99. Get them sauced and loaded for just a buck more. Welcome to Jack in the Box. Scratchers from the California Lottery. A little play can make your day. Gavin Stone, six and two-thirds. Perfect through five. No hitter with two gone in the sixth was broken up. Padres got their first run and added one here with two gone in the seventh, but in position to get his first win of the season as he hands it off to the pen. First pitch that was thrown by Michael Grove and a stolen base by Tyler Wade. They're going to challenge. But she called for it right away. Can't tell right there if you got him on the leg. Los Angeles is challenging the safe call at second base. See anything yet? I haven't seen it yet, right? Just maybe this one gives us something. It's really close. Good worth the challenge.
will say this the Padres just they just do not go away. I mean you, you think you put a little something on them and got to give credit to the new manager there he's Schilt has done a nice job and they're they are competing. I feel like that left hand is is in it just, it just doesn't feel like there's enough to overturn the call. There's Mike Schilt right After there. Review, the call on the field is confirmed. The runner is safe. Los Angeles will lose our challenge. Confirmed. Call is confirmed. That means they saw it as safe, right? Seems, I don't know if I saw that. It's a little aggressive. Yeah, right. All right, so stolen base for Wade has him in the scoring position. And a 4 to 2 game here in the seventh. The Padres. As they've won three of their last four, twice have come back from at least down four. They had the eight nothing deficit they came back from on Monday. They had the seven three deficit they came back from last night. The hitter is Aggie Rosario, and it's two and zero. Oh. Gro finds himself pitching in a big spot here, with as much as they exhausted the bullpen last night. Two and one. Coming off his best game, two and a third hitless innings in the finale in Minnesota. Two and two. And that's the pitch that he had working. He's throwing two in a row, and Rosario's gone after both. I got to go back with it again. Wait at second, two out, and a 2 2 from Grove. There it is. If it ain't broke, why fix it? Padres get one, four to two, and we stretch. I've always been told I gotta be strong. Thick skin, tough as nails. But to be everything for everybody? It wears on you. Black don't crack, they say. But it can. We all can. Reach out to a friend if you see them going through it. No matter who you are, being vulnerable is what makes us whole. Learn how to help at SeizeTheAqua.org. This place that I call. <laughs> I want to explain it to her. There are trucks. And then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving Everybody experience. Everybody, make sure you hit that like button, hit the that subscribe button. And if you're new, six function join the channel. Tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Or get 3,500 purchase cash on select GMC Sierra models. Or get a total of 6,000 purchase allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. We are professional grade GMC. My son, Ricky, took his life by the use of a firearm. It broke me in ways that I never knew that I could be broken. And I contemplated suicide. I still own my firearm. I keep it in a safe because I want to keep my grandson and myself safe. Store your gun securely. Locked, unloaded, and away from ammo. And bringing back frosted animal cookie and brownie batter. Hurry before they're gone. The first 40,000 fans in attendance in, on Monday will receive a Jackie Robinson Brooklyn Dodgers hat presented by UCLA Health. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promotions. Middle part of his season-long homestand. His three games against the Padres, those three with the Nationals, and then three against the Mets. And how about Gavin Stone tonight? Six and two-thirds in position to get his first win of the year. Dodgers trying to add on. They lead four to two. Last of the seventh, Will Smith flies the first pitch from Adrian Morahone. Foul. Dodgers got one in the fourth. They got three in the six, and it's been the bottom of the order tonight. They're coming out party. Four runs have come from six, seven, eight, nine. Each one of those guys scoring once.
Owen two. All four of the runs from the bottom of the order. One of the runs batted in from down there. The other three RBIs have come from Betts or Otani. And that's kind of the idea when we're right. talking about the bottom of the order just doing enough to set the table. Yeah, you just got to get down to first base. You know, pitchers don't want to face Betts and Otani with nobody on, but you put some base runners on, they're pitching out of the stretch, changes the whole complexion of the game. Smith down on a high fastball. Been a word from Morongo. Hey everybody, Morongo. let's go Dodgers. In the Southland. Well, the Dodgers, even with a very top-heavy lineup so far this year, they're second in the National League and on base. They're second in the National League in slugging. Trail and the Braves in both those categories. A ball on to Oscar. Trying to go to 11 and 6 tonight. First time this year they've lost back to back games. One ball, one strike. Try to even the series up tonight and they'll wrap the series up tomorrow. Sunday night baseball. James Paxton coming off a great start in Minnesota. You Darvish goes for the Padres. There is uh, rain in the forecast again tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know. Afternoon game though, right? Or late afternoon. Yeah, four. Four o'clock. Out of the one two from Morahone, a check swing foul. Morahone just a two pitch guy, but it's a real live arm. Fastball getting up there. 98 miles an hour, throws a slider, 86, 87. Another one two. A base hit past the diving Cronenworth. Hernandez makes the turn and hangs on. Throw goes behind him and gets by everybody. Teoscar's headed for second. Now he goes for third. It's Little League Baseball. Well, you can see what Tatis was thinking. Hernandez had rounded aggressively, was trying to throw behind him, but it sailed not one man, but two. I think he thought Marty Home was going to sneak in behind. Hey, Oscar, and he could have. Then Tatis fires a ball, and I think it hits the bag and just shot up. Yeah. See, I'm not really sure where Barahone was. He was just kind of in no man's land. You just got to get on the bag, and hey, Oscar reads everything, getting down to third. I think he's had his uh, fill of running tonight. Right now, oh, yes. <laughs> Muncy. Earlier, Hernandez was on after he walked in the second and he had two steal attempts. This is not a guy who often does that, as you probably know by now. But uh, Alman fouled it on both of his stolen base attempts, and he was huffing and puffing then. And now he's running wild with the throw wild. Infield is in. Ball and a strike on Muncie. Remember last inning, it began with Muncie down one and two to Tom Costco, but then Tom hit it. What did you say he did? He lowered his. Oh, Muncie threw a cheek at him. Threw a cheek at him. Yeah. Got down to first, started the inning. That's right. Fly ball, left center field. Is it deep enough? Here's Profar. He's got it. Here comes Teoscar. The throws. Hey, everybody, the let's side. go, Dodgers. The first fly for Max Muncie. And he's going to get a good reception in that dugout.
Muncy doing a nice job getting that RBI and Teoscar getting one more sprint in, right? <laughs> He's had enough. Look at him. <laughs> They're clear for Altman. Takes a spinner in there for a strike. So bottom four in the lineup now four unscored two driven in. Alvin part of that single stole a base came in to score back in the fourth on this 0 2 down on strikes this time and we've played seven the Dodgers five the Padres two. Get one free Arby's sandwich every week in April, online only. That includes the Euro. Arby's doesn't do Everybody, judge make sure you hit that like right button, hit that subscribe button, and Arby's, if you're new, join the channel. The meat. At Outback, your wish is our command. Back by popular demand, steak and lobster starting at $19.99. Come enjoy our boldly seasoned steak and buttery lobster tail. Hurry to Outback, where steak and lobster wishes come true starting at $19.99. No rules, just right. I am what child hunger looks like in America. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in seven American children who struggle with hunger. The extra twinkle, that extra swagger, feeling healthy by leaps and bounds, making a dinner that makes their whole day and giving your best friend the best nutrients for their best life. Science did that. When I look around Southern California, I see a lot of yellow billboards. What can I say? People tell me they love how our billboards look. They know what you know, that the Call Jacob Yellow represents the best personal injury legal team in Southern California. So if you're injured in an accident, call Jacob. Because if you know, you know. Call Jacob. Tonight's Wire Cam coverage is brought to you by our partners at The Fi, and we are right up there. And we welcome you back inside. 5-2 Dodgers in front over the Padres trying to tie this series up at a game apiece. Long delay before we got it started, but the Dodgers trying to make it worth the wait. Really happy that we did get it started. Gavin Stone was absolutely electric tonight, and the bottom of the offense has been yeah. getting on base, and Mookie knocking him in. How about a, a nod to the ground screw? Jordan Lorenz leads that ground screw. They don't often have to deal with conditions like this. Rarely do they even have to get the tarp out. But they managed this perfectly, taking it off at the right time. A little precarious there for a while. Rain started <laughs> to fall after they took it off and had gotten the field ready, but clear sailing from there. Daniel Hudson comes on to pitch. 5 2 game, top of the eighth. And he gets it by Brett Sullivan, who's pinch hitting here for Kyle Higashioka. Hudson getting right back on the beam after he gave up a home run to Jake Cronenworth last night. It's a chance he'll see Cronenworth again if the Padres were to get a base runner in this inning. Strikeout and a high fastball. Goes out of the zone and Solomon thinks he can catch up to that. Center field number three, Jackson Merrill. So back to the top of the order and Jackson Merrill.
who became the youngest player in franchise history to have a game winning hit in extras last night. Benito Santiago in his rookie of the year season 1986 and Fernando Tatis were the guys that were at the top of that list before. And the Padres are saying that Merrill's given him Tatis vibes lately with the moxie that he's playing with, the confidence being so young. You like Tatis, he went from shortstop to the outfield. Like Tatis and the majors and thriving at the age of 20. Down on a fastball here. Hudson attacking with that high heat. That is seven K's, and you know what that means, EK? Eat for free as long as I get a drink. That's right. right. More than you need one anyways. So. <laughs> Gotta wash it down. Uh, that's right. Same way he tacked Sullivan, put him away, goes up in the zone. Looks so good as a hitter, but you just can't catch up to it. From the guy reminding them of Fernando Tatis Jr. to Tatis himself. One for three, knocked in a run with a single in the sixth. Went around one and one. Boy, they've just filled that part of the. It, they really have. I mean, the only time that he wasn't tied up, Gavin left that. Hey, everybody, let's the go, plate. Dodgers. He tried to go in. But as a hitter, you become so cognizant of it, then it opens up the outer part. But, you know, if you, if you had the discipline to just lay off of it, you'd be fine. But you think, okay, it's coming inside. I got to get it. I got to get it. Swing. Oh! On this 2 1, Tatis fouls it off, and it's 2 and 2. I mean, you've got that inner half all to yourself right now if you're Hudson. Chance for Hudson to strike out the side in the eighth. Here he comes, and he does just that. Two with a fastball, one with a breaking ball, and after seven and a half, Dodgers five, Padres two. Oh, the puppies are loose. Need to get home in a hurry? Time for sport mode. Party's over, boys. Drive the Nissan Sentra. Now get a low 259 per month lease or get 3.9% APR financing for 30 months. Everybody, make sure you hit that Sentra. like button, hit that subscribe button, and if you're new, you join know the channel. Where you want to go in life. The 2024 Subaru Forester helps get you there. Symmetrical all wheel drive provides more standard capability than the Toyota RAV4, Honda CRV, or Nissan Rogue. Plus, the Forester has the best resale value in its class for four years running, according to Kelly Blue Book. It's the SUV for all you love. Lease a 2024 Forester Premium for $345 a month for 36 months at Hello Subaru of Temecula. At Spectrum News, we're committed to strengthening the fabric of local communities through our reporting with stories that inspire and news that matters on your smart TV and connected devices. Streaming live 24-7 plus on-demand weather forecasts. It's all there as you step outside with the Spectrum News mobile app, keeping you informed and in the know throughout your day. Spectrum News, your community connection, exclusively for Spectrum customers. Now available on your favorite devices. Skunky.com. <laughs> That's GetSkunky.com. When we finish, speaking of finish, John and Jerry and Nomar with Access Sportsnet Dodgers to wrap up this long night. Delayed by over two hours, but it's been a good game since it's gotten going. Dodgers up 5 2. To the bottom of the eighth, we go. It's Kike Hernandez to lead off as the Dodgers bring up 8 9 and 1. And Johnny Brito is part of the Juan Soto trade. Came over in the same deal that brought Michael King from the Yankees. Hernandez greets him with a shot in the center field that'll dunk in for a base hit. It's Kike's second hit of the night. 
Bottom of that lineup is not done. It's enough barrel on this ball. Walks. I, I just like the Dodgers that are put another couple on the board. It's like I said, the la last night and even tonight, it's it, like, they feel like they've got things under control, but again, it's only a three-run lead. And the Padres have earned the right to make people right. feel that way already this year. Now they came back from down four or more twice last year, and they've done it twice this week. Yeah, Mike Schilt's first season as the Padres manager, he had been around the organization in an advisory role after his time as the manager of the Cardinals. Takes over with Bob Melvin going up to San Francisco. Here's the two on to Gavin Lux. Stroke foul. Two and two. Lux put him in front last inning. Walked earlier and then an RBI single his last time. Dodgers have five runs on eight hits in this game. All eight hits have been singles. Down on strikes here. As Mookie Betts comes up, we get our plays of the game brought to you by your Southern California Volkswagen dealers. He's got three hits, two runs knocked in, and some good defense. And Mookie doing just about everything, as he does every night. I think, too, you look at the way you know, he's using all parts of the field. It's a threat on the bases. I'm just waiting to see him get on the mound. That's 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 the next frontier. He did as a kid. He did everything as a kid. Let's bring it back. Let's go. Right. One ball, one strike. All three of his hits are mentioned in all these singles they have. The Dodgers over the last seven years have won two games where they don't have an extra base hit if they continue to not have an extra base hit in this game and they obviously hold on and win they'd move to 2 and 0 this year without an extra base hit 2 and 39 the last 7 years found a new way to win Brito to Betts Slide to right for Tatis. And before Otani bats, let's get a word from Nissan. This Dodgers broadcast is brought to you by the Nissan Rogue. Shop NissanUSA.com. We are talking about how much it meant to Shohei to match Hideki Matsui atop the Japanese home run leaderboard. I don't know if you've seen the documentary Disney did. On Otani this offseason, but they interviewed Hideki in that, and Hideki autographed the ball for him and wrote under his name, I'm sure this ball is utterly worthless. And then they presented the ball to Otani on camera, and he laughed. And then he got serious and he said, I will treasure this. Bounces this one foul. Grew up watching him, and now he looks and sees his name right there with Hideki Matsui. On the all-time home run leaderboard. Well, it's hard to believe, but as a kid, you know, all of these guys had heroes and had players that they looked up to, and you know, Otani has become a preeminent baseball player on the planet. But he had heroes and idols growing up.
backs off of the plate two and one. seen a ball hit that high that went higher than it did far and it oh. went to the wall the coolest fly out in baseball history if you're buzzed and doing this to make yourself feel okay to drive ZWX. Uh, you're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. I suffer with psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis. I was on a journey for a really long time to find some relief. Cosentix works for me. Cosentix helps real people get real relief from the symptoms of psoriatic arthritis or psoriasis, serious allergic reactions, severe skin reactions that look like eczema, and an increased risk of infections. Some fatal have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to, or if IBD symptoms develop or worsen. I move so much better because of Cosentix. Ask your rheumatologist about Cosentix. It's one fantastic ride. The turbocharged, tech-inspired Kia Forte. Best two out of three. Kia, movement that inspires. There have been some uh, fun conversations watching take place down there since Otani's come back into the dugout. Dave Roberts here is pulling him aside with Will Ayrton as interpreter. It's been fun to watch those interactions develop and evolve, and especially as he's shifted to Will as his interpreter. Seven Phillips comes on here for the ninth inning. More and more of those conversations happening. Guys are talking about baseball kind of being that universal language that has helped the relationships grow. And they're having more and more of those. Well, I also feel like there's more animation between the two. There's more emotion. There's more. I, I feel like there's a closer bond now. I mean, you know, I, I think Otani is really becoming a part of the team. There isn't that wall. Three, four, and five for the Padres here in the nine. Phillips ahead of Cronenworth, 0 and 2. Phillips pitched a scoreless ninth inning last night. He's pitched in seven games this year, put up zeros in six of them. Trying to go to five and five in safe situations. That's the second time, by the way, that Otani has hit a ball like that, 110 miles per hour plus, and a launch angle of 43 degrees. Do they Was track he... height? Apparently, it's not even the highest ball that he's hit this year. Come on. So that, do we know if that other one that he hit like that was it a home run or was it a, a flyout? Do we know that? We're efforting. We'll have that for you in a second. We got the guy. We got a guy. We got a guy. Slide the left center field. Easy one for Kike Hernandez. Slices on the left. He's got it for the first out of the nine. I have to say, but both of these games last night, tonight, have been entertaining. They, they've been fun to watch. There's been a lot going on. They've been very different games. 
but very entertaining to watch as a fan. Back to what it was for those couple years, 21 and 22, even back to 20 where Padres were on the up and uh, really threatening the Dodgers throughout the regular season, giving them all they could handle. Of course, beating the Dodgers in the postseason in 22. Last year, they just kind of fell flat, San Diego did, so it didn't have as much luster, those games. But it certainly has had a little more drama, a little more flair. 0-2 on Machado. Hey, everybody, let's go, Dodgers. Machado, after hitting a home run yesterday, is 0 for 3 today. And in fact, since that home run, which was in his first at bat yesterday, is 0 for 6. On the 1 2 from Phillips. Not close. Again, 4 o'clock tomorrow on ESPN. James Paxton, lefty for the Dodgers. Hugh Darvish counters for the Padres. Phillips home with a 2 2. Machado reaches out and swats a base hit into center field. Said it, they, they just don't go away. It's a pretty good pitch. And Manny just sticks out that bat, stays a through it. Short to long and able to find some grass out there. Extends his hitting streak to seven games. Now Jerickson Profar 0 for 3. He's hearing the same kind of boos that Machado and Tatis often do with the fireworks that he started tonight. Minor fireworks like the, the store bought <laughs> ones. You try to get those giant plastic wrap packages they have around the holidays. Those kind of fireworks. All right, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you're new, join the channel. Yeah. What were those called? Snap I rocks? Snap, snap. Snap pops. pops. I think snap pops. Don't throw them at people. Because I think they still will pop. Yeah. There's like a little bit of gunpowder in there. I so remember feeling as a kid. Feeling as a kid. Wait, did you have somebody throw them at you? Was your brother throwing those at you? Or uh, something? Younger <laughs> brother better not be throwing. Yeah. <laughs> he might have, but... <laughs> It was the last Find we heard from him. Yeah. <laughs> One and two on profile. Dodgers five, Padres two. One in the fourth, three in the sixth, one in the seventh. Padres one in the sixth, one in the seventh, trying to get the tying run to the plate here. See a four six three right here, huh? Instead of base hit the other way, and San Diego keeps believing, keeps coming, and they've got the tying run coming up in the form of Ha Song Kim. I mean, anybody could have signed this guy, right? He, he was looking for a job. He goes back to San Diego. And you mentioned at the top of the, the telecast, he's been their best player. Tying run at the plate. One gone, ninth inning. Ha Song Kim takes inside ball one. Kim hit his second home run of the year last night. Tonight, he's doubled and scored. And a visit coming here from Will Smith. It's often pretty breezy for Phillips. Not the case here. Both hits this inning have come with two strikes. And you know, to talk about the Padres and, and kind of their their character this year. Four of their seven hits tonight have been with two strikes. They, they are resilient. They just they're not laying down. The 1-0 to Kim in there. One ball, one strike. Oh. 
Fastball to the corner, and he's got him at one and two. Perfectly executed pitch. Fastball started out, ran back over the corner part of the plate. Stay out there again. Ground ball to second for Lux. There's Betts. Running throw. Not in time. Kim somehow beats it out. Beauty on defense there. Both Betts and Freeman. But Kim is there in a bang-bang play. Second base number 14, Tyler Wade. And it does look like the right call from Brian Knight down there at first. It's up to Tyler Wade. Padres down to their last out here in the ninth. Wade has gotten his chance because of Manny Machado's elbow issue. Longtime New York Yankee. First season in San Diego. Two on, two out in the ninth. Runner takes off and will take second. Strike one from Phillips. Padres did not have a base run over the first five innings against Stone. They've got seven hits the last four innings. There's strike two. All right, this is a pitch we've been waiting for for a long time tonight, right? A lot of these fans got here probably four o'clock. Waited out the rain delay, waited out the cold, waiting for it to pay off. To second and Lux. That will do it. Worth the wait. Dodgers five, Padres two. Hey everybody, let's go Dodgers. Gavin Stone was excellent tonight, set the tone, came out and attacked the Padre hitters. Did not allow a base runner until the sixth inning. Bottom of the lineup was very productive. Mookie Betts was Mookie Betts. Evan Phillips comes in and shuts the door. Dodgers, Dodgers win. Up, Let's go. Six on the season. Yeah, the rubber match is coming tomorrow for Eric Caros, Kirsten Watson, and the rest of our crew. Joe Davis saying so long from Dodger Stadium. Appreciate you sticking with us on this Saturday night. ESPN's got it tomorrow. We'll be back with you on Monday as the Nationals come to town. For now, stay tuned. It's Access Sportsnet Dodgers after this 5-2 L.A. win. My dad was a farmer. The guy was bigger than life. He wasn't someone that liked to show his emotion or liked to show when he was struggling, but we all struggle. I want to show emotion to my kids. It's something that brings me so much joy, and I want them to see me working through things. Allow your kids to know that it's okay to struggle, that even dad doesn't know the answer sometimes, but we're gonna figure it out together. Is that a JetBlue Plus card? When you buy me with your card, you can earn two times points at eligible grocery stores towards your next trip. And as a card member, you also get a free check bag. Herradura, proud sponsor of the Wait, LA Dodgers. Back. Cheers to the winning spirit. Please enjoy responsibly. Tequila Herradura is 40% alcohol by volume. Must be 21 years or older to enjoy. Every year on April 15th, the Dodgers honored the legacy of Jackie Robinson on the day of his Major League debut. The trailblazer who broke the color barrier proudly wearing Dodger blue and the only player to have his number retired nationally. Come to Dodger Stadium on Monday, hey, April right, 15th sure when the Dodgers like take on the Washington Nationals and new, be one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance to receive a Jackie Robinson Brooklyn Dodgers hat presented by UCLA Health. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash promote Emotions. We're back at Dodger Stadium with the Dodgers just finished off a 5-2 win to even the three-game series against the San Diego Padres. 5-2 to final. The Dodgers scoring five on eight hits, no errors. They did leave nine on. The Padres, two runs on seven hits, 
two errors. They left on five. The Dodgers improved to 11 and six. Gavin Stone getting a well earned victory, Rick Monday. Well, it was one of those uh, nights that he just had everything going. He hit the spots. He teamed up really with Will Smith exceptionally well. Smith put up the target, and the pitch was right there. And uh, if you look at Gavin Stone, he retired the first 15 batters that he faced. A leadoff walk in the sixth inning was the first man that reached base. He was quickly one pitch later, ground ball double play, and uh, then three consecutive base hits. But you combine the good pitching with what it had, and then Grove, Hudson, and Phillips come in to close things out. The Dodgers also were much better with runners in scoring position oh. because they set things up much better. Yeah. But uh, you know they held the, the Padres. Padres were two for seven tonight with runners in scoring position. Dodgers had ten different opportunities, but it was the bottom part of the lineup that we talked about on the, on the road trip. We talked about it on the pregame show tonight. The bottom part now contributes and I would imagine that group now can breathe a little bit easier because I thought some guys were, were starting to press a little bit more because of a lot of O fours in particular with runners in scoring position. So they did it at the bottom of the order and they also did it without any extra base hits. They had eight hits none of them XBHs. So the Dodgers now two and O this year with games that they have zero extra base hits. You compare that to 2017 through last year, they were 2 and 39 in such games. So showing that they can win without relying on the long ball or the extra base hit for that matter, something positive that the team can take out of this as well. Now go for the series win tomorrow, Mo, with James Paxton on the mound. Yeah, Paxton going, and, and hopefully the carryover is going to be the Dodgers again. A very good defensive game. Padres also played some pretty good defense, with the exception of two costly errors. But the Dodgers gloves played well tonight. The Dodgers improved to 11 and 6 and improved their lead in the National League West back to three games over the Padres. And again, they'll try and take the third and final game of the series tomorrow afternoon. We hope you'll join us. But for now, that's going to do it from here. Tomorrow, the series finale, Morongo Casino Dodgers on deck begins at 3 o'clock. First pitch slated for 410 Eastern. Knock on wood, we don't have to wait like we did today. The Navian Dodgers Clubhouse Show with David Basse is coming up next. So for Rick Monday. Our producer and engineer, Dwayne McDonald, or MVP, and Colin Yee back in.